Hello, I'm Mr. Davis. Um, I play for Lebanon Valley College, and I'm excited to pass today with Joseph. Oh, uh, what was that? Uh, so, yeah, so LVC has played Fanshawe a few times, so I know them a lot better than UC Black. Um, Fanshawe's a pretty good team. You know, they are uh, they got a lot of good players on their team. I don't know too much about UC Black. I'm kind of new to the whole, like, Cincinnati side of Rainbow Six. Um, but they're always a fun game when LVC plays them, and obviously as we've all already qualified, I'd like to see my friends on Fanshawe and on Fanshawe qualify. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll be a good game. Um, yeah, I, 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 in my head, I believe that they're both like pretty similar teams, but honestly, I've never seen UC Black play, so I can't say for sure. Oh, uh, yeah, so I think I've played them since I was a freshman, and I'm currently a junior, so we've played them at least once every year. Uh, we actually played them in Qual 1, and uh, it actually went in our favor. That's the first time we've actually ever beat them on game day, so uh, it was pretty big achievement for us. We're usually, um, they're usually able to kind of counter-strat what we do, so I, I would like to say that they're a pretty big counter-strat team. Um, but again, that's only that's only against my team, so I don't truly know how they play against other teams. Uh, yeah, per, uh, go ahead, sorry. Mm. Yeah, I think Fanshawe just needs to know that they need to show up today and play as as good a siege as they can, you know. Um, like I said, counter striding is a big part of that, but if you can't counter strike your team as you've never seen them before, you just got to hope that you can beat them in this best of one today.
match or match one. Um, and this is all in the same round uh, for those watching, but I'll be listing off different numbers. So match one, it's St. Clair Saints versus University of Kentucky. And match two is eSports at UC Davis Gold, so uh, UC Davis versus Ohio University. Uh, match three is going to be Kennesaw State Black uh, versus Cincinnati Academy. Match four is App State versus Kent State Gold. Match five is this match that will be streaming. And match six is uh, Utah Varsity versus IUPUI Crimson. And then uh, match seven, that's just a bye match. Uh, you see Patriots because we have 13 in this qualifier. Um, to give people a rundown of how this qualifier is going to be going, so we have a point system uh, in play that gives, since this is best of ones, it helps, it, it rewards teams for not going into overtime. So if you do, a, if you win straight out win, but you'll get your three points. If you go win in an OT, you'll get two points. If you lost an OT, you get one point. And if you just lose uh, no OT, you get zero points. This rewards teams um, for keeping it close, but uh, with our um, – and so you get more points, right? But uh, when it comes to the uh, tiebreakers, games one comes. So a team with the same amount of points but less wins would not be higher, right? So more wins matters, obviously. But um, I think it worked out pretty well in qual one as um, – and honestly, was very tight, especially for the bottom. This helps us with uh, some of those bottom seeding, the six, seven, five, actually five through eight. Um, and uh, I actually, Fanshawe was number eight, so they just missed quals. And EKU, I feel so bad for EKU. They were number seven. They did not qualify in qual one, and they don't have the availability for qual two or the last chance qualifier. And I I really was hoping to see them at PCC. Um, I think they beat, beat right. They beat me at UK Lane, right? Very disappointed about that loss. I was not happy with that. But um, we made some changes, and I think we've gotten better since then. But I really wanted to see them. Yeah, for EKU, I think that game came down to the last game of the day. It was against us, actually, and whether or not they were able to qualify. And I think it was... I think it was whoever won that game qualified, and we beat them 7-5. So that was very unfortunate for them. So I'm going to try to ask our production. Are we uh, good to keep it going in the game? Uh, <laughs> all right. Three minutes. Okay. Is it only through this audio or through try? Okay. Is it what double picking up? That's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Sh should not be needing this mic. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it's uh. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to get that fixed in the background. So can you hear me now a bit better? Mr. Yeah, Mr. yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Much better now, yeah. So um, it seems like we should be starting somewhat soon, I hope. This has been a decent delay. Um, but I wish to... It happens. You know what happens. It does, yeah. It's all good. Six invitational threw everything off. I will say. <laughs> All right, it seems like we're good to start. We're going to be diving into this game. You see Black versus Fanshawe Fuel. Bomb located by attackers. We're awesome. already in the middle of round one. Oh, and wow. Flash area! In favor of this. They went to burn down. Reload! Clear! Assist. It seems like already pop. Put the breach open. This will make it a little bit tighter and harder for a attack to attack. It seems like Fanshawe Fuel has been pushed back all the way to the bedroom. These are good positions to hold. And let's just see what they do. Yeah, like you said, the I, they're a great position to hold as a, they have very much deep anchor spots here. As, as you said before, um, UC can take uh, the A-bomb site if you have that smoke on board to kind of stop any plants here. Does go for the plant. Going to push up for the kill and piano? I'm not sure why. I'll be honest. Loading new mag. Shut up the plant by the bomb chassis. 
Oh, that would have been a great spot to plant right there. Alright, might as well get dangerous. Two. One. And shot recovery. It's up to Attackers are activating the bomb defuser. Let me peek in Jazz. I was going to have at least two people in this cross. Watch that. There's no one out. Yeah, so. We'll be going for Brendo. He's going to take the first one down in the piano. However, we're going to get traded out by highest. Down one's going to go to the east back here. I don't know the uh, the little hesitation to plant the diffuser had me a little had me a little bit uh, questioning where they wanted to plant the diffuser, especially with Fanshawe so far back. But Fanshawe, however, wasn't able to kind of take the step forward to kind of deny that plant, and we were able to UC was able to win that round there. Yeah, I'll be honest. I uh, I was like, oh, they're gonna go for plant. He's gonna say something, yeah. but then he doesn't. I was like, uh, uh huh? Um, Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Plant at the half the smoke. Nervous about the smoke. Mm -hmm. um, he is. Well, that was a very, that was very. This took. Bomb located by attackers. It definitely the, the risk paid off, but it was. I would have liked to see a little bit more caution, a little bit more objective play. Like, hey, we need to really get. Uh, the uh, yeah, I think just kind of. Ten seconds left. Yeah, I think overall a good round for you. Five seconds left. Stars barricaded. Attackers are moving. Nothing you mag. Soul speed very good to hunt down these drones that this is black and be using to get in to into the side. Their side of the seems like it's a contest. Um, whatsoever. They know it's clear, so put control, slowing down. Yeah, so I like I like that uh, very aggressive entry for UC Black. Get into the map when they know they can, not taking any other. Extra like small precautions, kind of wasting time. Like, oh, it's it already very hard in this meta, so I do like seeing that you know, they don't mess around trying to get. It. You got very quiet, really quick. But yes, I do like that quick entry. Brando is in a tight position at the half wall. Some people are in Ivy Hall, and the breach is open. He's gonna have to play. Here. He has no pressure from the canine door, which is a little bit surprising. Black is taking their time to analyze and see what's happening here. Uh, it's interesting how the second hard breach dropped by what was the entry is a good place to get good utility out of that. Souls from below saves the third. Maybe a flank. No, sticking for the vert. Right, I'll let you. Well, a ping was in sight. What? He's in dining. He could go for a plan. The attacker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. He's killed him. Hi, Brendo. I need game. Let's just go. All down to Nitro. 1v5. Reload. So let's look. He gets the warden. Now, what can he do? He's got 45 seconds to work with. Will he take the tactical timeout? Talk to his team. Thank you, G. Monitor closer so I can see what is happening. Yeah, I think they should try to take the tactical. Uh, so number one, is my mic any better here? I do have a little bit of downtime. Oh, I, I, I could even barely even hear you right now. I'm oh sorry. Boy. Um, I don't know if that is it. And we are not Camille is adjusting the soundboard. So peek in the corner. Does not know that the Fenrir is there. The Fenrir can get him, and he does. The round is over as Fanshawe cleans it up. Wow. Two different rounds. First round starting out with a dominant EC win. The second round, Fanshawe pulls it back to the plane. Um, can you continue talking, uh, Mr. Davis? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, I changed a little bit of the settings here. Does you hear me any better here now? Um, 
Is it a Discord thing? Just I think it might be it? Discord. Hey, Milo, on your end, production end, can you turn up the output volume on the Discord? Or Defenders, protect actually, your bombs from being defused by attackers. If you're able to use the link on your end, you can turn that up. Reloading. Uh, yeah, so I'm messing with it right now. Do you hear me? A little bit better. Um, all right, so round three. There's one one right now. You see black is flame shot fuel. Flame shot fuel electing to go for a bar. Having an interesting extension into optics and rotations. Uh, Five seconds left. Uh, to seconds left. Yeah. This is a deep extension. We're going to be trying to keep the guys to solar side across. Let's see how you see it just to this. Will they take out this extension of the roamers? Will they bog down in the time? Or will they be able to identify and flip their attack? Let's see. Yeah, so it looks like Bancroft's trying to hold the entire side floor. Swap it, Max! It'd be a little bit better, I don't know. Is it any better though? Yeah, uh, that was a little bit better. Honestly, just right. having the mic closer to your mouth also works too. It, yeah, I've been trying to do that and trying to mess with uh, the gain a bit. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Reloading, cover me! Right, so this Fen is trapped. You actually might get cut across, and he slips out. Wow! Wow! And Penguin dies to him. Wow! Slip. He is slippery. This dude, he he's oiled up. And he's sticking his position in Astro instead of leaving with the pick. Will he be able to slow down more of this? Yes, Nitro is kind of scared to walk up. They don't have the information. And Solo's taking some damage downstairs in the basement. I think they impacted themselves. They used an impact. There's no one near him. He's a little goofball. <laughs> Black is still bogged down now. Penguin started. Still has managed to get a pick away. That's. 130 now into the round. Highest finally Pops gonna take out some finally. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Remember, this fight now going on in mez mezzanine with the warden of Brendo. 120 left in the round. Both turn our defenses. Black is finally getting box control, getting the pressure on Ivy. And they're gonna go for that mez shield. Nothing protecting it. Kodiak easily gets it. Warden's pushed back. Bring box control. Shots go out, and Apollo gets to the highest. And Nitro gets trade and he did not. This is a cross onto the Mez, gets called out. Gordon moves. Gets the pick drop. to Pop. It was holding the cross. Pop loses that gunfight. It was critical for Black to even get a chance back into this round. Now the attackers are isolated. Kodiak moves. Their spots for Gordon. Gets a shot off, but doesn't get enough damage. Yeah, two versus four situation for Black. Nitro is going to take down Apollo. Two versus three now for Black. They can easily take this back if they somehow get to their execute positions. 20 seconds left on the clock. Like I said before, two versus three still. 50 seconds to go. <laughs> Did the attack know that? It seems like they did. Uh, and the Warden capitalizes getting traded out, though, by Nitro. Nitro getting a double kill. Five seconds left. Triple or a quad to save the round. No time left. Get the triple, but can't get the quad. Operators, you are out of time. And Nitro, very good round. Trying to salvage it for his team. Good kill on the loser there. Unfortunately, Black was not able to execute on the site. Too much time stalled out, especially by Slip. Banshaw up two to one on UC Black in our first game of the QCC Qual 2. And as we go into round four, it's going to be a master bedroom and office hold on the first round of the game. Will Fanshaw be able to learn from their mistakes on the to first defensive and round? As many as they can. This Shelle is typically a attacker side of map. I am surprised that they're going to be going to stop uh, Yeah, I see that too. Typically destroys it. Actually, I did the other day. Truth cam on 
my softball, but it was kind of more to control my friends. But that's what they need. Oh, I see. They're gonna try to use it as like a. Ten seconds remaining. It's actually good for smoke. Five seconds to go. go. Won't get exposed, but there's uh, roof of head holes or anything. So Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. I was trying to avoid not going for that. Ready to I, looking back at that last round, some critical errors where you're just like, you see, not able to get that finger on the cut. He had so many lines of sight that could have shot at him that didn't shoot. And, and pop on that master window. It looks like you jazz hall. That should go. Alright, ready. He's just not looking at it. Um, onto this round. UC's getting into the library again. Might be able to get this mess player as he just Setting barricade! Taking mags! such a fearless, fearless entry so far on UC Black. I love just, I love seeing entry players just kind of walk in place and Reloaded. know it's clear, have some confidence that there's not the entry player that I really do want to be. But wow, Slip's gonna take out Pop on the Thatcher. That's a great first kill for Fuel as they're now up body count five to four. We've also seen some nice. the I'm gonna try to contest this, but Ying Dao try to go up that blue stairs again. Kill and down goes Frost, four versus four now. 130 left in this round. Still anyone round. Look at the twitch. The smoke's going Reloading for up. and against highest there. Honestly, better for the Womai so you can get that off position. Good read by the Womai to utilize and capitalize the utility against them. Now he's taking it further back position in suicide. Penguin gets the kill on the Womai. 3v3, 1, 10. There's still a person in dining. Nitro's going to go for that. All is muted and it can't clear it. But the Legion's gonna deny anybody from using that verb to get rid of it. Let's see how they take this. Yeah, this situation has quickly become a win condition for UC Black. I want to do it somehow here. With the need to get that a master wall open. They get a good deal with this Legion. Down goes Legion. As I say that, Nitro takes out Apollo on the Legion. Three versus two, Fanchild down a member. That wall will now get open. They can start going for this half point for Brenda. A bomb has been located. Smoke player still alive and in a great position. You play it so far. 30 seconds left. Big in can now just line the player in piano. 20 seconds out. 20 seconds left here. First smoke goes out. The know there's a player in piano. Yings go out. 50. 10 seconds left. Doesn't know where the setting is. You know, I believe. Five seconds left. Uh, Attackers are activating the diffuser. This looks like a dead position. Kodiak is in the cut. Can Kodiak get the kill? He does. Great round for UC Black. Really not worrying too, too much about any little thing in the round, but identifying the win conditions. We have to kill that Legion below, so we have to go below, kill that Legion. Now we can start to take the execute how we want to take the execute. I really do like that attack. Fanshawe Fuel is doing a great job um, at, especially at the start of the round, just getting those picks and just kind of bogging down the attack. And you see he's kind of getting, they're getting a little too antsy. Uh, pop there, he opens up the window, but then just kind of like he's leaning the wrong way into to swing because he knows somebody's there that just shot back. And I, I'm being a little bit more critical of you see. They're, they're, Attackers I, need to they're, locate I, I love and them, they're my friends. But, uh, He's getting so often these cut positions. Attackers have located nice. a bomb. Doing a good job of getting the but again, I, I, thought, I was literally talking to him yesterday actually about the matches. He's a very aggressive. Kind of, he just gets in, he looks at the typical spots. He will play off positions, which is what doing against him. Eat him alive, and that's what's happening. He's being eaten alive by these off positions. And that will not capitalize on smokes the attack until the opposition get a good end. Um, I try to have a game of his life going 7-2. and two. He's getting these kills, even in an hour. It seems like Fanchel's winning most of the opening picks. But, uh, I really want to see how you see adapts 
to this. Lost to earlier kitchen. This was a one-sided win. And to bring the Monty Ram Midlock. So it seems like they might go for limited control, I think, in Master. And just try to get in to uh Monty. Maybe you close later on, but he's not wanting to get that space. Yeah, I, I, I love to use the Sorry. I love I love the use of the Monty here too, you know, they really struggled trying to kill Slip that round. So I do like that they are adapted. Hey, we might not be able to take this guy out. We might let him go. So this is not even real. Let's keep him at the where he is. Maybe let's. I definitely know that they need to kill the person playing in master. They're gonna put a lot of pressure on him this time. Rather than wow, Pop getting the kill onto the warden. The warden was the anti one this time. How that, that's ironic. The anti player can kill the anti player. That's, that's, that's a good adjustment by Pop. Um, and having this. <laughs> Having this Montane just in just allows for just free space and control of, uh, of office. I think that, I think that Mozzie might have set a Nitro downstairs. Um, but I'm sure he's playing downstairs in snow. Let's see. Yeah, so great adjustment, great adjustment by Pop to kind of let the kill come to him. Nitro cell is going to go off, that's not going to hit him forever. Penguin already has this. Get your ball open. They're ready for the execution. Upstairs is ready. I think, yeah, you see, he's doing exactly what I thought was limited control upstairs, trying to go for direct, and it's still getting a nice long kill from Westman all the way over Attackers to the ramp. And well, you see, Black is dropping like flies, losing to the flank. They're not watching the flank, and they lost a little bit of upstairs. That's up to highest to. Uh, Salvage it from upstairs and Kodiak to salvage it downstairs. Both are isolated against 1DXs. The Mozzie, who was on the flank, unknown where he is now. But he's up in Kodiak. And before I say it, Kodiak is already dead. Two slip. He's been doing a great job. Gets to Omai. 15 seconds remaining. Win for his soul. Does Hyas know it about the office? Yes, he does. Swing, he gets the guy, but he doesn't have enough time. Loses the fight to the Mozzie. Huge, huge slank by the Mozzie. You know, kind of identifying that there's kind of two pushes going, one up top and one on the actual bomb site. So fuel being able to kind of deal with both sides of that attack is really, really good. Yes. I believe the catalyst of the round loss for UC Black. I believe someone actually died before that, but I can't. So is it that was a, that was a really good round by Vanshaw um, on adapting mid round. Um, While well they did have the previous round, they had that attackers need to locate and defuse um, bomb. I don't remember if they actually end up going for a flank. However, it's because that you see the attackers have discovered the location of a bomb. There, but you see, left the switch. And that flank did wonders. Also, with the aggression on the, the, the Fenrir. Um, Timed or not, it was just really good uh, from both players. It's just, you see, five and four, it just started dropping like flies, and so everyone just dying. Um, in a way, I think. They were getting all this control, all, all this pressure, and they just. Five seconds left before the defense. To a defense, give them time to breathe, and the attackers are moving to defuse the bomb. Do, and they did it. And that's what killed. Since they're also not watching the Ivy, I don't think there were gridlock traps there. And they had a gridlock, right? Um, they all fell upstairs. Reinforcing the wall. See, two first off, three. Sites. Um, I'll be honest. So this is bar. Um, they definitely tried to hit. Standard for your bar game. The mesh shield's gone already. Or not even 40 seconds into the round, it's already gone. Major piece of utility. 
So you see electing to do a more direct attack. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of presence to deny library entry. Except that Legion is down so There's only one person on two different things, so. She's in. I mean, when you take a minute to get in, but they're, they're stalling out. Brando getting shot up from the Mez, getting killed by Penguin last time. He got killed somewhere over there on Takan, but it's turned. You see going up 43 with Nitro dying. Um, not sure who getting lost in the sauce here. And Penguin's already in sight and planting. Penguin's in the sight planting? Oh, in the 43. Oh my god. Does Fanshawe know? I don't think they know. No, no, Fanshawe Fanch Fanch knows. Fanshawe Fanch Fanch knows. Oh, Captain. Oh, and Penguin. Penguin's just stepping up for the team here. Getting insight, identifying the holes. Reloading, cover me. Fanshawe's scrambling to get back. Fanshawe's scrambling to do anything. Now it's a 4v1 in a post plant. Slip has got the pull miracle here, but he's in a terrible position. Drops, definitely known. He gets shot up by Kodiak. Wow, great play. Great job identifying the holes within Fanshawe. Fanshawe extending heavily from the site, and you see finally identifies it. Is able to sneak in after getting a few picks, a few major picks, spe specifically the Mez player. That warden dying opened that hole for them to to capitalize on. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think Fanshawe understood that once the once the Mez player dies, that kind of have no way to stop a plant in the front door there. Not having that I don't know. I feel like they should have tried to really stop that plant. Um, they they kind of sat back, let it happen, and then tried to take a fight and that, lose I that think fight too. That legion dying. I, I'm not. I I got lost. I got I lost in all the action, but I didn't find out where the legion died. And he was the one that was playing stock. Protect your bombs actually, from being he was the most important piece of that. Actually, him dying early um, with the mez player combined actually just that opened up the complete hole that UC needed. Because all the other players were by as basement and extended. Or no, IV basement and some rounds. But um I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I I didn't see what happened that was behind surprise a such an important site. I really now, so you see turn on the half three, ten seconds to go. This is a tight game. Um five seconds to go. Game. It is anybody's game. Both teams are hungry. When you nice game, something the momentum for the rest of this call. Losing it, put the team down, and uh, Nitro is making headies with a pistol. <laughs> and, a up on the board, and a frost, both with shotguns. Good movie. Or maybe you my with pick. I was actually unsure what you stuck on for a sec, too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Rob just snuck out. I was like, no. A little bit of miscommunication between both teams here, kind of like uh, running into your team. Great to see you, but it doesn't matter. 220 left on the clock here. Leave this library. That's kind of fun. I hate playing upside down repels. I find it so difficult to play. Play on repel? Play on repel. Play on repel. Play on repel. Fighting it as well, Nitro. Yeah. Fighting repel can be. Break down, especially on space, with a lot of space to move around. Uh, yeah, Kodiak is now kind of trapped here with the Mez cut off and someone on his rank star window. Plus, the Ivy doesn't have a whole lot to go without. Also going out. Anchon knows where they are. They're holding some cuts, trying to wait for UC to make a mistake for these ANSI players to get ANSI. Very slow now. Yeah. One thirty on the clock. Everything a lot is spelled of, out. A lot of time wasted. This actually might not bode well for Fanshawe unless they start getting picks soon, because they're near the one minute with no map control. No one's inside the map. Four people at K nine. Or the one person on library. This is actually a big problem. You're not inside the map at one ten. Holy! Back needs to make a move. And an ace. Charges shot. I, I think Fanshawe is not sure how to approach this or to attack this. I'm not. I don't understand why they try again. Ready. Kodiak. Kodiak. I'm reloading. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure why they've used their second charge. They're in library. Just a bunch of bees are. 
Why do they take him down though? Four versus three situation. And then gets put by a let as well. Three versus three now. Urza goes down by a flank from highest. He's gonna run away now. He doesn't have to do much more anymore than just stop a plant if there's even gotta be a plant. Pop holding down the site. But Paulo trying to take up. Two, Fifteen three. seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds left here. Two players left on Fanshawe. Attackers to go. Down goes Pop. Two versus two. Attackers. Although we have the site, especially if he takes out five, five seconds goes, remaining. Oh goes, my God. Players. He has to stop this player. That's it. Oh, no. Denies. Operators, you have run out of wow. time. You see, almost threw that so hard. Um, oh, good job on Apollo for finding that and just taking those gunfights on their solar side. I, Fanshawe, just looking at that one round, they're just holding cuts and waiting for an anti team to move. And honestly, against any other anti team and some some players, they would, they would kind of tear out those extended rooms that love to move around. But once they identified and kind of found that they couldn't just have a move by opening up some windows, um, they waited. Uh, although, while the Grim grimmed almost all of library, which no one was in, uh, he did grim the box and I in. IV, not library. Um, which got depends on the Jaeger. Defenders, protect um, your bombs from being confused by attackers. This is actually good. I was a little confused why they threw a second ace charge on the wall, but I actually think it was for Bates for the Omai to actually look at because we saw the Omai shooting the wall and then it flipped over and all of a sudden there's two people in the library. Exactly what they were doing. They were trying to bait out that as player. I, I'd like to see Fanshawe kind of realize. Ten seconds left. See, Black Leaving here has well, has box. a lot of discipline to sit back and make them come. Five seconds left. Attackers must locate and defend the bomb. Five Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Uh, while we're at the start of this round, I'll say an update for some of the matches. Uh, first match that has been completed is St. Clair Saints versus Kentucky. St. Clair Saints beat Kentucky 7-2. The dominant win. This is a pretty dominant win. I don't really know either team, so I can't really don't comment activate on it. But that's always good to win your first match of the day. Getting that on the drone. The highest, what are you doing? Not moving your mouse. I think his mouse died. <laughs> it it, it looked like his mouse died. So, something must have happened because he just kept walking out. Something. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow, Steve Overlay really not helping high I was like, dude, not, not gonna lie, my first thought was control disconnect? Because that's what it looked like. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That is Change it again. Quote unquote star of the last round. That is so unfortunate. Your souls go down so early. You used to deny so many rounds of intel, can't do it anymore. And what would have been an opening pick for UC, because it was lined up, turned out to be an opening yeah. free pick for Fanshawe, handed by Steve. You to by Steve. Ready for grenade. Other ways to be exact. Yeah, that, that has to be heartbreaking death. Obviously, it's very frustrating guy this team, but not only that, your soul is going to the last round. Fortunate down goes pop as well. Mason like Break nice out. kill. Oh the warden. Five versus seven. Oh, okay. We need to clear Cody out. I'll say that was that was that was just bad on those nades right there. Didn't even get to the shield. Back. Penguin and Kodiak make it a 2v3. They're still loaded. holding this game, holding this round. Take, the, take it to 5 3. It seems like Fanshawe is giving up the control or giving the pressure in box, knowing that the tank does it, the shield's still up, and rotating over towards the dying side. Oh, got hit by a captain trap, but not by a whole lot. It took a little bit of damage. All three of them in 45. Does you see? Can you see identify this? Kodiak does not know. Yeah, I think it's if if Kodiak gets word that they're trying to hit the site from Ping, he won't even know that they're fully in. He does not. Three versus one now. Kodiak has a salvage crowd. Team. 
He's gonna stay upstairs though, probably try to take this from above. Plant is now going down. 15 seconds That's remaining. Hatch open. Oh, can he see him from the hatch? Oh, Attackers are activating the diffuser. I think, maybe, but I did not see him. And now he's left. Post point for fans. This looks eerie like uh, slips post plant, however, he does not like to the hatch. And he Rounds over. Apollo gets the kill on to Cody as he drops fireplace. Another match report came in. Kennesaw beating UC Academy 7-1. Another dominant win. And also UC Davis reporting in beating Ohio University 7-1 as well. The last match is to be played for this uh, phase now. This round, uh, round one is App State versus Kent State. This game and Utah Black versus IUPUI. So lots of like half this round has been kind of one-sided games and then the other half is just kind of still going on. This game especially super super close, four to four. Attackers need to locate I know and defuse bombs. Ohio University will will be trying their best today. However, I believe they're running with multiple subs, multiple subs. Um so we'll see how they do. I'm hoping to get the rest of their main team on. Uh, and in for the rest of the game. I, I mean, I like Ohio University. I know Squeezy, the captain, we had a good time at the first UC. See, we invited them over a direct fight last year as they were a brand new team. I was well trying to see growth between two fellow programs. And they actually performed really well. They were so, they were, they were underdogs, and they, uh, they hit Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. They're in the group stage, or at least took a map off. Um, but now we're getting 4-4. Four, four. This game cannot be any closer. I I swear it's the biggest lead has been. So back and forth, yeah. The biggest lead I think has been just one round uh, this whole time. Thank you, Kurt. French fire going in. Now it is basement site that I don't think Fanshawe even ran when they were defending in there. Um, like to go for that big garage take. Seems a little bit more direct. They're also trying to get to the main wall. He's not Thatcher. Ace combo. A little hard to trip with too many charges on, but we'll see them a little bit eerie of runouts. A little bit scared of that. There's a uh, six. They're doing the most for his team, providing good utility usage. Yep, so two minutes left in this round. I'd like to see Anchok try to take. I mean, the lobby here, so they push with that ram on the board, try to fully clear this map, and take above, with the, with the ram above, it's just so, so strong. No chance that this bandit can bandit kick anything, um, if they do take above. But kind of just holding, not many droners on Fanshaw here, we need to kind of start taking some time, we're running out of almost halfway through the round. Oh God, and we doesn't know the fireplace player. Above. Does not know the fireplace player. Th this, this clear does not... These clears, not I think, is very slow and kind of efficient, which is how Fanshawe has been playing. Well, instead of the one floor, I think about three. Nice, is just able to walk around whatever part of the map he wants to. Yeah, not even be contested. On the second floor. It's been two minutes, and there hasn't been a single gunfight. And Highest going for a Nitro, and he beat up on that. <laughs> and Goose up again. There's no one out there. Why are you trying, Three bud? Time. What are you doing? <laughs> There's nothing out there. <laughs> a nice waste of 10 seconds. Good try, though. Good as, try. A as a defender, just staying alive is nice. Wow. Down there. Nobody slipped in. Ice getting the ram, but doesn't know about the batch just sitting deep outside. He does know. A bomb has been very been wary. Fanshawe is now pressing over by bar side. Looks like they might go for. No, there's one trench. It is he? Uh, solo over. There's only 20 seconds left. Very little control. I don't know if they have reach open. Bar is sneaking into warehouse. Getting trade out or getting killed out by Cody. Shots. Ace getting into sight. Going for. Going for plant gets an eye by the penguin. Pulling through. Through you one now. Up to slip. Can he pull it? He only has like 5 HP. And he doesn't know where the kite is. Anybody? Easy bet. Operator, you are out of time. 
making sure not to give away any kills. Good job on them. I think it was a good job. It was a very good job. It was a, it was a great job. The, the discipline on UC Black is actually it's very commendable. Um, a lot of times these collegiate teams, especially, they lack a lot of discipline. Seeing the discipline from UC Black. A tech very, pause. Very, very refreshing to see. At a 5v4. Or 5 4 right now. C. Aaron Shaw. I think a big thing I want to see for Fanshawe, they they have to be more aggressive on the entry, you know. The droning of the entry and kind of taking back control. I think they're really struggling kind of getting that, and then they're letting, they're having 30 seconds to just hit the site with nothing open, nothing open or anything like that. I, want, I wonder if Heist's uh, Steam popped up again, and he's just trying to fix that. I've had that. Ha Actually, um, I was playing on a, in a match on Thursday, uh, I think actually it might have been when we were playing Georgia or might have been playing U of L, but uh, I think it was against U of L actually. But I had a pop up all of a sudden UCIT, and it's like we're gonna force restart <laughs> your computer in 15 minutes. I was like, what the heck? No option. The middle of the game. That's crazy. Yeah. So we're just like, all right, we're just gonna have to take a tech pause. Then. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually crazy. I hope um that does not happen at all to any of our players. However, it was only my PC, uh, so I don't know what controls <laughs> it. I don't know why UCIT elects to do it. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because the PC wasn't was turned off the night before. I actually did come to the lab and it was turned off. Um, any UC players watching this, please never turn off the PCs. You're not supposed to. That's oh how they boy. do the updates. Yeah, as we we're kind of navigating this tech pause, I, I think you're right. I think Hyas must be something with Steam, but that's why you don't play on Steam. You play on Ubi Connect. Ooh. All my friends that have Ooh. trouble with Steam, Ooh. I play on Ubi Connect, and I've never ever once had a problem. So I, like I to take that little high ground there. <laughs> I will agree with that. I used to play strictly on UPlay. And that's how, where I had Steam, and I never had any problems actually with being all tabbed. I didn't never have any problems with any overlays or anything happening. Um, I think he probably just a fat fingers team over like I haven't had that problem where it goes over, but I my home PC or at the lab, I feel like I get alt tabbed a lot more. But I have it on Steam because that's what has at the lab here. Can't just open up Uplay. Uh, it's a little odd um, because in order to do that you have to actually download Siege through Uplay. Looks like they're ready to start. I think it's just one of the dumbest things about Siege identify that steam's on but steam if you buy it you can I can identify that you place that one it doesn't work the other way around I agree. Oh, attackers need to locate and defuse <laughs> as many bombs as they can the rule and as we're back into the prep phase here you see black five or four still anyone's game this is the biggest lead we've had which is only one round it's not even really a lead yep <laughs> i would not be surprised if in Three minutes, we find out that the score is 5-5. But UC is though, on their defense. Um, they've, what, they've won basement, they won top floor the first time, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. close scenario um, in a 1v2 that will pull off in a place to force them off. Right, um, Attackers must locate and defuse the bomb. Bar. So UC's going Defender back up to Master. Let's see what Fanshawe does again, if they'll take it slow like last time, or how you see will react. Yeah, so I think if, if Fanshawe needs to learn anything from last time, it's that they just, they just need to be faster. To you're, some you're putting you're putting all your money on just hoping that in 30 seconds you can just rush the site and hopefully you catch them off like you did last time. But if you manage to time better, maybe you put the Solus. As I say that, Kodiak goes down. Brenda was yeah. getting tagged heavy and by uh, Kodiak. Kodiak overextending just did he, he didn't he didn't watch his crosses and he uh, he ended up stepping into the line of sight from library double. That was a good shot by slip, a good cross. And they're watching the drone for the Solus. Uh Solus though has pains that there's a drone there and someone's on it. So the the Solus is a big big win condition for uh, and you see black here. Killing the Solus will be huge for Fanshawe and Something keeping the Solus alive. Is huge for black. Uh, I think the round really does come down to the Solus, to be honest. How uh, tight.
time management works for him. Franchise is slowing it down again. They got a pick. And they're taking their time to get into the rest of it. St still wary of uh, Ivy Hall. Um, and his floor is having a little bit of trouble getting the shield. And Nitro doing a good job just watching for the drone. That's two floor drones down, a uh, three floor drones down, and nothing to gain from it. Floor is just throwing his util away a little bit. And Nitro actually just eating the job one. Yep, and that shield says um, Nitro's job becomes very, very easy in this round. It's really, it's really useful for him to put that shield up. I was say that Penguin takes a lot of damage from K9. Pop, good heads up play, takes out Apollo. Four to four. Uh, 50 seconds left. All of the advantages in UC Black's hands as they are the defenders. Pop, the highest action might be able to go for a flank. Buck, I think, is aware of it. He's just sitting in the IV. And Nitro getting a nice kill onto Brendo. Finishing off Brendo. And it slip falls. He's now Changing down. Back. You see he's actually doing... They're just holding their position. Jack waiting for Fanshawe to danger. hop in. And Hyas just walks up on the flank. Finishes the down player. But doesn't go to the prison drop. Ivy window. Gets shot. Oh, Mason. What a miss, Mason! Oh, no! Oh. You can't be whiffing Jack those. Jack. You have the extended barrel move to flash hider or something. All good though, all Nine, good. I didn't make or break the round though, missing those shots on the Solus. It was a 4 one Wow. Two round Operator, lead. It's the biggest lead we've had this whole time uh, for this series between UC Black and Fanshawe. Both teams are struggling to stay ahead of the other, but Fan UC is actually able to win on a pretty more dominant round. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think UC just needs to realize that they just need to wait Fanshawe out. They're not really doing anything super, super special to the site players. Uh, you know, they may kill a roamer here or there, but then after that, they don't really try to work the site to become to become theirs. You know, it's not really... The defenders can kind of still sit wherever they want for the Fanshawe executes. So. I read a Twitch chat that said, turn up the casters. I want to confirm with the broadcast that they did that. I am now getting Attackers a plastic gun player on me. I am hostage. <laughs> Guys, I do not want to cast. I'm actually getting a hostage here. By... No, I'm joking. <laughs> Snap that gun to my mouth. I'm not going to take this. Bomb located We're by going bar gaming here. And this previously won by Fanshawe in round 8. So, and Fanshawe desperately needs this round if they want to stay in this game. 6-4, match point for UC Black. Looking like a... Mezzanine extension. I can't remember if I saw that. Yeah. Being mean, at match point is always scary. It is always oh, scary, no matter, no matter what. Um, five seconds to when insertion. it's 6-5, it's a little bit more bearable. 6-4, you got to do it twice. You have Attackers to are heading out twice. to a bomb. You won the site once. They might have some confidence here. Hopefully, Banshaw comes with confidence so they can secure the win. But, you see makes the application that they do. Who knows how this round will go? Maybe, uh, yeah, so doesn't look like the high scale right now. <laughs> Run out with a steam gun. Good start so far, you know, kind of identifying that they need to take over the Miriam side. However, Pius is going to make this a little troublesome for them. Ice is the only player over there, though, that can really help out really quickly. Nitro well, could come up at a moment's notice, though. Nitro has not been droned out. He's actually, no, he has been droned out. Sounds coming Drone out. Going out. Pins going out. Nice shot from Mason. Get an opening kill on a Nitro. That's not what UC wanted, especially as they wanted to maintain that dining control without losing too much. And losing that gunfight really is not great. Oh, a statistic shows that every time there's a trade, it favors the. Uh, offense actually but just losing that with no trade is even worse obviously and slip trying to get the drone or trying to get the shield getting muted and then shot by kodiak wow pop getting a nice kill on a brendo that's a 44 things have slowed down 30 pop swinging and he gets a double kill a nice job by pop but mason gets a pick on the penguin which might be by sight no it's in kitchen dining he got him by 45 hall 
Mason took him a tight angle onto the ivy, so Kodiak is going to be trapped over there. Can't really come down the stairs without a gunfight. So I think I think so far it was a great entry from Manshaw, a lot faster than they've ever had so far. But then this this middle part of the round, they're still stalling out. Um, uh, I think they're very scared of Pop. Obviously, Pop has just started just swinging everything and winning. I'd be a little bit scared too, but you have to you have to you have to take Reloading. out. Gordon, you know, you have to kind of clear this stuff. We have so much map control here. Yeah, it's Fanshawe. We just need to start getting Potentially move these defenders out of their favorite positions. Well, they spotted the, they spotted the Mez player, but um, he just kind of goes over Jordan on the canine side. I don't think they know. No, they don't know. And Pop shoots too early. They didn't know and they were shooting on by fireplace, but the cop reveals his position and letting for a kill. The antsiness to get another kill by pop leads him into a bad position and leads to Fanshawe to get an advantage in this round. 15 seconds, 10 seconds actually, plant not down. They're gonna go for that bar again. Can Kodiak and Highest do it this time? Last time it was Kodiak and Penguin, but Highest gets a hit onto the planner. Actually, not the planner. Highest just won this game. Gotta watch for the cross from the other player. He gets it. Oh, oh my god. Mason, no. He gets it. Highest oh, gets oh the triple kill. Oh. Wow. Just. That was a great job by UC. 7 4. I will say. Or UC Black. Camilo, I would love to have the scoreboard shown up so people can see how people did this time. But that was a great job. 7-4 win from UC Black onto Fanshawe Fuel. Also, another match update just coming in. Kent State v. App State 7-4. Wow, two 7-4s. They're the ones uh, coming in uh, last. So all matches should be being posted soon. Actually, the last match to be finished up is Utah versus IUPUI. That might be a really close game. Um, but wow, let's focus back onto this uh, Black versus Fanshawe and how that went. W what are your thoughts on how that match? Goods, bads. Uh, it was very, it was very, very close up until the end. To be honest with you, and uh, I think Fanshawe just their attacks let them down. I think at the end there, um, they're they're super slow in the entry, and you know it's it's super easy fix. You know, they started to fix it towards the end that last round, especially they got the entry. They were super quick. And then there's their their time management, I think, is just not very good. And I think for UC Black, I think two things that are going to be doing very well for them, their discipline and their time management. They're super fast when they need to be. They're slow when they need to be. And they have a lot of discipline on that defense. And I think those are two great qualities of the team that will make this Queen City clash. Yes, I agree. I think, I definitely think there were rounds where their the discipline was definitely being, definitely showing. And there's some rounds where they did forget the discipline or certain players did. But overall, though, uh, very good. And I have gotten the time. Let me check it real quick. But uh, you continue with your um, with your thoughts here, on Fanshawe. Yeah, I think I think Fanshawe they have they have a lot of potential to still make this. Obviously, first Actually, game losing is very tough. We have a request for an interview. Uh, highest would. Yeah, Heist would like an interview. Put him on. Get him in here. Let's get in here. Get him in here. He's out in the lab, actually. All right, Davis. Uh, try to think of some questions you'll have for your uh, highest. Um, let's see here. I believe if your audio is coming in through Discord, I'll just hand my headset over. And um, yeah, I think that would work best. Yeah. Wow, that was a good job, though, by UC Academy pulling it through, finding the way to win on defense and to start getting the lead. But he is here now, coming in through the doors. Oh, my gosh. The cables. Just talk. Uh, talking to the mic, actually, this mic. Oh. What's so up, chat? <laughs> you like the chain? <laughs> oh, he's dripped out. He's dripped out. I love it. So... Okay, what are, your, what are your thoughts? That match was really close the whole time, and then you fi guys finally started to find some win and get some some wins, but very tightly during that last uh, three rounds. What, are, what, what, what what helped you guys change your guys' momentum? Um, I think it was just getting warmer. I think we kind of adapted to how they played. They played really tight on the drones. It was one round. We went upstairs, 
and I was just playing downstairs the whole time, just shooting drones, shooting drones. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to swing. So, yeah. Um, I was having a lot of tech issues that game. My <laughs> mouse would just snap. It just snapped to the ground for no reason. My monitor just started giving up. But, you know, it was all right. Playing through adversity. I love it. I love it. Yeah, what was that nitro? <laughs> it, it, okay, so look, it was meant for trench, but I messed it up three times. So I just kept re-grabbing it and went for it anyways. But then, you know, it it, it worked out in the end. It, I wasted <laughs> enough time. <laughs> you wasted your own time and I no one else's. My own time. It was great timing. <laughs> I wasted my own time, and it took me to where I needed to be at the right time. Do, do you have any info that they're out there? Do you I, have heard any info there out there I heard uh, a trench call. I heard a trench call. Okay. Was that close? No. Oh. No. <laughs> no one was there. <laughs> uh, we just we just see you on the cast. Review. We just see you just throw nitro. It sticks to this to the frame. You do it again and you do it again and you finally make it out. It just blows up and no, no one is on that side of the map. No right. one. But no, my, my <laughs> all the stuff that game was really pissing me off. It was making me mad. Oh, well, I would be. Especially the time where I ran out on two people on solar and I just hit shift tab and started started. Started strafing to the left when I didn't. I, I didn't want to. I had two free kills there. Yeah, you 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 should have you at least the gotten street. the opening kill there. But I I, I literally I, did, I just see you just keep going. Just, yeah, just no. Keep, I was like, what, what are you doing? Blame Steam. Steam <laughs> coming in to bite the butt. Have you ever thought about buying the game on UPlay and playing through UPlay? Never. That's what you got to do? No, that's I what ever. you got to do, man. I never have those problems on UPlay. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so one big question I have, um, for that last, that last round, you were the soul is correct. Uh huh. Yeah. So what was going on in your mind there when it's kind of like that, that last like 20 seconds there, you got to stop that plant, you got to kind of protect your team and really get that win. What was going through your mind there? Um, so I knew they were going to do a sort of flood down. Oh, Sorry to interrupt, but we just got the last match in. 7-5, Utah beating IUPUI. A close game. Probably a nail-biter oh, yeah. to the end. Um, And next matches actually will be generated. You know what? Before we send you off to start the next round, I just want to ask about what your thoughts about this next match that you might be getting. Um, and Let's see here. Who do you have up? You're going to be facing I. Or actually, no, that's probably facing IUPUI. You're going to be facing App State. Wait, App State? Didn't App State lose that last round? Huh? Oh, there are odd number of teams. That's why I face an App State. Okay, you're facing App State. What are your thoughts? Um, I'll go back to uh, your question in a second. But my thoughts on App State. I've seen them. Uh, seen them play at LAN. Seen them play at UKY LAN. They were all right. I think if we take them to a map that we like, I think we have a chance. I think we have a good chance to show what we're about. And um, back, back to your question on the Solus. Um, I knew they were going to do like a weird flood to site with fire, and I heard two come down fire, and then I heard one behind me. I had no idea how he got down, but he just got down, I guess. Um, so I kill the one through the wall bang on site, and I hear him behind me. I'm that still was an in stock. Shot. Yeah. I hear the one behind me in stock, so I just like do a little 180 flick on his dome. And then the last one's planning with no time left. So, you know, I mean, it was kind of – I stressed out. I started mashing keys. I didn't know what I was doing. I almost <laughs> didn't kill it, get the kill on the planner. But, you know, it was all right. It ended off all right. Yeah, pure flow state, pure just icing up and getting that dog in you when you need it. I love, right. I love that. That was a great play that last round. Right. Congratulations to you guys. Appreciate it. Well, what an interesting match. And we will return shortly uh, with the next match. We'll be determining on who will be streaming next. I have no idea if the production crew already determined that or not. Um, and I don't think we will. I don't think they've determined that yet. But we'll be seeing everyone shortly as we return for our next match for round two of the Queen City Clash qualifiers. Uh, thank you for watching match one, and we'll return shortly.
Yeah. So, so we, so we talked about this earlier in the day. Um, Kennesaw, uh, apparently they lost a player. However, I thought they were going to be the big dogs. LVC has played them before and we lost seven, one, seven, one. So we got, uh, we got pretty pummeled against Kennesaw state, but that was last semester. And apparently, uh, it's not the same roster. So I can't say too, too much. I will say, however, we did play UC Davis. LVC played UC Davis, uh, in the last Queen city qualifiers. Um, and we did beat them. I believe it was a best of three. Oh, no, 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 no. That was, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was the RMU charity tournament, I think. I was like, yeah, wait, I was like, wait. Sorry, they were like back-to-back -back weeks. Everything is like the same for me. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think it was the RMU charity tournament then. Uh, we played them, I believe it was a best of three, and we won two to zero. Um. And we don't ever play West Coast teams a lot, so we really didn't know anything about them. But they're they're a good team. Um, both have so much momentum. Oh, down off. All right, now here we are. We're in the lobby. Um, all right, nice hey, music. Kennesaw is bumping. Okay, okay, I see you. Get the vibes up with that. I mean, who wouldn't be grooving after a nice dominant win? They're just, <laughs> they're just having a good time in this tournament. God, I can't because I was about to. I believe, I believe that that's kind of like their pregame ritual because they also did that when we played them uh, last semester. They're always, they're always bumping music, having a lot of fun. You know, Collegiate's a lot about fun. Mm -hmm. Kennesaw definitely has fun. Maybe they should have brought a speaker to the CR6 land so that way they could win a little more. Sorry, not, not mean throw shade. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I, I actually uh, love the Kennesaw guys. Um, uh, at least, like, for my career, I've scrimmed them a lot. I've played them a lot. Um, most of them are a really nice bunch. The player who dropped now, um, I guess, he, he's also a good guy. He also, like, did a little bit of smack talking here and there. But, I mean, I always thought it was friendly banter, uh, friendly competitive banter. But, um, yeah, as mentioned, they've had a roster change. Um, I, and I'm honestly blanking on the name uh, of the person who... Uh, dropped but um i believe they've moved on to a t2 team and kennesaw was a premier team last semester i think baby exploder is the new person name but um they were in sorry kennesaw was a premier team cr6 premier team and they actually dropped out into qualifiers and got relegated out um and actually surprising because i think they got dropped out into or put into qualifiers just because the other teams that were in premier had like moved around or dropped out completely so a little unfortunate for them but they are cruising now in Sierra 6 open we're back on chalet wow what a repeat hoping <laughs> a little for uh match diversity best of one but at the same time times everybody likes to play the same app so now we're gonna see the same thing bomb located by attackers so we're gonna start with the kitchen where that's uh in my opinion that's kind of like the third site on this map so Bit of a different play style that we're going to see compared to the first game today. Can we get a predictions pull out there to see what the server thinks? We'll go get that out there in a little bit. Um, and but going back to it, actually, I'm looking at it now. So in our previous game, we had 18 votes for UC Black and two for Fanshawe. So that was a Fanshawe. But uh, Fanshawe made as tight as game possible. Uh, UC pulling through for their fans there. But uh, now it is Kansas versus UC Davis. If once once we get a poll, we'll see where the results are at. But we'll comment that later. Now, one thing that's different is that you'll see in this game a zombie is being played. I believe she was banned last time. And uh, she's going to be quite good on this map. You see Davis like to get claimers on Ash to stop some rounds, maybe get some free kills with those. But starting off with a solar side push. 
Yeah, so on this on this uh, kitchen bomb site, it's very important to kind of take a bug. So UC Davis has identified that already. Now we're starting to do that. Lots of drug work coming out. However, Kennesaw is not just going to let them take the for free. As we see the zombie kind of starting to take things off. Jaeger getting very fluid. Ooh, able to get away. But it takes some. Shots are just going back and forth with this Jaeger player. He's tagging up. And he's getting tagged up. And Nitro going out by my my hiding and getting Francis as the opening pick of the series. But Latsker getting traded out by um Well, I can't read that name. I I just can't. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna call them QQ, I think. Just make it nice and easy. <laughs> Chow, however, gonna take down clock four versus three. The gridlock jumps in, taken down by pause. Two versus four for UC Davis. Not looking good for the attackers so far. And as I say that, crit down. Salt, the last member of his team here. One versus three now as he takes down pause. That Jaeger is still alive. So crucial on the upstairs hold. And able to keep the upstairs hold as well. Now they know where Salt is due to this Solus scanner. They know that they're going to try to probably jump into this trophy room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go up towards solar. Taking the sweet time. I think they just opened that downstairs door. Yeah. It's a bit scary for salt. The run out. Here's the run out, and see you later, salt. First see. round goes to Kennesaw. He can do a run out, but Hyas can't. <laughs> <laughs> a good round from Kennesaw starting out. Strong showing the performance. Um, but wow. Uh, Going from map to map, both maps are chalet and two different, or I guess two different sets of teams. However, it played out very differently. It became a 3v1 at 1 minute and 20, while in our previous match with UC Black and Fanshawe, people weren't even in the map by 110, right? Um, so this is going to be a very different style of play Defenders we're going to be watching here. From being by a lot more aggressive, a lot more trade coming out. That's what we saw the whole time. You know, Kennesaw just getting more bane for their buck on each of the times they swung for those trades. You see Davis not be able to capitalize on it. Or just getting picked first before a trade came out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yes, the speed of play as well is also very, very different. I feel like Davis a lot quicker than any other two teams that we saw earlier in the day. Um, and the same with Kennesaw. They, you know, they're very quick on the defense as well. Quick to figure out where the attackers are and kind of bunker that up when you need to be. Um, and again, I think both teams just kind of understand where the round is going to go down, you know. Kennesaw understood that if we lose upstairs, we're probably going to lose probably going to lose the round, so we really need to hold upstairs. And UC Davis understood if we don't take upstairs, we're probably not going to be able to lose the round. So both teams kind of all fighting upstairs, sort of, kind of, because they both know that that's their win condition for both of them. In the library, however, it seems like Kennesaw is going to be super aggressive playing, playing the suicide angle. Wow, Baby Exploder getting tagged and getting picked early. That early aggression not going well for them. Losing that soul is not super great. However, so it was kind of not, not, I guess of selfish use in a sense, but able to utilize for the team. Losing that kind Definitely. of bad, but not. Davis yeah, not, never down. great to lose the entry engagement. Probably is, but crit goes down as well, or crit takes down Mineheiden rather. Five versus three, UC Davis doing much better at the entries than they previously did. From. Ooh, and wow. Nice. I'm out from Chow. The attacker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. Off. Get eyes on. The warden on the shield we saw, the shield was very, is very struggling to. They got the shield in our last game, so let's see how the teams deal with it. This game. three versus four, still in UC Davis's hands. However, this Mez player is a very big problem that UC Davis has to deal with sometime. As we're kind of stalling out here, 130 left in the round. So it's being dumped around, Needs. and wow, wow, QQ getting QQ, the, uh, right? yeah. a nice pick Attackers as soon as the warden twists his head. Um, unfortunate timing for the warden. Chow retaking his position, even though Agile should be control of UC Davis. UC Davis didn't take it. 
Now getting flash shot, having to retreat. A 2v4 can Kanesaw salvage this. Shots are going out, but both players now back on site. Hoping they can get some kills. Wow, and a nice pick going on onto Guac. Now it's 2v3. There's still hope left for Kennesaw as now that they're in two pretty decent positions, playing behind Amira and Stockman. So able to flex where he needs to go. Calls are going as, Oh, I'll let you go. Yeah, so as, the, as this clock runs down as well, just the scale keeps ticking towards the defenders as the clock ticks down. Two versus three, still 20 seconds left. Starting to get onto the fireplace door. As we get ready to take down, swings in, swings in salt. However, plant gazer gonna take him down. Two versus two. Down goes Chow, big player of this round. All plant gazer has to do is survive. The one v one now. Can oh, but QQ, wow. He had his. He wins his ones. Good job on QQ. I was really thinking that plant gazer or plant 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 gazer. What is his name? I think it's Plant Geezer. I don't want to call him Gainzer. Maybe I should call him Geezer. Plant. <laughs> Maybe I'll call him Plant. Um, but Plant Gazer, he almost clutched it for Kennesaw. He had his crosshairs on the gridlock. He just needed to shoot. Um, but, you know, he had his crosshairs, Defenders I guess, on the frame of the door and didn't see the gridlock. First. Unfortunate for him not being able to clutch the round, but that got really tight for UC Davis. He's slipping a 2v4 all the way down to a 1v1. Now, it seems like my super thing can go in the mirror, and UC Davis brought the Ash to deal with that last time, which it worked for the Mez player. Mez player wasn't able to capitalize on, on the IV, or sorry, library, so it was a contestant. It's a much more taking shots, but not more passive than aggressive while the mirror was up. But, um,. We're like to bring a Vigil rather than a, actually a Vigil and a Solus. This is going to be a potent combo. One's not going to be able to be drowned while the other one's just going to shoot on the drone. So, a huge denial for info, which must be doing a lot. Let's see how UC Davis kind of goes around this. I would, if, I, if, if it were me, if I knew this information, maybe I'd think a direct would work pretty well. But, uh, it's an yeah, it's, it looks like it's shaping up to be a full map clear. It's, um, Hopefully, oh, cool. takes down Chow. Big player to take down there. Where was this? I'm not even sure, but Pons might be the next player to die. Or QQ. No shots going out. No one hitting any of their shots. Missing. And, wow, the pressure is getting built on Pons, but he slips Locking away. Back. He is, he is able to get to win. They're droning out over that sol that solar side, making sure that he's cleared out, and they should be getting the information soon entering. They have two drones following each other? Yeah, uh, double droning. So he's slowing them down a bit. But Payne's going out against the mirror. They know this mirror is there. He can create. So down to almost half the round away here. Plant Gazer does know he's spot out now. Kennesaw is playing very spaced around the map in UC Davis. Other than that, I haven't really done too, too much yet. You know, that opening kill was so early. However, as I say that, QQ in a fight now with Plant Gazer. Plant Gazer also killed from above by Glock. Great play. Ah, UC Davis to clear this rumor pretty quickly. They know Baby Exploder's retaken them. The I'll call, be. They surely have to burn. There's one player on site. And wow, this retake of a position helped Kennesaw, actually. UC Davis did not anticipate or expect that. Honestly, I wouldn't either expect another person to just re-up a position that you thought you lost, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, but very very heads very heads up play from baby exploder there. Yeah. Oh. The defense just gotta sit in their anchor spots now. Four v three and the vigil's still roaming, so the vigil could contest over. Seems like the attack is electing to a what's main side, so Vigil's not going to be able to do anything unless he pressures that fireplace, which is not. If you pressure fireplace to die, but he he's just not getting any anything done. This two uh, brow is also going to be very very effective at stalling out, just opening any walls. Fight is very hard to just walk in. 
Patrick's going out. Two route is setting up for his team to make it to attack. He's having a hard time. Soul's getting down. Now it's on a man hiding on site, getting killed, being burned alive by Capitao. Hans, the only one off site now, isn't going to be in a 1v3 in a post plant. Can they plant it down? Can it get down? What? what are you doing? Why are you not planting? You see, Davis just forgets to plant the bomb. They did all the hard parts. They killed the they killed the anchors on site. You knew that you at least knew that he wasn't in the same site as you. You gotta they get the him. plant down. Plant. <laughs> Press F. Oh gosh. Ah. I don't know. Maybe they were just scared of where the vigil was. I, I don't know. I, stuck in the tube round, maybe. I have no idea, to be honest. Why that? Attackers play? need to locate and defeat the bomb. That round may actually come back down. I want them to because you basically have won the round. You just had to plant. Very, very fortunate. Now we're going back to the bomb located by attack. Kind of saw. Kind of bailed out by uh, Sensor on. Let's see what I can find. plant from UC Davis last round, so they'll have to really make sure that they don't really let that happen again and not kind of fake the side around them rather than kind of soft through the winning around. You got really quiet there. Ten seconds um, remaining. Back away from your mic a little bit. But... Oh, All right, yeah, sorry. I'll try to stick more into that. Very good. I, I'll be honest. Just watching that. Attackers are heading out to the I can, the bomb. I can I am Loki frustrated by that. Uh, not that I'm root, like rooting for UC Davis or over Kennesaw, but a mistake like that is gotta be. Uh, gotta it's very tilting. It's very, yeah. it's very unfortunate. I, I don't think, unfortunately, we missed what truly happened, but uh, so. I saw him get on and off the plant twice. Oh wow. And I, I think see that. I think what they were scared about was the vigil going for dying. Because I don't think E.C. Davis had anybody upstairs. So he was trying to run for that pillar plant and went around the pillar. Mm. He didn't have enough time to get the press out. He should have just stuck it. Um, wow, Baby Exploder getting an opening kill on the Francis by E.C. Davis. But Crit getting chow. Now it's a 4 v 4 The Doke and Jaeger getting taken off. Doke not getting in for Call's Eye, I believe. And you see Davis is focusing on... Oh, wow, and Pond's getting killed trophy side uh, by Salt. Salt redeeming his previous mistake. Okay. And, wow, you see Davis, this crit getting a double kill. A 4v2 and half the round. Just a minute and 15 has been... has gone by. Not even half the round, actually. And now the main hiding plant, uh, plant Gazer. Now, we've seen Plant Gazer in this situation, and he's not in this situation anymore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think uh, UCD's just web of holding each other's rotates and holding what? like wherever one defender can go, can't go here, can't go there. Yep, like I said, Salt there on that window, just ready to cut off any rotation Reinhardt has, and that that was literally that was that entire round was they're just catching everyone on a rotate. I'll that be was honest, a great I, round from UCD. I think Manhattan right there probably was like, what what, what, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Um, because I'm at least if I were in that it's position, I'd be like, "What there. the heck am I gonna do?" One v four, they have all this control. All you have is mute SMG level with a shotgun. You can't hold those angles kind of tight, but it's gonna be kitchen in the red hall, and there's gonna be solar pressure. Any other gun with a scope and less recoil is just Defenders, probably gonna have a better time taking those shots on you. Four guns than an SMG eleven at that range, especially with the damage drop off. He would have to hit those heads. And just going to be a little bit challenging. Bomb located by attack. I, I'll, when I said what that last round, I just kind of caught like, the uh, They had the. This game that person on West Main. I was just surprised that he just let them go to Red Hall. He probably didn't want to get too aggro there, which is a good call. He plays safe. 10 seconds left. So let's focus yeah, on this There's always. There's always a time to play safe, and there's always a time to get aggressive. I'll be honest. Player's very discretion. Serious by this mirror set. Attackers are heading out to the fuse of Is typically seen. Typically, you see um, a mirror placed so that way it's by the door, and the headies have to do a small angle onto the big window. But it's flipped completely. I don't even know if the mirror window can actually see the big window. I don't think it can. Um, it's going to be interesting. 
way to, to set this up, but it does prevent the Ash from just getting rid of that mirror instantly, right? That's an interesting true. adjustment. Yeah, I think they had it on the, uh, the other side. The first one. They did. So I think they're just kind of maybe, hey, we don't want to lose the mirror window right away. Even if it doesn't necessarily help anymore. Oh. Wow, baby Slooter saw that coming from a mile away. Crit goes down. That's that Ash too, so it doesn't even matter anymore. They're going to try to fire out mine hiding in the suicide corner. He's going to be able to escape with 50% of his health left. And he's just going to walk back up blue and try to take library again. I like the adjustments that uh, Kennesaw has made this round. The previous round, the previous time, Crit did the same thing. Oh, oh, this run. This is a far run up by Baby Explorer. Oh, my God. Salt missing the shots. Hello? Wow. Both of them with and no. Whoa! Baby Explorer, why is people the freaking... Salt, what are you doing? He had gotten away and you went and aggroed for the kill while he's still being. Baby wow, is that is ready. so crazy. That was a great job by Baby Explorer. I don't know how you get so far and. Salt probably taking the pot off the guard by that. Why he's probably flustered and missing his shots, but. Unfortunate. For UC Davis to have such a good round and get turned around. Um, Attackers have recovered their defense. Yeah, Kennesaw's just making adjustment after adjustment to counter UC Davis. Like at the start, Ash had previously done the West Main getting the uh, cabinet. Does he immediately dies, right? Adjust with the Mira. Um, switch out the Aruni for the Omai so you can play in suicide a lot easier instead of. Mm -hmm. So they, they have to burn it to use a uh, captain. Attackers ball, dropped the diffuser. Is there one burn they really needed? Great adjustments by Kennesaw, overall. Now, yeah, their, their adjustments so far have put them in such a great position to win this round. Two versus five. Attackers this round went a lot the diffuser. Drop the bomb diffuser. Wow. Kennesaw the first time, but Kennesaw, flawless round. No problem at all with these adjustments. I'll be honest. If the score gets to 7-5, that's how this game goes, and Kennesaw wins, I'd be very pissed about UC Davis. Because <laughs> it should be, technically, it should be now 3-2. Or, sorry, 2-3. Well, UC mm -hmm. Davis is perfected 3-2. But, uh, 3-2 right now. Kennesaw winning on their defensive half. Attackers Again, this is considered an attacker-sided map. So UC Davis really has to get this... Attacker round, which I believe they won by Kitchen last time handedly. Um, but they really got to, they really have to win this in order to feel very confident going in. However, I guess Collegiate isn't always just like how Pro League is with the sides on which one's favored. I have seen this map, to be honest, more in the 50 50 than Collegiate. I'm not sure about the stats for Pro League. Ten seconds left. Last I heard, I don't know if that's changed. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, I think the I think the big thing, like you said, I think it it can sometimes be like pro league, but I think the big thing is whether that a team can attack or not. Um, there's obviously a better understanding of attacking in pro league uh, compared to collegiate, so I think definitely. Well, the sides the sides definitely do matter, okay, but I feel like attacking is tough. Attacking is very tough in general, and some teams just fundamentally do not understand it correctly. Um, a little bit more so like the Fanshawe you see black game, Fanshawe kind of struggled a lot. But I feel like UCD and Kennesaw both kind of understand it a bit more than those teams, those two teams earlier. Pawns getting lit up early from bathroom window by crit, and then getting, wow, the trade. Oh, I'm surprised Guac even expected that. Oh, wow. Uh, I am kind of speechless there that, you know, the soils ran out from mud, and of all places, a gun is that ready is crazy for that. That is a crazy run out, yeah. That is a crazy run out. I can't believe that works. I that mean, is the Solus down now. A, a trade, losing the Ash, losing the Solus. Um, good trade for UCD. I I think that might be a worthwhile trade. Activating drone. Oh, oh no, no. Why are you get on the cam Ooh. there? Oh, what oh, the oh, heck oh, is oh, <laughs> Why not just shoot? Why run out? He saw him. He saw him. And wow, Kennesaw is 
throwing away some kills, but Baby Explorer is holding his position tight and it's just, just eating up the utility. Smoke's going out so they can't enter in. He's getting flashed, getting traded out from the trophy player. That happened again in the back. previous round. Talk about Kennesaw making adaptations, but then not adapting to that. Wow. Um, now it's a 2v4. We've been in this situation multiple times with Kennesaw in a 2v4. They've won it, they've lost it. But last time it was a 2v4 on Kitchen, they lost horribly. So, can they win? Just the difference this time is that both defenders are on the same board. Things are going out. The, the cross chow getting the jackal and guac. That was a Good. very critical kill for Kennesaw here. They know this fight on the trophy window is going to happen. He picks up the angle and a little more passively. Shots are going out and QQ is getting lit. They're not taking space, getting shot. Chow getting a double kill and downing. Wow, it's all up to QQ. How does he know the Jaegers right there? Maybe 2v4. Nope. Are you going to boss up real here? Right, real quick. Aggression. Tags going out. Now it's a 1v1. QQ! QQ loses the Chow wins! Wow! Chow! Calm under pressure. Chow just kind of sitting there waiting for the kill to come to him. Oh, two versus four for Kennesaw. That's the man That's a great way to miss. start your... The great way to go into the next half of the game. Chow. Kennesaw. Watching up. Was that a 4K or was that a 3K? I'm not sure. I think that was a. I think that was a 4K. You got a double kill and then... Yeah, then you got the down. Yeah, that was a... I'm pretty sure that was a 4K. Wow. See, uh, the adjustments, like I said again, the attackers. difference between that one round they lost horribly, defenders were isolated. This time they set up the cross. That cross was everything, and Chow was just playing that position. Attackers. And the wall was soft, yet they had people on trophy window. What you see Davis failed to do is force him away from that position and just shoot through the soft wall. If someone's playing somewhere, some pitch, honestly, make holes. Force him. Massive pressure. Make the defense move to expose this position because they had all these crosses. Davis didn't do anything to Blocking it. White they go in for West Main to dining door and didn't look at the left. kitchen door. Twice. Kind of sus set up the boss. This game could easily be 4 2 UC Davis as well. Could have been easily, yes. Yes, it, like. But instead, it's 4-2 to Kennesaw. And that may be that may be all that Kennesaw needed on depending on how their attacks go. If they're just as aggressive as UC Davis on attack. So far, not too bad. Kind of just droning out, kind of figuring out where to get into the map here. Plant Gazer just kind of droning out. Top Solarium. Mine Hayden looking to take Library. Going to try to burn himself out here maybe. Kind of seeing what he has to deal with. Top blue shield that's played by almost universally everyone. Very, very good position to hold. Davis. I have a walking hole to go through on either side of box. Baby Explorer just using up. I was detailed. No shots going off. No gunfights going off. Things are slowing down. Lights out. From the aggressive side of this, uh, now they're just waiting for the attackers to make the aggression. But man, how to get sh shot up? It's lit up by the Azami. The Azami's playing a little bit safe. Cross on the flank. Is he going to be able to get it? Zof doesn't know. And he does. Actually, it's... Is it two people? Yes, it's Salt and Piano. He came up through Jazz. Wow. The flank eating up the attack. A 3K on this flank. And now they're falling back. So they're getting off with their picks. And Francis, in fireplace for some reason, gets the help player. And now it's all off the pawns. Wow. This is way different than I expected. And pawns getting a nice shot off. But has no ammo in that tiny magazine of 21 bullets. Can't continue with the fight. Go into trench. A 1v4. Hopefully, you see Davis does not find a way to throw it. 
for the love of God, don't throw. Please, again. please lock this round down. <laughs> you, see, you see, Davis, you guys desperately need this round. We need you to win. But yeah, I think earlier in this round, I think the UC Davis just kind of realized there was a gap. Let's take the fight to them. Why not? You know? Pawn's getting uh, his position exposed by a beeper. It rotates and gets his position again exposed. Getting the shots off. Oh, wow. Attackers have dropped the bomb. Nice revert that Pawns was looking at and just happens to look away. Wow. A great round by UC Davis. Dominant. That double. That. That double flank, that was perfect. Put coming in from two different sides, one going in through master, the other one going in through bathroom. How perfect was that? I, as as a player myself, you know, typically when there's a somebody flanking, you expect one, you wouldn't expect two. And honestly, them pinching like that going in, one was able to get the Zo. Uh, Attackers need to, to locate and defuse the bombs as they can. Perfectly, these two angles, and then come in. Beautiful the work by UC Davis. Can't wait to see some more of that. I can't wait to see how Pansaw adapts the adapting team this whole time on defense. First, on attack. And, uh, and, they change it. and they are initially a black roof, switched to Monty. And they're getting some vert for this kitchen. Yeah, so this kitchen, this kitchen defense. As we said earlier in the game, it's very, very crucial to hold. Love it. UCD understands that. Kind of saw him. I think it's going to be very similar to how the defense are heading out to the earlier in the game. Uh, I think it's a lot of it. A lot of it. Above. Uh, if everything goes to, goes according to how both teams want it. Um, but yeah, that last round, beautiful work of team. I love to see it. You see Davis really shown that uh, they have a lot of teamwork together, especially on their team. Creating a lot of trades and places the defenders. UCD has really, really, really shown that they're a great team. Pause, however, just going to be able to miss out kill and piano. Lots of Azami Kiba bears. to the double window and get the, uh, protect the key. Now it seems like they're just gonna go through the trophy dive with the Monty and just take space. Um, Anheiden is in West Main. And what is this? Is there a single defender? Yeah, the site's kitchen and that castle is playing. Most of a super shorty, I'd be honest. I'm not sure. Monty's just gonna be able to walk in the site. Wow, and he's just gonna go for a plant. plant going down. What yep. is happening? EC Davis, do something, do something, and you're doing nothing. Attackers activating. Wow, Defenders and the plant is down. It's a 44. Manhide getting tagged up. Double kill by Manhide and triple triple Trace kill by Manhide. And Guac's gonna come in down. So weird, but does Monty know it? They're gonna have to bank on the Monty. Says, Ooh, himself in a bad position. He goes for a second. Turns around. Get up. Very bad. QQ. Get my high. Monstrosity. No, oh, and Menhai goes on a Terra Quad. And he get the ace. Oh, he's right there. Drops his pistol. But can't get it. Clock is left. 1v1. Such a terrible situation for our Kennesaw. Sees a gap in the bomb site, and they take it right away. Uh, that was a great adaptation for Kennesaw. I think their adaptation are amazing to, to watch honestly you see they they don't truly struggle on anything especially on these attacks they don't really struggle trying to figure something out because they just have like a plan b a plan c you know they kind of figure out like a gap to take oh they're holding upstairs a lot trophy's kind of clear let's get in there they're giving us they're giving us room to take let's take it i think that's very good to see for kennesaw and obviously mine hiding bossing up when it matters attackers need to locate and defuse I... very much repelled I gotta say, I find that kitchen strat a little bit weird from UC Davis. Uh, I know it's, it's kind of weird, but, um, you know, just like in Pro League, you know, you have Latin and teams play different from the from the North American teams, right? You have mm -hmm. the pack, the APAC region play differently as well from the others. Uh, but it's kind of like that with collegiate teams in the US. You have the East and the Central and the West teams. 
Yeah. A lot of these West teams play a, a bit, quite a bit of a different style than Central on the East. Really because, well, I don't know if you know this, but they have their own little you know, server to so scrims because they're so far behind it. The rest of the collegiate community or the majority of it. So they're kind of they're kind of in their own little bubble in a sense, especially when it comes to practices. So they kind of kind of thought was interesting, slightly different. Other Western teams. Going past them now and getting Solar Pellet to them. So let's see. Attackers have located a bomb. But yeah, what what you were saying earlier, I think. I honestly didn't. Pretty decent split until you That's honestly great information to know here. Salt. However, is taken down by Mindhiden. Mindhiden absolutely bossing up, but treated out by QQ. Four versus four. Still two minutes left in this round. First engagement happened. As I say, that plant gazer takes down QQ. And now the round tips into Kennesaw's favor up one man. There's so Brit's much. still on this top. There's so much setup for a library side across that there's like not a whole lot of things to work with on a solar side. And Kennesaw just found that out. And another flank bites him in the ass and it bites him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's a maybe two, but the defenders are isolated. Another one in the box, I don't think. Plank going down in office. Where's the plank going down? In office, half a while. Attackers are activating the bomb. All the way over there from Master. But so many crosses, can the Glare even make it over? Two impacts, he could impact the player. No! Wow! And Chow using the Chow keyboard. comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah he just hide behind. Um, what little cover, or I guess the, the rotate, the ball rotate. Finding our rats. Off guard. Right. I hope he just walks in and tries to stick this. Attackers Please stick this. It. As he gets the kill onto the line, he possibly could. Ah. Wow. Kennesaw going 6 3 against UC Davis. Ooh. That, that was so close to not being lethal to the region. Yeah, round just got away from UC Davis. Uh, I don't know. Lots. The trades came in and then they just stopped coming in, you know. Um, I think Kennesaw just started walking in, said, hey, this is our bomb site now. That's twice now. That's twice. Where Kennesaw just sees a hole and can go in. All they had to do was get that pick on the new and then Boom, they got space. They're in sight. They're ready to plant. Attackers need to locate and the bomb and they need to rotate over to support the new. I don't know how I mean, yes, there was Cross's bathroom, there was one in um, Attackers have located a bomb. With a nomad jab, right? But you just gotta ask, what else can your team do to help? Kennesaw just got these crosses and put two people in in the building to get them laid down. Um, yeah, just, yeah, Kennesaw is just kind of they're, they're kind of just taking what they want to be honest. There's, there's a little bit of a fight, but not really. Yeah, that too. So take what they give and. Can't, just keeps giving. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. Yeah, you see Davis is not gonna lie, they're being Santa Claus, giving a lot on these uh setups. I don't think you see Davis also realizes or kind of understands the gaps. Yeah, I don't I don't think so either. I'll, I'll, I'll that. Drones up and running. That strat and Astro strat is a little bit weird. Um, Eddie's on the court as well. Be aggressive. It's nothing on that slower side. They're, they have a lot of util packed up on certain sides. And they're just nothing to put together. Um, so it seems like they're a little bit more even on the sparse strat, which I believe is super Let's see what, Kennesaw, what adjustments Kennesaw has made or makes. Um, they're going for a little bit more direct. So they're not going to risk going over a cross and getting a cross. I mean, Block gets killed. Who's the last time he gets killed on a cross? 
I believe, from the Flores. So, so that, that's a huge kill for Kennesaw. Now you know, hey, the resident flanker down. But as I say, that mine hiding, nice shot on a crit takes him down. Five versus three. This is all in Kennesaw's hands. Man. These are falling apart for you. Simon. Can they salvage this? They need to salvage this. They need to find picks. Can they do it? What? Barely any damage going out. He's taking a little bit. Hey, my height gets a double kill. Now it's down to 1v5. Ken is going down. Everything's falling apart. This. He gets a kill. Attackers are activating the diffuser. It's looking like things are gonna be over for UC Davis. A miracle has to happen. Salt has to pull up a miracle. He seconds doesn't. Remaining. He gets killed Ten by the seconds left. I saw the Five seconds happen. remaining. Saw the seconds left. Saw the seconds left. Wow, what a good game coming out from Kennesaw. A dominant, uh, well, kind of dominant performance in some of the rounds. UC Davis shoot themselves in the foot. Two of these rounds. Um, I'm not getting the plant now. And the other one is just throwing those rounds. Yeah, I mean, two two uh, attack rounds for UC Davis should have been one. So, you know, a 7-3 ending, but the game should have been much closer. It, it honestly should have been. But uh, at least for UC Davis, if they were able to just clean up those slight mistakes. But uh, mm. if I think key key things here, at least for the two, two teams, um, Kennesaw, great job. Uh, finding those holes, taking what they give, right, and making those adjustments. They made a, a lot of adjustments on their defense and not just being stuck to their strats. A lot of teams in collegiate get stuck to their strats, don't make adjustments, and keep failing to win uh, sites that they repeat because they don't make these adjustments. And then you see Davis. They're they're the ones playing too heavily to their strats. Um, they have these holes that they're just giving up. And um, one round after another, different sites, but they still put so much util on it certain sides of it that they leave a huge hole that just gets exploited. But good performance by both teams though. It was a good match. Mm -hmm. Every round was very entertaining to watch very close. Yeah, definitely. I mean small mistakes for UCD really may not have cost them the win, but they definitely cost them a lot of rounds one uh to make it a much closer game. And Kennesaw, like you said, super good at just adapting on the fly. And UCD may be a little bit too strict with their play style sometimes. I hear somebody yelling, let's go. I haven't, I, um, I don't know if somebody won out there. I don't know if it's our team or if it's some of the people that visited the lab today. But, uh, I heard some yells, very distant yells. Let's go, let's go, go. So, somebody yelling pretty loud for us to, have, for us to hear when we have the freaking sound <laughs> panels and everything. But, um, I have no idea. Actually, this is the first match done, I believe. I don't see any other Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Um, yeah, I... Wow. Um, we'll update within the Discord. Please join the Discord if you'd like to continue seeing these updates. We had a poll, actually. I was going to get back to this, but I never really got to it because there's such a high action. There's not as much dead time, unlike the EC uh, Black and the um, Fanshawe Fuel game. There's not as much dead time in this game. Constant action. But um, there was a poll that was sent out and for UC Davis versus Kennesaw. And UC Davis was actually favored with seven votes and Kennesaw with four votes. Almost ironic with it being there's one less vote for Kennesaw. That would have been very ironic, actually. <laughs> so I guess in the terms of everyone who voted in the poll, an upset. But it seemed like in the Twitch chat, I saw a lot of let's go Kennesaw. So Twitch chat was very happy with the results. Yeah, I mean, it just, I don't know, man. It's just, UCD didn't really play up to their potential, it seemed, you know. A lot, a lot of thrown rounds, uh, lack of discipline, lack of just overall knowledge, I feel like. And Kennesaw just absolutely crushed them with uh, those mistakes. You know, punishing mistakes is a big part of Rainbow Six. And Kennesaw did a very, very good job, especially that game. Mm -hmm. And they look to take that momentum on to round three, too. That's... Uh, Two wins for Kennesaw now. And UCD is not the worst thing in the world to lose to Kennesaw. They're, uh, in my opinion, one of the better teams in this qual. So it's not the worst thing to lose to them ever. Again, you just have to be top six. That's okay. Kennesaw still, was, you're still on it. Kennesaw was coming in here to be, I believe they are, I think are expected to be one of the more favored teams here. 
Um, some of the matches going on actually right now, we don't have any matches that have come in, but for those who have uh, been tuned into the stream, I'll read out the matches that are currently going on. Uh, St. Clair versus Kent State, I believe both of those teams are one win. Then there's um, obviously the Kennesaw versus UCB, Kennesaw won. Um, UC Patriots versus uh, Utah. UC Patriots had gotten a uh, first round by. There's 13 teams in this qualifier. Uh, we had a team uh, drop out um, uh, the day before. Uh, that was Vespa, unfortunately. That didn't come. But uh, then there's UC Academy versus IUPUI. Uh, IUPUI just barely lost to Utah 7 5, and Academy got smoked by Kennesaw 7 1. Uh, so let's see how. Both teams match up in the next round. It would probably favor IUPUI. They have been pretty good in CR6. Um, and then the next match is uh, Kentucky versus Ohio and App State versus Cincinnati Black with Fanshawe getting the bye. So, but uh, we will return with more updates, and uh, we'll see you in a lot. I'm going to play the continue talking. So <laughs> no, okay, I'll quickly wrap up. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, thank you for tuning in for round two. We'll continue giving updates and uh, for round three, and we'll see you once round three starts, once the other matches finish up.
Yes, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we had some slight uh, technical difficulties, uh, some rule difficulties as well, trying to figure uh, some things out. But <clears throat> uh, we're here to bring Kennesaw State versus St. Clair. Claire. Nice. All right, and we're on Shalom again. No, we're on Oregon. The top bar is wrong, actually. Ooh, ooh. Hello, production. All right. Wow. So Flores, Doak, Dalk, uh, bands. Um, I am not surprised by many of these. However, I find it interesting Doak and Valk being banned. Um, I'm a zombie band. I feel like we saw all these operators in use on the. Uh, oh, we're on Chalet. I keep seeing that top rate say Chalet, and I'm thinking about that. <laughs> wow. Oopsie button. I like the Flores band. I will say that. I like it too. Very I, useful. One thing that you see a lot of. Uh, you start to see a decent bit is teams will, like on like barrels or, or sites basement. They'll just send a floor is by himself towards barrels. You gotta get the attackers need to locate and, and defuse bomb. Yeah, get out of it. Get that early pressure at the start. Get back. It's good to get that. Sorry, same thing with um the master uh, trophy shield that some teams you know, get that or maybe a swamp shield. Oh. Floors is very good. Um, very good on I'll answer. Zami is also very good on this map. Especially with the six invitational being played, and you really have a lot more stress to pick from now. See how the pro league teams kind of use Zami on this map, and uh, she's very, very useful. So it's good to see her banned as well. I gotta say, especially with Flores off the board. Very interesting dynamic with the bands. Kennesaw banning Doke and attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and just to have an interaction with each other, and then within the game, within the mechanics, and then you have Flores and Zami. See some teams pick Flores to counter Zami, having Flores drones, so you can just blow up and take care of your stuff. Or other teams just bands. But we're starting off with a master, uh, or not master, a games kids, uh, or bunks kids, and a nice meat jammer actually makes it so that they can't open the master wall, but have a meat jammer or a play track. Yep. Uh, nice very, uh, yeah, very aggressive start for Kennesaw on attack here. Got to take a lot of map control pretty easily. Or not pretty easily, but Reload! pretty fast. So, good to see them starting to open things up, starting to figure out where these defenders are. I'm getting on in the round. I guess you could say in this matchup, we got the Jordans versus the Canadians. St. Clair being Canadians and Kennesaw. Unknown to a lot of people. And Black Gazer getting some shots to get out from some nice vert. The Salty Boy getting also lit up by that. Hell, and not knowing that they lowered. Wow. And is able to get back into a nice position. And he is flushed out by Man Hiding, getting an opening pick into this map. Kessa getting some good grounds. And some good pressure, too. Uh, they have pressure in Attic, getting that control, getting master control in Armory. Um, so St. Clair's getting forced back by the, by these attackers. Yeah, so like you said, entry entry kill does go the way of Kennesaw, so that's very good for the attackers. Oh, well, Rapid is going to catch out Mindhide and trying to like throw a drone, I think. Down to the four versus four. Four minute, ten seconds left on the clock. Kennesaw does have some good sort of good positions as the attackers here they kind of have attic ready to take at a moment's Loading notice see that 
St. Clair's running the Mira. <clears throat> Corey Rob, however, takes a lot of damage. I think that was from a grenade. The the no, it was from the uh, and Oh, from the mute. Rapid gets a nice pick. Move the mute down. Yep, from the vert uh, in the classroom. Doesn't know he's downed, maybe, or he's using it as bait. But right now, Kennesaw got bogged down. Wow, that that pick on the man hype really bogged him down. And oh, what? <laughs> oh, my oh, God. No. He just... <laughs> <laughs> he just oh, and he was a good trade. Oh. I was about to say he just wow. toyed with uh with Chow wasting that time to go pick up his team. Oh, face. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a misplay from Corey. Not that he truly would have known. You know, it's all kind of timing. Man, you just, you just sit back and watch that. Man. Kind of saw down to the one versus three for pause. Those is a player in bunks. I could be able to win it out as Jock secures the round four. St. Clair. First round goes for St. Clair on Stairs Bombsite. Oh, wow, Kennesaw had a good start, especially against that castle. They flushed him out and got him. And they're getting good ground, too. Taking uh, Attic and everything, pushing the defenders back just to kids, games, and bunks. But they didn't watch out for any flanks. And that bit them in the butt. That actually bit them in the butt against um, UC Davis when they did that double pinch on, on Schley that we saw in the previous round. Yeah, that was literally last game, right? Attackers yeah. need to yeah. locate um, and defuse bombs. The flanks are still a little bit of a worry for Kennesaw. Um, but you know, that's not that's a relatively easy fix as well. You know, they're bringing the Nomad now, so don't see it being too much of a difficulty anymore. And I think a lot of UC Davis's game plan was also to flank, whereas I'm not too sure if that may be very similar for St. Clair, especially on a different map of Oregon rather than Chalet. I said these operator lineups, this is going to be an interesting uh, bout right here with um, Ten Ella, seconds remaining. a warden, defender, era, and Five seconds left warden, before insertion. Right? And uh, Attacker's objective is to locate team, a bomb right? and defuse it. Kind of that, however, some of the other operators will be struggling. Um, I so want to see a bunker team. rush right here. Yeah. You know, I thought with that first pick, I thought it was going to be an absolute mess. Getting blinded by the Fenrir <laughs> and then having the mirror to deal with and Elmine going off. But that just didn't happen. Um, really vision by the Ella and Manhattan. Shots go off and no one lands a single shot. Super, super aggressive entry here from Kennesaw, specifically Minehide. You know, not very fearless, ready to just go and take the take the map control that his team needs. I mean, we're already in meeting at 250. That's, that's huge. I mean, it would take some teams a minute, minute and a half to take that. So to already have this, it's very good. And it's also very good for Rapid to kind of still be alive. He doesn't necessarily have to get that kill. He can kind of back off of that. Ooh, again. a nice trick. A nice trick. By wow. By Charm. Wow. Great job. Again? Can he do it again? He's trying. And, well, they have nothing on the wall to confirm the hatch. Out of Harbor Chargers. Actually, Yin has Harbor Chargers. Will she go get the hatch? But first, I need to take out these pictures. Or if they elect to use that bomb located by attackers. And Charm gets baby exploder from onto barrels and can't land the shots that he lands. All the hard reach drone. <laughs> yep, and that's all the hard reach gun as well, so Kennesaw's gonna be forced to kind of just walk through doors here now. Especially on this bottom bomb site that's very tough. Rapid still gonna try to hold down Z and walk down freezer as Kennesaw kind of starts to surround the bomb site. And lots of stairs to just walk down here as we are on the basement. But with 55 seconds left to go, there's still go. a lot of time for the attackers. I hope that you guys heard that, but the F not just activated right above. At least I heard it on my end. I don't know if you hear it on his. He's about to get blinded. He swings. And he gets TK'd! Oh. Wow! Wow! The worst time. Oh it's a huge TK as well. Rapid is so slippery, dude. He's just always just like running around trying to strip, throw pot shots at people to just scare him out. Pause taken down by Corey Rob. One versus five for Mindhaiden. Takes down Corey Rob as he slides. 
Healthy boy Haver gets a kill on mine hiding. Defenders are gonna win round two. Or he just wants, he wants to get that kill. <laughs> so bad that he throws a flawless round. But that's fine. Still won the round. Four people up. Flawless rounds don't really add to anything, anyways. Just a big, uh, big flex, I guess. And nobody really knows that. Wow. Uh, so Absolutely. far, a dominant performance on the defensive half of St. Clair. It seems like Kennesaw usually gets in pretty quick, and St. Clair kind of just backs off, uh, as shown in their, in their kids' hold. And also Defenders, the protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Uh, let them let Kennesaw take this space. Hey, you look I'm surprised that I did not have to get out. Uh, the camp going there at the end, but just. Just out to the end. a pick. I think. I think it didn't really work out too well for them. Um, 10 seconds to insertion. I, I felt like St. Clair definitely had that not Five seconds to go. Maybe the hatch wasn't Ooh. open. They just. Yeah, and I think that a big part of that was that uh, Cade trip on that hatch earlier. Just when you know, when you know that happens, and then you kill the Ying, he's like, "Oh, maybe that's the second pair of hard breach charge." And you're pretty safe in sight and can kind of move around however you want. But uh, moving back into this round, we are attacking the leading hall. And we look to do at least a top top floor clear here for Kennesaw. Lots of barricaded doors just kind of putting stuff in the way of Kennesaw. Mine hiding off that ash that he's been playing this game and last game, especially onto the Grim. Really good use of Grim could be very useful here as we can kind of know where people are and aren't now. And as I say, that the castle, I believe, is spotted. These. Mine hiding looks to swing for the castle. And down goes castle. Wow, my knight, look at this, thrown in front of him, just walking in. I love that play. I love this. This is the correct way to attack, I believe. I love just, that they're just able to walk in and just take take room. I'm a little surprised the castle just didn't even bother looking over towards white with all those bees going off. Right? Um, that too, yes. But then again, he was getting pressured from kid from uh, Trophy as well, so... Spot where else do you look? Um, wow. Oh, uh, Series, but it's a good start. Getting some vert. Holes. Well, it seems like Sanko is a little surprising. They are. Wow. A double. Wow. Holy yeah. Rob. Great wow. Nitro Cell. Takes out the sledge. That's huge. He was thirsty for kills the round before, and he just got. Attackers drop the diffuser. And Salty Boy getting another kill. Wow. St. Clair. I mean, not St. Clair. Kennesaw having these good openings and then just. Attackers recover the diffuser. They're playing. Docks. That's all up to man hiding. 1v3. Attackers recover the bomb diffuser. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. Yeah, St. Saint Clair just huge round to get a pick, kind of fall off. It's like, it's like they kind of give Kennesaw some space, but then they're just like, hey, we, you thought you had the space, and here comes a nitro cell through the floor. Or, hey, we're coming up to flank you or something like that. So early Kennesaw timeout, but I think they need to use it, kind of figure out what's going wrong. It's always tough losing that third, losing that third attack on the third bomb site as well. Uh, I, this is the perfect time, honestly, to use a timeout. You're halfway through your attack. You have to get rounds. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're having these, like, these, these fair starts. They get a pick. It, 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 actually, yeah, they, they just get a pick. And then they get nothing else. Um, I mean, they, they get the work done, but then they just start dropping like flies. And they need to figure out what is going on. Um... Now there is a difference actually between uh, for how this is set up here for the C qualifiers. Actually, for the defenders, team. protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Testing from our qualifiers. Uh, 
people we, we tried out this, this 30 second, two 30 second timeouts. Uh, we kind of want to emulate a little more kind of like basketball. If you have, the, have these timeouts, right? To your stock. So in best of ones, one timeout sometimes. It's not in best of threes, it feels very good to have that one timeout. We don't have the Ten seconds left before insertion. Um, often in five seconds to so go. I mean, two best of three or two three second timeouts. A lot of people actually are shooting. Attackers very objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Wall fortified. Actually, look who was Camera activated. So a little bit of a surprise to me actually, but um, so we decided to stick it. I like it. I like this one. I think they're very good. You have a chance on offense and defense to take a timeout, which I think is Look at that angle. I think I've never seen that contestant before. Mine had not unable to get the kill there, not the end of the world. Uh, they do know that Rapid is now around, kitchen or dining. And he's been very slippery, shoots the drone, runs away. Overhead feed. He just likes to take these shots, impact somebody, and run. And honestly, that's a great way. Oh, no. Jux, no! Oh my oh, gosh! Changing max. Wow. Corey Rob cool. tried to just run out the master door. I'll say, Corey's getting, he's, he's getting really aggressive. He's Very thirsty for kills. <laughs> wow, and Rapid gets the pick onto Manhattan, who was looking for earlier. Ironically enough, Manhattan's still by the white line. Shoots at Fawns. Fawns gets some damage. If you look at the map, that sounds so smart. Yeah, Manhattan's getting taken, he's getting pinched. Actually, Rapid, my bad. Rapid gets taken out five bombs. 3v3. Harbridge is still up. They're still at the main, and they have a line. They have a decent amount of UK to use. A bomb has been located. Players, but they still don't have army control. They still have the mirror to meet. Yeah, but there, however, there is a lot of time for Kenneth Sonny. That 3v3 did pop up at... 1.30 exactly, so that's halfway through the round. So there is a lot of time for kind of Kenesada to sit here, think, what do we really need to do now that we've done we've done this, this, and that, what else is there? But Faulty Boy is going to get the kill off the Baby Exploder. That is their ace. Hard Breacher. Faulty Boy does want some more here, knows that there's a guy in the master. Pause, top white. Can do a lot here if you get backstab. Chow is able to get him. Attention on the game. Uh, I'll set. There we go. I, I'm like dying on the inside because I know Kansas is such a, like, he's such a good team. But I think the difference of what they're doing here and maybe on Chalet, because Chalet they felt a little more, more together. Um, mm -hmm. like Chalet they set up all these crosses and. Morgan, they're not really set up all these crosses. They're doing, they're giving ones, uh, especially that player that was an army. He got what three ones or maybe two ones, um, and then a break. He get, gets a little breather, can reload, can reposition, find a spot he's comfortable in, and then get ready for another engagement. And I think attackers need to locate and defuse I feel bombs. Like this, that's what, it's Kennesaw's downfall so far on this map. They, they get these opening picks. They funnel the the room or whatever. Mm -hmm. They can't. They, they just die to these ones. They're just hit. individual players. So they are doing or making plays and they're capitalizing and they're not getting punished. Um, yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think. Wall <laughs> I think you're. You're absolutely right. The, the difference between the Kennesaw attacks on the chalet, Morgan. I think a big part of that is that they're not really creating. A Five web of like where a defender can go and you have to run, where the defender has to run into Attackers an attacker's gun. It's kind of, oh, we need this guy killed, so I'm just going to run and go kill him real quick. The that, that's not working for Kenneth. You, you got to give St. Clair some respect in the 1v1s. You can't just sit and just hope you can walk in and just shoot him when he's not even looking at you. You, have to, you really have to set up some of your kills, especially rapid. He, this guy, he's so slippery. Look, he's going to shoot this drone. As I say that, Reload. see, it just he's just able to slip away when he should. 
He should be dead there, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Yeah. Oh, it might be... See, like, the, 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 the timing, the timing with Rapid getting away is really, really hurting Kennesaw. And I think that's just an overall statement of their attack. See, Koi Rob here. Kind of folding across here. Attackers have to walk into him, especially yeah. with the chasing Rapid. Again, just rapid running around the map. He's always in the back here. Boy, Rob, take down pause though. Five versus four. St. Clair pretty firmly in this round as Kennesaw kind of stalled out. Boy, Rob with another kill. And down swings rapid, taking out Chow. Five versus two in St. Clair's favor. Panda was down earlier, or Plant rather, was down earlier in the round, so he has 20 health. Fine hiding on the Jackal, looking at him. Attack from a different side this time. Catches out Cory Rob on the rotate. Two versus four now. As I say that, Rapid's going to take down Plant Gazer. One versus four for Mannheiden. Able to get the kill with his Jackal skin. <clears throat> and one versus three now with a minute left. Has some time here. Diffuser. What's going through his mind, do you think? Here? Oh, his heart's probably pounding, but the same Drone time. activated. At the same time, I feel like I would feel a bit like, oh, what am I gonna do? It's a 1v3 on basement, you don't have any actual control. Defense can just look at where you're going. There's a warden on table too, you can just see the smoke. Like, Countermeasure up. So like, yeah, definitely a very, very hard situation. Maybe even trying to take this as a little bit of a timeout as well. I wouldn't be surprised, especially now with what he's doing. I think it's a little bit. Uh, not too sure what to do. Honestly, I don't know what to do. There's not much you can do. Just hope they swing you and you win. Seconds left. Well, it seems like all the Great job by St. Clair. Especially that, that, that discipline of not knowing when to not swing, especially in a situation like that. Don't want to, you don't want to make a 3v1 to a 2v1. As soon as that happens, oh, you're on a slippery slope of failure. Um, wow. <laughs> Dominant 5-0 right now. Yeah, it's and honestly, it hasn't even really been that close. I, I don't think... Attackers need to locate and defuse as many The closest round was what, like can. a 1v3, 1v2 maybe? It was never, ever really been close. Board. Man hiding the only one with more than one kill. The rest of them either one kill or zero. Uh, a lot of these are coming through their flank. Like, through flanks, too. Like, a lot of these nuts. So, I guess it just needs to. They, okay, on Chalet, they were a very quick team. And it feels like they're getting Ten seconds left. and then getting shrapped. Five seconds to insertion. Uh, and they're being reactive to where... Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Reloading! Cover me! Oh, yeah, definitely. I think, the, like, Kennesaw is getting, getting the opening pick on some of these ones, too, and they're just not able to get through. Just, uh, they're they're mid-round stalling. It's not even really stalling, to be honest with you. They're just getting caught out at the worst times. Or if it's like last round, they just couldn't clear really? it. Too, but other than that last round, it's really just been stalling in the middle of the part right around, and then St. Clair can react to that. I'd like to remind everyone who's watching from home that uh, these are currently the top two teams in the place points-wise in the qualifier. And there's also... Two kills going out against the salty action. Um, 
Cory. Cory's been aggressive Dang the whole up. time, and they just kind of wait for that. Wow. And Charm finding a pick onto Marion Height. That is huge because the rest That's of the their only kill producer. Yeah. I don't even have as many as five kills total. The rest of them need to step it up. They have to step it up. Definitely so. Four versus three. St. Clair may be down a player, but honestly, it's not that bad. And as I say, that rapid takes out Baby Exploder. Another one of those people with two kills. Plant Gazer gets himself onto the board. Rapid is down. That slippery roamer is now gone. Defense. Plant going down by paws. Can Charm stop him here? He's a little bit scared to peek, really. Say that Chow takes down Charm. One versus three for Jocks. Some shots down, but attackers Kennesaw is going to win this sixth round that they so desperately needed. One to five. That was a good attack by Kennesaw. They did what they think it's just needed. Just find the soft hit in the air on the defense. They were able to analyze it real nicely against ECD. I mean, I'll be honest, ECD was kind of a bit glaring sometimes. Uh, but let's take a quick drone look. You might see where the holes are. Then against Ken at St. Clair, it's not so obvious at first uh, on where those holes are, and St. Clair is struggling to find. So now they're on the on the defenders. Uh, protect your bombs from being defused so by attackers. I agree. I would still take a time out. I 100% agree. The timeout, the timeouts are definitely very useful, especially when you're down so hard. You, you don't really have any room for mistakes in the kind of One to win. In regulation, you have no mistakes. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. But again, even an OT, OT win is very good. Um, honestly, I sort of disagree with you. I'm going to be honest. Um, I think the Blitz on Oregon is probably where LVC uses Blitz the most. So definitely from, like, my player perspective, I think Blitz on Oregon isn't that bad. I, I agree with you. There's a lot of crosses here, but look at this play right here. Single 1v1. But Baby Exploder goes down. Um, however. Rapid is asking. I think there's, there's good cases for Blitz. But this at this attack, this top attack, I've never lost. That was it. Yeah, I think oh. the. Oh my God! Uh, I just got a match report. Black beat Kennesaw seven one. Wow. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can.
Definitely. Ten seconds remaining. Attackers have discovered the location of a bomb. Five seconds left before insertion. Attacker's objective is to defuse a bomb. <laughs> Attackers dropped the diffuser. Attackers recovered the tower. Looks like they're about to dive in very soon. I know the tower pressure. Slow down by the mountain. Huge kill for rapid. Rapid and plant gazer. Oh my gosh. I think they're able to retake pillar. Multi board down. That's the blitz, I believe. Yes, the blitz. Changing megs. Friendly down. Still anybody's round. <sighs> As I say that, uh, mind hiding takes down Koi Rob. He was an offender. Pause. It's a kill onto the blitz. Salty boy. And mind hiding takes down Charm. What a disaster that was. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds remaining. A collapse so fast. Yes. It. It, it would have. It seemed like it would have started out fine. But however. You, you, you know it's funny. The emails typically not that good for the board, right? So you just shoot it real quick. Don't need those explosives anymore. Um, and well, she stopped the blitz. She and that's one. I feel like that's one of the few times where it's like that mail was a really good play right there, or at least it ended up being a good play. A little bit of bad luck by the move that Saint Clair made. But it, Attackers oh, need to locate and defuse bombs. In time. And then. F not going off. Honestly, I thought that same player was going to be scored first before the release. Electro sensor active. We got it. And what a disaster for St. Clair that was. Great job by Kennesaw hitting those two. Honestly, they're, they're on a three round streak. The momentum is in their hands. St. Clair. They got it for us. 10 seconds to go. Five seconds to insertion. You can stop working. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Yeah, I, th I think that's the correct play. I think uh, I think the blitz is a very it's a nuanced thing to do. There's only a couple certain positions you need to take as like a blitz, and it obviously hasn't been working. You know, these, these rounds are sort of close, but then they're not. And as I say, that Koi Rob is taken out by Chow. Oh. He's on. He was on T3, I think. Yeah. Loading your mag. Pick you up. Looking for Inca. Sting is active. Track Sting is out. Sting is active. Attackers have located no a bomb. No one is dropped. Oh, had been dropped. Attackers recovered. Attackers have dropped a bomb diffuser. Oh my gosh! Crazy shot by Mindhide. Oh my gosh. Terrible timing. Oh, Mindhide just takes that round away from St. Clair. St. Clair, you just had to open the split door so you could watch the split nitro. Uh, oh. That is so tough for St. Clair. Hey, uh, production, I we got a comment saying that the in-game sound noise is quite loud compared to the past week. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. <laughs> no 
as we move on to round 10, Kennesaw four in a row. That started on their attacking side too. So a lot of that momentum. It is a pretty defense-sided game. So far, nine of the 10 rounds have been won by the defense. <laughs> or eight of the nine rounds played around. <clears throat> as we are only in the 10. <laughs> That's crazy. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I'm so sorry to cut you off. Oh, all good, all good. What happened? I didn't even see it. I was um, yapping. Rapid had his drone way out, and he was hiding behind a plank, and uh, the soldier was trying to shoot him. Couldn't shoot through the wood. And um, there was an impact, and Rapid said, That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh, gotta love Solus. Really punishing people for keeping their drones not so safe, even if it costs an impact. So, like I said before, on this round 10, it's going Kids defense. Sorry, I'm all out of whack now. Bringing the Blitz again. I'm not sure. I said earlier I like Blitz on Oregon, but uh, the way that St. Clair using it, I'm not too sure if I like it. You have a Blitz upstairs too. You know that it's so it Lots of wasted two, util there. They wasted two Candelas. And like simple drone to re-up what they had lost earlier would have shown that they were fine. But, um... And, uh, Nitro comes out and gets Salty Boy. Shield. See, so Kennesaw made the adjustments and prepared for the round that they won. And the adjustments to do even better. Um, St. Clair's just fallen into the trap of repetition. Killed by it's... The, the definition of insanity is trying something again, expecting... I'm not gonna lie, they're kinda doing that right now. At least on the master side of things. Definitely, and I don't I don't think it's also hurts to mention that Mineheiden has been absolute killer this game. Oh my god, I didn't even notice he's fifteen and six. Yeah. Fifteen and six and he did a lot on attack already too, and he's doing a lot on defense as well. And as I say that charm takes down pause. Still four versus Ooh. four and Mineheiden goes down to jocks. This round is looking very well for SCC. Baby Exploder gets a trade back on a Corey Rob. Where was that kill? I don't know, but it doesn't matter anyway. So, Chow. Missed a few shots, but that's okay. Huh? Jackson will win this for his team. 1v2, he has time to think. <gasps> oh my god. Jox with the quad kill? Can he ace? Oh! Jox! Oh my gosh! Ace from Jox! That is absolutely ridiculous! A little 1v3 as well? <laughs> wow. Wow. What? Kennesaw! Why are you overgressing? Why? Just hold the crosses. 1v3, 1v3, 1 HP in a dream, time running out, 20 seconds left, and Jox just absolutely steps up when needed with a little bit of help from Kennesaw. But, wow. Absolutely ridiculous play. And that sends St. Clair to match point as well. That is like, that's a timeout worthy mistake right there. I'm not going to lie. Like, oh, that's that's so tilting. I mean, Wow. Fair enough. God. Like, God. Bomb located by attackers. And then, then it goes down to three v three. Not so. One. Why? You know that dude's by trophy. I rotated. Ten seconds to go. Many of games. I'm ready. I'm more safe than able. Five seconds to insert. Why you swing like your top white? Sure, you have the cutoff. He misses the shots. Attackers All right. Why are you the swing? Especially when your other player who's playing it heads rotate isn't swinging. Just wait for that. Eight. Fifteen awesome. seconds left as well. Like, he has to play it. Like, you don't have to peek him at all. So I might sound like I'm rooting for uh, Kennesaw a lot. It was mainly just because, I mean, it's kind of an underdog story. Like, one and five. It's kind of it in the Drone first activated. Half. So... Uh, who, who doesn't love to see a uh, team that's getting absolutely beat up on? 
come back. Yeah. And honestly, we could still see a 5-1 half here. You know, that could be the one round loss. Uh, it's a difficult one to swallow for Kennesaw, but maybe that's the only round loss of their defense. You maintain... Never know until this plays out. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I was about to say to maintain the top seed. Actually, to, to maintain the top seed uh, and be in the second seed, they cannot afford... Well, actually, we're... Actually, uh, black. The black actually can take the top seed. But uh, to secure second, to keep second, or take first, neither of these teams can go to OT. OT is for keeps, technically. So it helps the losing team more. So let's get back to the game. But a minute 30, and this is looking like a much different round. Usually we're seeing trades left and right. And a miss drone on the Solus? Uh, nope, they find her. Boy, though. Salty boy, pick it up though. I love that. I actually really love that play. Even if it may have been unintentional with it. But Mine Hyden still alive. Big presence in earlier rounds. Misses the Nitro, however. Not too much of the end of the world as we're defending the basement. I see you hiding. Jackson tracks to the back in sight. They're gonna flank up. They're gonna flank up. That's going out though, and Chow gets aggressive and gets punished for it. Thinking he can sneak up laundry to go for a peek, but no. There was three Saint Clair people going around with Z and going to lobby. He did not stand a chance there. Hatch is soft too, maybe for the roamers, but um, I think that is just a mistake by Kennesaw. Maybe they are not right mindset. And a nice big five man hide on the view. Yeah, that's the 16th kill for Mindhide. Currently holding over that 2 KD as well. 16 and 7. As I said, that pause takes down rapid 3 versus 3. 10 seconds left for the attackers. Plant Gazer in a great spot. Killer. Oh! Catches out. Oh my gosh. This round has gone away from St. Clair. Kennesaw uh, takes round 11. Amazing job by Plant Gazer, Mindhide, and Pause to pull it back. 3 v 5. Nice job. Definitely the, the, the first half of the round was definitely St. Clair's. Oh, yeah. But that that last half of the round, Kennesaw really kind of fucked up, really held down the site, made them have to come and peek them. A lot different than that other round where Jox was able to clutch. So they've already learned from the Jox clutch that Kennesaw cannot afford to just give them ones. Wow. I... So... I just, need so, to locate and defuse bomb. Here you see, we have a broadcast room, it's an isolated room, and we have a main area over here. I'm on online! Oh, me too. Across our building wall is our uh, comp room. The academy for C team currently in there. I heard help. I heard, I heard, uh, um, I heard, uh, it's a black team yell from. All the way across the lab after the Utah. I mean, heck, I'd be that lab too. I thought something bad was happening. I heard the scream. Sorry. Uh, less talking about CTX here, but 5 6. I'm still surprised a timeout has been called by St. Clair. Um, you've won one round. You start up 5 1, and you've won one round so far in the attack. You need this round. You need it to be able to get first going into the second half of the qualifier. Of the group stage part of it. But yeah, they're not coming. Honestly, I think sometimes teams just forget to use their timeouts. Um, I know at, at my team, we seldom ever use timeouts. Uh, whether that's good or bad, probably bad. <laughs> but a lot of times we just forget, to be honest with you. It's, just that, sim it's that simple of a reason. Oh! Just say that. Wow, rapid, nice shot on the chow. Great start for St. Clair. 40 seconds of the round. Already have the entry kill. Well, and the rest of us kind of saw repeat what they did the last round, which was secure the win. But they're think back up on kids. This is a quite different. Okay, hold bandit, come on. Ah, uh, I see what's happening here. And he gets the harbage charges. Wow, that is great. Rapid, not knowing what the heck happened, finally seeing that the experts took 
Last is Harbor located by attack. No more attic pressure. And wow, Corey dies, gets trade out with rapid. Good trade there. Building in now. Is that rapid? Attic windows in Maplewood? Is it attic? That is an attic. Paws also very steady on this trophy shield. Another very big part of a kid's defense. Might hide in 17 and 8. Just absolutely tearing up the server right now as we are in the 12th round of this game. Hey, uh, Rapid still on. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, shout out to Menheim for buying the glacier skin. That looks nice. <laughs> Salty boy, huge kill on the pause. Two versus four. Four Saint, four Saint Clair. Wow, Meinheim. I don't care. I'm just going to swing this guy real quick. Rapid goes down. Two versus three. Lots of time left. Meinheim still on the board. Super aggressive here. Ooh. My gosh, another kill. Another down. One versus two now for Salty boy. Okay. Has to deal with these two Kennesaw defenders. We've seen this before. Do they throw? Oh my god. <gasps> oh! Yes, they throw. Oh, he's down. One versus one. Mind hide. Can he go for 20 kills or is Salty Boy going to shut him down? Mind hiding! Mind hiding! Oh my gosh! Just absolutely locking it down for his team. 20 kills on the board as well. Absolutely ridiculous. Chat's coming out in all chat as well. Mindhide absolutely oh, wow. bossing up and really helping out his team. He said, you don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. He must be feeling it. Oh, my gosh. He's in the zone. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused absolutely. by attack. St. Clair has to attack on overtime. It's been a 5-1 split for the defenders each yeah. time so far. So will we see the same? Uh, the uh, production told me it was going to be a good match. I was thinking it was going to be I think, I was thinking it was gonna be good. When I saw size thing. Uh, the, the O uh, four seed I of It is overtime, Five so that means that whoever wins will only get two points, and the leader will actually Attackers objective is to locate a bomb and completely destroy them. But hey, it separates them out from people who can match that out. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't try it so well. Oh, you probably love you guys. So, here we go. St. Clair really has to find a way to actually get a... Quote unquote real attack, if you know what I mean. Oh, I like this play from Jox. An early pick oh, by Manhattan. Security wow. Holes. Just give him another. Why not? Give him <laughs> another kill. Well, he hit absolutely insane. Sorry, you, 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 actually, you kind of cut out there. Oh, I said. <clears throat> 21 and counting for Meidheim. That's absolutely insane. Will he reach 25 kills? I think he could. My guys are wow. Getting another pick. Rapid is down. And Corey is lit. Very little HP. St. Clair trying to figure out what to do. They're scrambling. And Jax is in a tight spot. He's fighting his demons and a real person. You have to deal with the security guy. There's pins going out in for the freezer stairs. Good to watch it, but there's no one there. No drones that even support it. And they don't know that man hiding dropped. Here's the freezer. Now he's looking down the hatch. Now all the St. Clair people are doing something we saw earlier, which is that all of them go to the same area. Switching the push. Going for the meeting hatch open. Not a lot of time left. 110 on the board. Honestly, St. Clair really hasn't done anything in this round, to be honest, other than die, which is not good. I was saying, if I was St. Clair win or lose this round, I would probably take them out. 
Someone needs to take a time out. As a this actually, playing a solid is they have to. There's no way. Yeah. No way they couldn't afford. I think. Yeah, I think there should be a timeout after this round, no matter what. But Limited options for St. Clair here. Left. Seems like they're gonna maybe little bunker to rush. Do a barrel e box hatch drop. I know that after it's clear, it's a person playing in the hallway. They start to push, blinded by the Fenrir, but before he gets free of it, gets swung by two people, who may not get a double kill. Can you get, you get, get a triple? Can you get a Oh quad? my! Yo! My Niden! And he will! Oh my god! Nine kills in two rounds! He's absolutely, he is absolutely like, for lack of a better term, he's farming St. Clair, like, That's the real talk here. <laughs> Who took his ace? Who ace team kill to come out. You can't. That would have been amazing. That would have been ridiculous. Can, can we get a tab real quick? Can we get a tab? 20, 24. Tennyson took a timeout. We got a timeout. Yes. Yeah. I mean, oop. Um, wow. I think you're right, though, Joseph. I think he is going to get 25. I have a hard time feeling that he's not going to. I am so glad that Kenneth saw a timeout. <laughs> Literally, look at this. St. Clair, you have two timeouts. What are you doing? You lost. F you went 5-1. and one on, You started 5-1 and one on on the defense, and then you go 5-1 and one on the attack. Use a timeout. Reestablish your mentals. Reestablish the flow of the game. Because once a team starts winning rounds, it's going to be a lot harder to just throw them off. Right? Reset the table. Didn't. Any other team that's watching this, please. Need to locate to call time out. Yeah, timeouts at the at the very least, it gives you thirty seconds to just breathe. Maybe stand up out of your chair, stretch your legs for half a second. You know, or just do something, just just to you know, kind of figure something out. Get yourself a little bit more of a comfortable position in your chair, or just anything. Talk anything over. There's so many things. Timeouts not just about talking strategy. There's so many things you can do with a timeout, and especially when you have two. And with these close rounds, sometimes when they're getting super close and you're at the end, you are, your heart is bumping and you're just like, oh, you just need to breathe right at the end of these rounds. And a timeout can help with that. And also, some of these timers can help with adjusting right, your uh, defensive attacks. But now it's 7 6, and we're going to see Kennesaw running the blitz this time. Ah, how interesting. Um, are they just going to seal it off with a blitz rush? I hope not. That would be interesting. Um, that would be very interesting. Because I don't think St. Clair succeeded on a single round where they brought in blitz. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so either. Ooh, and Rapid gets a nasty kill from Garage, probably, onto Plantica. Wow. There goes Rapid. That slippery roamer. Going to be a big thorn in the side of Kennesaw. He's already got the first kill of the round. But Kennesaw did bring out the Nomad, so hopefully that is able to stop any flank. See, though, Rapid has proven very, very hard to uh, clear. Salty boy, yeah. Melted. And Bowser, oh, puts it to a 3v2. 2v2 <gasps> over, over aggroing, and wow, Jax gets his double kill. Now it's a 1v2. Paws is in a great Ooh. position, though, but Rapid, oh my god, he's so good with that Ella. We've been talking so much about Mineheiden, but oh my gosh, what a great shot by Rapid. Rapid, just such a good, effective roamer with that Ella, especially. And we're going all the way, Joseph. We're going all the way here. We are. But not going to lie, that was an amazing flick to his head. Yeah, I was... I like her or something. <laughs> Running to Ella. Yeah, honestly, yeah, you don't see L played that often anymore. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, once, once her, once her gun got nerfed, like huge recoil, and I believe the damage nerfed as well happened at the same time. Defenders never really saw her kind of come back into the meta or really being used a lot, and she's been used a lot on this map with the shield. And honestly, for the gun, a lot of people like to pick Warden because you know the one point five. It's a good gun, but. Um, Honestly, though, it's heck. Um, 
rap and just make it work. I love that our observer is studying the paintings. I said a few times and I actually really do like I think that's a very funny touch to the stream. <clears throat> but yeah, like you were saying, uh, that Ella is very, you don't really see Ella a lot, but Rapid has been a great use of her. But now Rapid is attacking with his team of St. Clair. He's on the buck again. He's been playing the buck a lot. And we'll see. So far, it's been six and one for the defense. So on both, on both sides. Oh, Corey, three? Two bottom people? I don't know. But um, I'm a little surprised Kennesaw actually went up the stairs. Um, I think all their, they've, what, they won one time on it, very close. They won a second time on it, also very close. Their second, yeah, their second defensive choice was the throw. Actually, jocks. the first round was a Even then it was win. a 1v3. Right? Yeah. So it was mm -hmm. a dominant win, close loss, close win. Attackers have located a bomb. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised. What? Let's see how this attack goes. And Paws gets an early kill onto Charm. There goes the Thatcher. Um, there's no electric on the wall, so not the end of the world. You can always try to get the walls open and blow by getting units off the walls. But the shield should is not gone. Um, I think the ace. I think the ace missed the throw, but that's not the end of the world either. That or there's a meat jammer uh, that is blocking it. From there. Yeah, the shield. Very well, could be that. Jox is 14 and 7. I mean, he's holding up his end of the bargain, too, especially playing a little bit of that more supportive type role. Maybe not role, but operators. Definitely more supportive type operators. It seems but like Mineheiden's like still in Attic. Seems like St. Clair's going to get more pressure on them. Mineheiden, Lexington just trying to rotate out. A lot of stalling out here from St. Clair as well as we can. We're in the last one minute and five seconds of the game. Mineheiden is down. That's huge for St. Clair. Plank Gazer and Paws, however, answer with two back of their own. 2v4 for St. Clair. Not looking good. Especially in the Fenrir smoke. That is not a good Ooh. thing to be. Salty Boy gets one of his own. Rapid and Salty Boy, can they clutch it out for their teams? But all Kennesaw has to do is just sit here and waste their time. Pause taking shots onto Salty Boy, but pause and chow, take it down for their team. Kennesaw is going to win this 15 round Oregon game. Huge win for Kennesaw, but huge, huge game for both the teams as they made it to overtime. Not really hurting one team as bad as it would be. What a great match. Literally going down to the wire. Uh, well, not all the way as it could have gone, but. But wow, man, I'm not able to get to that 25 kills, but 24 is still a great number. Huh? That's that's absolutely insane. I will say both of our predictions of 25 did, uh, did not happen, but that's okay. Earlier when I said, can you get the 24, I was Loki wanting to say, can you get the 30? But uh, <laughs> uh, evidently not. But wow, he, he, he carried Kennesaw, oh my yeah. god, like, it, they went, he was doing, like, you know, pretty all right during the, the first attack, and then he's like, okay, I need to step it up, but, wow. Yeah, I mean, the attacks, are, on the attacking side, he was already the top fragger for Kennesaw, but it wasn't, like, super, super crazy, it was like six or seven kills, I think, um, and honestly, both teams struggled on attack, there was only one attack round was one between each, so, they're not the end of the world. But then on defense, I mean, he just absolutely, he absolutely stepped up and just started absolutely frying. It's, it's ridiculous. He did start frying. Insane. Well, um, wow. And I, there are a couple matches that are done as well, but I'll read, I'll read uh, what he's done so far for this round. So obviously I stated earlier, Cincinnati Black upsetting Utah 7-1. Wow, I, I'll be honest. I'm surprised about that. I thought Utah Black would probably be one of the teams that would run for like most of this, um, but they evidently did not. Um, then our match uh, was that we just watched St. Clair, Kennesaw. Kennesaw beating St. Clair 8-7. Tight game. 
Uh, UK Kent State um, is not finished yet. However, the next match that is gone is Fanshawe Fuel versus IEPUI. IEPUI going 7 1 against Fanshawe. Dominant win by IEPUI. Bring it back after, uh, I think they, like, they're on a two win streak now. Um, then UC Patriots just barely missing overtime with UC Davis. UC Davis winning 7 5 against them. And there's App State and Cincinnati Academy. Keep in mind that App State just lost to Cincinnati Black. So uh, if App State lost to Cincinnati Academy, uh, not going to lie, wow. But um, also App State beat UC Red at the UK land. <laughs> so that would be quite uh, <laughs> ironic or uh, that would be quite interesting. Um, and then Ohio University got the bye. Uh, wow, this has been a great first half of games. Um, and... While not all the games are complete to list the current standings, and uh, all these standings actually are, of com- at least the first couple are of completed games, you have Cincinnati Black in first place with three wins, no OT wins at all, uh, so just clean wins. You have Kennesaw uh, at number two, Kennesaw State having, um, oh, their screen hasn't actually uploaded or updated. Has it? I think it shifted. Sorry. I don't think it's it's not updated on my end either. Hmm. I don't think they reported the match quite yet, but it will be Kennesaw at number two, and they'll have um, eight points. Oh, wow, more things are shifting. Actually, let me just go back to the rounds because match reports <laughs> are coming in one after another. Uh, the U.K. game against Kent State finished. U.K. finds a win against Kent State, 7-5. Another close game. And... um. App State beat App State beat Cincinnati Academy seven five as well. Wow, I'll, another close game. I there's almost there's usually it seems like there's two blowout games and then the rest are just close. <laughs> um, so a very tight competition that we have here. Um, wow, and if only this game could actually set its own so I can get the standings before we go to our break. Sorry, I just kind of want to set this real quick before we. Yeah, I don't know why that Kennesaw game is not showing up yet. That's the last game to be reported from at least what I can see. There we go. It's been reported. And let's see the standings before we go into our uh, break. And I can get back. And I am so sorry. This game. <laughs> on stream. All right, here are the current standings. Actually, it will be Kennesaw State. Um, I believe they're higher up because of um, our tiebreakers. So Kennesaw State is number one with three wins. And they're at nine points. Uh, Cincinnati Black is number two at three wins, also nine points. Then you have Utah, who is at two wins, one loss, six points. Um, you see Davis at two wins. Uh, they're number four. Two wins, one loss at six points as well. Uh, Kentucky, also two wins, one loss at six points. They're number five. Uh, St. Clair is at... Oh, hold on. Something's actually shifted. It Wait, hold on. Why is it saying three wins? Okay, they're at two wins. Three wins. Kennesaw. Something's a little wrong on the challenger mode side, but I think it updated again, and it flipped since I black is actually number one. Um... My bad on this. Uh, I guess the automatic part for uh, for challenger mode isn't really so nice. <laughs> but then after uh, St. Clair th- at 7, there's Kent State at 8, App State at 9, Cincinnati Academy at 10, UC Patriots at 11, Fanshawe Field at 12, and Ohio University at 13. Remember, only the top six teams can make it. So at this point right now, it's going to be Cincinnati, Kennesaw, UC Davis, UK, uh, UK, Utah, and IPUI. But there's plenty of space for teams to fall as we're only halfway through. There's three more matches to go, so we'll return later. Um, but any thoughts, any uh, closing thoughts for this half, Mr. Davis? Amazing games today. Um, it seems to be a bit more competitive than QCC Paul 1, um, at least off the top of my head, and being a little bit more involved with all the games rather than just playing in it. Um, it seems to be a little bit more competitive, which is awesome for you guys running this. Um, the 
unfortunately, that does bring my time on the production to an end as I'm not the casting anymore. But I'd like to thank you for the opportunity, uh, thank the players for playing and uh, letting me cast them. And yeah, it was a fun day. Thank you for joining us. It was a great casting with you. It was fun. It was a great time. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, I'll, uh, before we leave, I would like to say good luck at the uh, land in April and good luck with the rest of your matches for the regular season. And, um, I uh, can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You guys, too. And we'll be seeing the rest of you guys uh, in the second half of matches. We'll be turning, and we'll try to be returning at 6.30 promptly to start our next round of matches.
Yes. Hello and welcome back uh, for another matchup. And Camilo, I cannot see the game. Um, and this will be Kent State versus IUPUI. And I'm Dark Matter, Joseph. And with me, uh, we have a new caster. Uh, Mr. Davis is, uh, had us for the first half. We had him for the first half. And now we have uh, Tom Z. Welcome, Tom Z. Pleasure to be here. Uh, we'll be taking our game here to Chalet. Uh, KSU is on defense, IUPI on attack for Spankman from KSU. It will be the Delta B band, so that's pretty standard for Chalet. Uh, Chalet plays a lot of staircases pretty easily. You can put in a Delta call and then double up something like blue stairs or uh, main lobby stairs for like a library clear or a bar or something. So pretty standard stuff for KSU. Um, I don't imagine IUPI is going to throw anything that's not uh, meta right here. Probably something like a ying band. Yeah, ying band makes a lot of sense as well. Then there's bar and kitchen execute. Um, defensively, I could probably see something along the lines of a bout band to make a lot of sense. Maybe a mirror band as well. I, I don't imagine any sort of warden band with ying off the board. I'm actually a little. I'm not surprised about a Fenrir ban. Sorry, I had production talking to me. Um, but I, I would not be surprised whatsoever here if a Azami ban came out. I believe. Um, I, was about, I was about to say when we saw Kanasaw, but from KSU. Cool. The uh, last operator, but one operator is definitely getting banned. Solus was banned. Solus was banned. Ah, yes. All right. Wow. Well, this is some interesting gameplay footage of a. Uh, IUPI Baldwin IUPI. Hall. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Gotta examine that bit. So for KSU, like to start Master. Um, with these operator bands, they don't need to extend too hard, but you're definitely see something standard along the lines of a library hold. Uh, definitely some cross hunts on library jumping, maybe on one of the uh, blue single window. Defenders, protect your so bombs. Maybe after IUPI to be able to clear this. Uh, right now, they don't have a ton of operator solutions, so you might see some switching teams like a. Sophia, or instead of Fragment Age, or maybe even a Nick and put on the board, and Solus is not. Um, they do have other, at least two sets of Fragment Age, right? Which one in Fragment Age, that's what I'm trying to test it. Yeah, I believe you're right, so that could be part of it as well. This lineup also kind of screams that they might go for Solarian Cakes. I'm not seeing too much strength in the side of IUPI. Uh, so maybe between the two. I have a mirror on the office wall. That's something you don't see a ton of from Five KSU. Seconds left before insertion. Have you been watching a lot of Kent State? Sound like you know a lot. Objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Okay. Oh, research. Ah. So, getting around, it does appear to be a solar side take. At least the spawns uh, suggest that with a little bit of library. An early pick going by Snooky. Uh, seems like a, a fireplace spawn peak. Wow, a nice kill. Now that is on to Natural, who is the team captain for IUPUI. Unfortunate for him, but a good start for Kent State. I think it's important for KSU to get aggressive early, especially when you're playing a team that has players like Natural and Ref on it as well on IUPUI. We know they've lost to teams like Kentucky and St. Clair, which definitely have high quality players as well. So anytime you can pick one of these off the board early, it's definitely worth it. Definitely is, definitely is. Now it seems like the attack is kind of slowing down, making sure to the defense already gave up that library side um, within the first minute of the round. And it seems like they're going to try to get maybe the Meat Gamer off the wall, maybe Rava. And wow, a nice pick onto the ace. I'm not sure where that was. Uh, onto Mez. Wow, Mez double door. I don't, I'll be honest, I'm not sure why the ace was challenging. A grave mistake by the ace because now the attack is left to just funnel through the doorways. You may have placed the aces on the wall before, but either way, that's still an overreach with the reach now open. Maybe getting the aggressive on the big window takes down Delusion as well. It goes to the 2v5, and not much really to go around here for the side of IUPI. Celtic getting the first kill over for IPUI. That's a 2v4. Uh, both players kind of by the Ivy side. Let's see what they can do here, but it doesn't seem like they're space to work with. Get another kill. Celtic getting two for his team, making it a 3-2 a lot more manageable. 
Three down spinning another one back up the end with left. Three or three blade for left, you get three down number. You get three filling mate left, right, you see how to work with. CSS indeed. Let's just slow down in case he was bringing. Oh, and Legion Swing again, but they get a kill. And now it's a 1v3, and the round is over. That's a strong round coming from Kent State to start off this series. I think Kent State's definitely shown it's which formula they really want to go for. Obviously, in the later end of the, the round right there, they got a little too overheating. But early on, just getting these early picks, kind of swinging those 1.5s, is something you should probably expect when they're trying to take on players just like Matt Kelly as well. I wonder if they're going to continue with these spawn peaks, but it worked out great for Kennesaw. Uh, sorry, Kent State. Oh my gosh, this is going to trip me up the whole time. Too many KSUs. Attackers uh, need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. We'll see what IEP does to ensure that they can. Attackers have located a bomb. If they're going to be more wary about these spawn peaks. Actually, I don't even know if that really was a spawn peak. Because I know that uh, IP always just shooting open doors and windows as soon as the round started. I'm pretty so sure he just swung the front door. I don't think he, like, maybe he knifed it early on and we didn't see it, but I'm pretty sure he just swung the front door and got shot open. I, th I think that's what happened. Or at least, back opened it. He was already down there. Lost the kid. For all the things. On his zombie, which is an operator, if you watch the invitation today, which hopefully you weren't, hopefully you're watching the old piece of flash ball by instead. But a zombie's gonna be nerfed into the dirt next season, so he's just trying to get as much as he can out of that operator before it goes away. I think that nerf will be uh, kind of huge, actually. She's been a great operator to help with extending. So I kind of like the idea. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, that's all right, though, because she already gets her third one by the start of the round, or at least 20 seconds in. You can definitely tell I used to do, uh, play a lot of Shalai, and also studied a lot of high level Shalai. Uh, a lot of collegiate teams this week just stack up Office and Blue and go for your standard Blue Clear, Bait Outside Library. But IEP is going for more of a direct take, they're walking underneath. I imagine they're going to open the stock wall with the base underneath. Probably have a Lurker come up blue or something like that. And that's a huge play right here if you can just walk in the bar. Or if there's someone top legs with their back turn, you can make a huge play. The entire round is probably dependent on this play right here. Oh, shots go out. He gets one. Does, does he not? He didn't see the other. Oh my gosh. And what would have been an amazing go in, and it seems like the dock is burning a lot. Barely makes out with one HP. Oh my god. Snooky's left alone upstairs. That's when they've only got one pick, but he opened this round for sure. KSU is in complete manic mode ever since he got into the bomb site. Collegian's in a frost now, but I think they've got another one. That was not. Oh, uh, what? Uh, I'll be honest, that ace had the slowest reaction time that I had ever seen. Sorry. <laughs> but oh my. Now, it's 1v2. Mr. Meaty, looking to clutch it. Stuck underneath the hatch. There's one above him. Plenty of time on the board. Two drones still. You know he's behind the inner bar. Just a second. Mr. Meaty is going to be able to go back up to full HP, and the pins are going out, and he sees the drone. And it allows him to drop. I'm a little surprised that he took the time to do that. Over, gets the kill. Mr. Meaty getting a 4K, actually, to clutch the round out. I don't know if you noticed that. A great job by him. Just the dock, giving the 1.5. Heck, have a ball out, right? That's an absolutely massive clutch by Meaty right there, and that's an absolute neck breaker for IUP. They had pretty much everything they needed. They had a 1v3. They had Casey in hand, but I'm not sure who was on the ace right there, but seeing that dock just completely crash the first two, could have easily put the bomb in the bar. Uh, they could have easily played the game's window. They also had vertical, so kind of unnecessary right there, but either way, KSU takes their second round, and you start to worry a little bit. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. As well as, like, their, I guess their energy levels as well, right? And both these teams are playing to get back into top six standing. Uh, IPY currently is number seven, while Kent State is currently number eight. 
Um, so both of these teams, one of the wins, can easily get back into that top six and still be fighting for that spot for a uh, qualifier. Uh, actually, all of the teams uh, that are currently in play still have a spot. The teams are at the bottom, they'll just have to completely win out with no OTs. And they can likely just scrape through with the number six seed. These two teams, they can try to solidify themselves in the top four for a spot for the cash prize that will be tomorrow. I think that we see Nate running the wall here with the absence of a Thatcher. Well, they do, actually, they do not have any pocket emotions. So they're going to be running the new scammers and Kaiyuki. So this is going to be extremely hard to get open. And that's why I was very predicting that. Or if they can somehow get full vertical for three, which I do not see very good. I don't see him giving up full vertical. It doesn't really have two people upstairs? I think it's just two, yeah. So I, I could see them just getting flushed out. We'll see how this round goes. Alpha drone getting in. Did he even get the camera? Second, but either way, two C fours in the side of Killer Three as well. So if they do give up this vertical pressure, they can easily force some sort of retake. Unless they take any reading. Uh, they don't even force this down with upstairs. There's not a ton of input in the options, but either way, I see is stalling hard here on offense to this one. Can you hear me, Tom Z? Bravo looking for the Kaiyuki, but there doesn't appear to be one. And he's a little bit too strong, but there will be the office wall open, and that's much more important. Doesn't appear to be anyone from side of Killer 3 riding a basement, so IUP will not really have to watch flanks this round too much. It's pretty straightforward. If they can just pull Killer 3 out of office, they can honestly probably see some sets of now. I believe that is the goal, as his IPI is not bothering to get to more ground. However, they will probably still need to get some divert in order to actually clear the walls on site. Um, it doesn't look like they have any MPs, but they do have a Brava drone to hopefully. With only a minute left, in five v five, IPI is the only one down in deficit in health, but uh, it's only natural it's taking damage. Well, notice how there's that one player going. Oh, you see the guy? He's the guy. Okay, you get it. And a nice pick coming out from Wraith, an opening pick. Oh, no, that's a huge gunfight for Slippy. But he's getting slowed down. Why is he slipping regardless? But upstairs, there's no way. He's making the play off of West and he gets fried. Oh man. Swapping max. Going downhill for IUPUI. Mr. Meaty takes another kill. And it's over as soon. Another round for Killer 3. Wow. I, I gotta say, I I actually thought IUPUI was set in a good spot to win that round um, based off of getting, getting the first pick and then also having the breach open, the player on West Main. They had to pressure from upstairs. But the Ash just walked over towards Piano. Um, and instead of holding the cross to keep them out of the important vert that they need to control, which is office, he pushed in and let Sneaky get him. Attackers I think that was might have been the fumble of the round. That was the start of the downfall. I let Snooky drop and he was able to mop up. I think IEP is playing definitely a little bit too on the uh, on the scared side. They're getting all the snap control, they're getting leather to the office itself is actually free as well. They get the breach open and then they kind of just they kind of just stall. And while that's gonna work if you're actually gonna hold the first phase and you have an execute, you can't be doing that inside of like 30 ish seconds and that's all you have, as well as giving up upstairs. So as you said, the app is thinking through the end, you throw your body and have defense can retake upstairs. So exactly. Attackers must I believe also the Ash was the only the one left upstairs as the Bra Brava had dropped. So Yeah, I believe you're right. And the only coverage upstairs decides to walk in and throw in the body. He's missed up by IEP, but move on to round four. The site is upstairs once again last year and it looks like IEP is going for a solar take this time. And they don't have a ton of underneath pressure besides the ash charges, so bomb located by attackers. Well, 
It seems like they're able to get Trophy completely free and not being contested whatsoever. There is a rumor though over by Donnie. Do they spot him? He missed the room. Nicky going 45. They have their guns pointed over there. I think they kind of know, but they're just choosing to be uh, Reloading. Frustrated. I'm willing to predict that IUP stalls here for at least a solid minute, even if they don't give us any picks. They have nobody on Solar in the cell and nobody on Silver Cell. They're completely stalled. As I say, that one gets on Silver Repel, but still, from what we've seen, these guys tend to slow down. Yes. Especially when they're facing the pressure or get open. Yeah, I'm just trying to change that narrative. No! Oh my! Activating Selma. Oh my, this is a little tense to watch. The timing's coming out. Wow, both people don't even see each other. No shots going off in there between those two. Yeah, I believe. Opening pick up by uh, Volax and Natural also getting picked. Wraith two a five v two all of a sudden, and Suki's gonna have to run over for the flank. Plant is going down, and Mr. Meaty is just by himself upstairs on site, surrounded by the Attackers All up to Snooky, who is deciding to go up Ivy. Wait, Celtic just got down to the Huh? Might have. Nice pick by Snooky, but I mean, in a 1v4 post plant with 28 seconds, not much you can do. Watch that line. Defender Second, so it's gonna be a tight situation. Virtually an unclutchable situation, unless a miracle happens. With only 13 seconds left, Snooki just took an attack of death, and that will not happen. Ross takes him out, and IUP gets their first round on the board. A nice job done by IUP. They. Th this time they decide to ignore what the roamers, or it seemed like they ignored the roamers. Um, they, they were looking over towards Diamonds. I think they knew the Snooky was there. They decided to stick with their push and just kind of chow it up. I think that they got very lucky with that timing, uh, especially the ace, top Solarium. The person by Master with the two of them just barely missing each other. Like, wow. Attackers need to that locate been, that, and that round could have played out completely differently if uh, one of them had just swung a little bit more. I agree. I think Mr. Meaty absolutely had a play there. I believe he was I was very confused with you with perfectly valid on the site map because as we just talked about last time, was mainly kind of dependent. We didn't see a ton of solutions from all your team. Pretty basic, just ask for the floor and then just kind of walk up to the area. It wasn't much of really like any sort of crossfire, like dynamic, dynamic setup really. I would like to see them hop on big window here and maybe swing like bathroom window as well. That way they can actually kind of contain the defense a bit more. Especially when the Ash goes underneath and frees up bathroom like that. If the Ash is and the bathroom player has to back up and has to panic, you have bathroom window open and you really cannot do anything because it's fully cut off. Looks like he's gonna go for a spawn PP here. Yeah. Probably did get spotted out as shots. And he gets Ooh. natural, wow. I think that's twice we've seen Snooky take out natural early. And the spearhead of IUP's attack is now off the board. Snooky taking no damage back either, so. These wins for KSU. And that has to be a tilter if you're natural after finally getting around on the board, and then you cannot test the tape round 5. Yes. That is devastating. We'll see how the rest of IUP gaps. It seems like they're already taking out some of the util. Good use by the Brava. Two KCs mainly turtling this one as well. Pretty much the exact same setup it looks like from the side of IUP. I don't know if you noticed, but they had all of the players either master, bathroom, or jazz. Else, if if this Brava did, has a play here. she could well she could sneak in the piano side. There's literally nothing contested. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they might be able to, that actually might be huge for the side of IUP if they are able to go for master execute. You can just walk in the K9 and collect at least two kills on the Yep. I think picking the Goyo here from the side of KSU is actually extremely smart. This does it at IUP even more. Mr. Moody still being allowed to stay alive and burn as much time as possible on his deathbed. He's got them and smoke them Bulk shots are coming out, but I'm surprised they haven't booked right where he's standing. Uh, they open up a lot, and you're just not able to get it cleared out. 
if you just do a lot of pressure from bathroom window, I mean, there's nobody holding okay. across, and you just all just sit there for free. Exactly. Rob, but could you sneak in? If you hear anyone's walking, there could be a huge boy at the bubble gap. In these types of situations, he's either waiting for his team to form up something, or he's just got a go. If the content only needs to be disrupted, you just have to make a play in these types of situations. Seems like the defense have turned their side You're towards the out. piano. Now there's one in office, there's one jazz hall. The, the, the defense have completely turned around, and Bojax has no element of surprise anymore. Leader is down, so technically it should be pretty effective. <laughs> Having a war with a goo mine though, it's Valerian. This one's gonna be the second one. It's gonna be two twos, and Snooky yeah, hits one of them and he's gonna clean up the other. Wow. Nothing's going on since they're due. Snooky's doing a really good job. Snooky has been absolutely melting on that warden. Yeah. I wonder how he's uh, gonna feel with the uh, 1.5 getting taken away. At least, or I, I guess think adjusted. That's gonna to affect a lot more people than just Snooky. Well, I was, I was saying, like, I wonder what he's, what he's gonna, how he's gonna feel about that. And I think it's an interesting change, changing the 1.5 to a 2.5 site or a magnified site. All these magnified sites are gonna be 2.5, except for a three times scope. And then, um, attackers need to locate most, and most of the defenders will be getting removed. Some will be getting an ACOG. Not gonna lie, it's just interesting. Just for a lot of GMRs on both ends, especially with the Rooney, I think the Rooney's quicker than the Rooney's just to be able to do it. He's getting a 2.5 in a GMR, I think that'll be pretty much an auto loss in my mind. Reloading. Might be, yeah. I think, I just think her... her is as great? Is that right? 10 she seconds remaining. Uh, or push more into the meta because of that. Five and wow, this double flared of shield is interesting. I actually really like this because Attackers you can fall back from one bomb. shield to the next, and the, it's like the defense or the, while you're attacking, you think you're cleared one, and you're ready to move on, take a lot of area, but no, right behind is the next shield. It's still covering the same area. I think I may have been talking through my webcam for a while, so I apologize if the audio was atrocious, but we should be all good now. Reloading, <laughs> over me. Well, we'll see how this attack goes. Currently, is ready to go. IPI 1 and Kent, uh, Kent stay at 4. And this map is traditionally seen as attacker sided, so it, this kind of spells trouble for IPY. They have to secure this round, at least. I feel like they're still in it, or else uh, defensive half may just be in trouble. This appears to be a similar setup from both sides. Last time we saw Kitchen. Uh, the only change is the absence of a Kaid. I think Natural is definitely going to have to try to make a play here to move his team forward on a 2-4. Mm -hmm. Natural is able to find himself to still be alive, but it seems like they're going a lot slower. They're getting the office wall with a Thermite this time, rather than a Thatch, or er, than an Ace. Uh, that was one swap to the main with Illusion. Already clearing shield, forcing this Frost back to her secondary shield. So space. typically when you would bring a when you would bring a thermite on a kitchen clear, that means you fully want to take upstairs, not just have it as a cross. It doesn't look like IUPI is doing that. It looks like it's kinda still just trying to hold up office with this crossfire in the office window. Natural I Hover has crushed in a half wall, so this is a much better look from IUPI than last time we saw. I think it's a little bit more of a preference where I mean it allows that on that buff to actually just walk in towards Apple and further right side the Finca and then be able to um, take a little bit more space. It also opens up that, uh, the main kitchen wall, so there's a lot more space to work better with. Not have to let that move up. Necessarily. But Delusion gets picked off by Snooky. Snooky can continue his tear, his random tear, so currently 4v4. And Wraith getting also shut down, but another trade coming out. Celtic getting it, equalizing the 3v3. The defenders have the health advantage, and I believe we're all downstairs. Oh, nice shot on a natural from Stricken. Blow the hatch. Now let's say we get 2v2. Both attackers are separated from each other, trying to find picks. Bojack's, or Bojack, uh, Bowler, or whatever, is taking a lot of damage. 
Can Celtic help him by adding more pressure? And he finds a pick, 2v2. Both attackers are on low health. But by West May, can this buck come down and maybe still buy some kills? Both defenders are stacked West May. This is actually winnable. Not really much anymore. Bowler Jacks walks in the kitchen looking to find two. He definitely cannot plant the situation. Has no information on where the defenders are, and he's going to run out of time. ASU is up 5 1 as we switch sides. I wonder if uh, we'll see another match like how the St. Clair Saints game went, uh, where they went up 5 1 at Kamasaw. I'm a little disappointed to see that IUPUI did not take attack time out at any point during that. Yes, There were definitely I'm a lot too. of rounds where they could have made some major adjustments, but it feels like they just, you hit a certain point of frustration and then they kind of just put their heads down and did the same things, you know, two, three times. And now you're down, you know, 5-1. That's not what you really want to see out of a team in a qualifier. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused Very by funny attackers. coming from, uh, <laughs> cuts down, the cuts down special <laughs> match point timeout. <laughs> Match point tag timeout is our special. However, we are not at match point, so we're good. That is, that is very true, very true. The one thing I thought that was that I've seen by teams is not calling timeout. I think that bit St. Clair in the previous match that we just streamed before the break, and honestly, I think it's kind of biting IP in the mouth. But as soon as you start to lose three rounds in a row, in call a timeout, um, you yeah, need to build that momentum back. You need to grab it back. Um, However, for Five those who just are just tuning in, uh, Queen City Clash does timeouts a little bit differently. Uh, we have two 30-second timeouts. Um, allows for more flexibility, and based off of how it was surveyed last year, uh, almost everyone unanimously voted yes for it. I do not recall any votes, so it seems like it's very popular. Now, we're starting around with... Kennesaw attacking. They're looking to go for a library side across. Wraith is going to be the only one on that mez. Trying to deny all of this entry, but four people. Swapping mags. Over here. Flashes are going out, and initially he starts to run away, but doesn't realize he's Warden. Finally does, and turns on his glasses. And they hop in a sandwich, and Al gets taken out to start a nitro by Wraith, and he tags another because he knows there's someone on his hard wall. Cool. Shots go out, tags another, but decides to swing and put the IP in the box. That's it. Celtic is coming in to trade this out. I like to see that team play from the side of IUPI. Snooki definitely has to play here. He definitely needs to walk up loose steps right here. Does, and Mr. Meaty gets taken out by Celtic, but Celtic gets traded out by Snooki. Wow, and Wraith, Wrath, a double Library kill. turning into a Reloading. slaughterhouse. Delusion of Molo Jacks, the last two alive. Mr. Meaty is down, but he is faking. Should be to a 3v2 here on the side of KSU. Health getting restored. Get the pick back up. Two players so low. The smoke could spell trouble, but he has two canisters and a minute and 20 left. There's plenty of time for KSU to work with it if so choose. So, Smoke doing a good job of finding all the cameras. He's 13 and 2. He's killing it. Wow. Carrying for Kent State. As they to get their win. And Delusion getting picked Swapping off back. by Mr. Meaty. Now it's going to be left to follow follow Jax. I'm going to call him Jax. Smoke the canine door. That's going to be effective against those two players who are going to be low HP over there. Off by one window. What is he going to do? He's in a massive power position here. Jax definitely has to make a play. Probably has to take a one here. Cannot rely on your smokes in this type of situation. And he gives up his body to Snooki, who is on an absolute tear. KSU on match point. Well, that position might be a power position during the round. Where he was then, I think he was in a very tough spot as there are so many crosses on him. Cross from Cannon, watching his Ricky at the back. First on the piano window, watching him just even move away from the shield. And then they had to go on piano double, ready and just pounce in. He was. He, he, he had multiple gunfights to take anywhere he was going to go. Oh, I agree. He definitely needed to take one, though. In that type of situation, it's better to whip out your shotgun and swing somebody than to sit there and kind of just take it. You got to be Attackers able to take a play right there. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. We actually had, a, actually had plenty of time. Now, IPY trying to look to see if they can get a win. They have 
they're, they're one and six. They're up against the wall. They're back against the wall. They have to go flawless for the next five rounds to even stay. In the game. These type of situations, you'll tend to, um, you'll tend to see a team kind of get into that screw it mentality, where you see a lot of spawn peaks, a lot of wild stuff. So if you're KSU, you definitely have to know that's possible. To go. Just watch out for a play from the likes of Natural or Wrath here, especially on the Warden. Five seconds left. on match point, you kind of have to expect anything. Attackers are moving to defuse a bomb. I completely agree with that, but I don't know if it the attacker like bomb defuser has been dropped. Attackers recover the defuser. Plasmonte? Capitao? This is going to be an interesting strap. I think they're going to try to go in for a direct games kind of plant, and putting some pressure uh, library with that Capitao. Uh, I think the Therm is just for insurance cases if they need to flip. Yeah, I imagine they're going to burn these Capitao bolts on Library Death Corner, just keep them off of the hatch, and that way they can jump into the Monty here. Um, there are two Frostmets underneath the games window. I'm not sure if KSU knows that yet, but... Definitely have to drone that before we're going for this. This is definitely going to be some sort of, called a, I'll call it a rush round, but they have to really check out what's going on here. They don't have any explosive to deal with those frost mats, so it's going to be a real pickle just to even get in there. But it seems like they're going to just be base checking the library. Just holding these, at least Snooki's going to be holding this angle while he's on repel out in the balk. Natural is just going to be playing behind this Kiba. So he can get a pick. Going out. Delusion did take a little bit of damage. Not sure for where from. Seems like as if they're gonna about to go for the execute and jump in. But do they see the frost mats? The smokes go down. They're waiting. Seems like they're waiting. This feels like a recipe for disaster from KSU. But as I say, that wrath goes down, and that's the warden. That's probably the most important operator in this situation. Warden on Glass. I think any time of day, Glass is gonna win that over Warden in a one v one with the deep smoke. While he's running. Especially if the glass is snooping, he's now 15 and 2, and we're getting ready for the side execute. Looks like they got rid of the frost mats downstairs. I think the Therm literally just jumped in, I shot think him, he did too. and jumped out. And wow, the zombie gets picked off from trying to get aggro on that library double, but somebody just gets the library single in time. And now it seems like the defense are trying to be antsy to get a kill. Alive. 45 seconds. Can't say I've just been sitting outside this entire time and just groaning, probing for kills, watching for IUP's mistakes. And now a Stricken is in sight. He's ready to plant. Stricken, more likely they're not going to get this plant down. Depends on the flank from Celtic top floor, and he does take out Mr. Meaty. Now he has the hatch. Does he know he's the only one upstairs, or is there more? Looks like he's being chased after by Reader. Jax goes down and leaves just Celtic as the last hope for IUP. With two in library, it's a huge task. He does take out one, he takes out Reader. Ten seconds left. Attackers and against Crazy, he will lose user. that one out, and KSU take a clean 7 1. Wow, that was a very clean win. I think that was the fastest win of the night that we've seen. Snooky going, what, I think 17 and 2 or something like that? That is insane. He carried, wow. Amazing to see from Snooky as he's wanting to get that land spot to finish his out, finish out his collegiate career. Great job by Kent State. And IUPUI will now have to claw their way into a qualifier spot. We were back on the webcam, but uh, that was honestly a pretty good game. I would say KSU played a pretty classic chalet. I liked getting a little creative in the last round. I would say from the side of IUPI, it's really just, it seems like they are very stale. They really need to start looking into how to develop crossfires on Chalet. Maybe some more, I don't want to say exciting because that doesn't mean smart, but some bigger plays, really fighting for map control more, and really just spreading out your attack. It seems like they really just bottlenecked every single time they tried to do something, and the clock would wind down two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, and then the round is pretty much over and they don't have enough control to really do anything. I don't think we saw a single true side execute from their side. Yeah. I, I feel like they got, a lot of these times, they got into positions that like had laid a good foundation for something. They were always missing one critical piece. Like when they were pushing that solar side, they were missing the critical bathroom cut to, to 
control the owl player. And for when they were pushing Kitchen, they were missing that person that was supposed to be cutting upstairs, and they didn't stay there. They were just missing that one critical thing, and that's what bit them in the butt, especially on their attacks and then on their defense. Uh, I feel like their defense, they just can't get caught out. They get antsy, especially when you're down. You're trying to get those kills. You're trying to make plays so you can get back up, but that got to them. And honestly, that's what led them to getting so many kills, especially with that last round. I think Snooki got three or four kills just standing outside. They just kept running in front of Game's window and letting those kills just in into Snooki's pockets, baiting his KD. Snooki was absolutely farming the game. I would say the other thing, too, from the side of IUPI, when they're on defense, they kind of didn't have really any information to play off of. They're kind of just holding mezzanine and swinging off each other, which is okay to an extent, but you don't have any information to play off of. You actually don't really know where the attackers are besides the old ease in library call out. That doesn't really help your team there when they're trying to play around you. I would have liked to see something along the lines of a bulletproof camera, maybe top blue or a valk or anything like that that could give your team information. I mean, heck, you could even run like a pulse or something and just feed your teammates information. Maybe bring a C4 or something like that. Yes, I, I completely agree with that. Well, that was an interesting first match to see. And um, actually, let's go into the rounds. Let's see uh, what other matches are going. If AM also have a match report going in. All right, so for the matches for this round, round four of QCC, we also have Utah versus St. Clair. We have uh, UC Davis versus Kentucky. We have um, Kennesaw versus UC Black. We have Fanshawe Fuel versus App State. UC Patriots versus Ohio, and UC Academy. All those matches have not been completed, except for the UC Patriots versus Ohio University. Ohio University find their first win against UC Patriots going 7-2. So that is the current standing at the moment for this round. But excited to see um, how the, the rest of these matches play out and find what match we stream next. What are your thoughts on some of these matches uh, that we have going on during the current round? I think there's a lot of pressure. My webcam is bugging. Hold on. <laughs> but um, there, um, I think the most pressure falls on the Cincinnati teams, of course. I think qualifying for your own land, especially knowing Cincinnati Black missed out last year, is extremely important, especially some of the repeat players, you know, people we know. We talk about, like, the likes of Pop or Kodiak, who's now on Cincinnati Black. They desperately want to get back to being able to compete with the big teams and at their own event. I think for all these other teams... A lot of teams may just play, you know, a qual for, for fun, practice, all that, and if they make it, they make it. But when you're the home team and you're also a home dog, you have something to prove, and I really want to see where the Cincinnati team goes for the rest mm -hmm. of this. I'm actually – I've been, uh, to be honest, uh, quite surprised and quite happy with uh, uh, UC Black. Uh, to be honest, I was a little bit worried coming into this with um, – when I saw that they were facing Utah during the third round, and um, the, they – Currently, UC Black is two and two in CR six, and so th same thing with uh, UC Academy. They're two and two, so I had a little bit of worries. But UC Black is currently uh, three and zero, blown out of the water. They seven one to Utah, who is a premier team. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I was shocked and happily surprised by this for myself. Um, UC Academy currently they have not won a game. They're currently on the bye for this round. So in order for them to qualify, they have to win out no OTs, no overtimes. They have to win out the next two rounds, and maybe, just maybe, that they'll be one or two, uh, two win, or with the bye, technically three win um, team that makes it. Because the sixth seed is going to come down to, it will come down to points. For qual one, um, there I believe Ohio State barely made it in with 10 points, while EKU was just left out at nine points. Reason being, being an OT win. Actually, EKU had a lot of OT wins and OT losses. So if they just maybe didn't go to OT just for a win, then it w they would have been in over Ohio State. So at least for the w work of uh, Academy, their work is cut out for them. For Black, I believe they only need to win one because once you win four games, I'm pretty sure you're guaranteed at least to qualify uh, but then after that, you still keep fighting because only the top four teams make it to tomorrow where they play for a cash prize. Yeah, I would definitely say it's an uphill battle for UC Academy. Um, UC Black, you could take you could take records even for both, for pretty much any team in the qualifier, or in any qualifier for that matter. Your record in leagues, in CR6, in whatever else, that means nothing. When you come into a qualifier, you have a completely different agenda than what you did playing in a league or anything else. 
you could be 0-4 and, and you're playing a 4-0 team. It doesn't matter. When you play in a qualifier, it's who prepped the most and who wants it the most, and that's all that really matters. Nothing else like that really matters. So it's great to see a team like UC Black actually show that they want to qual by being you know this close to making it. They should be in. UC Academy, uphill battle, but if they really want it, I believe any team can make a run. Mm -hmm. And everybody on UC Academy, uh, they are in their first year of comp. So at least putting in this battle versus everyone who has, I believe, all veterans. I, I think every team here has veterans. And this is a fresh team. Everyone had their first semester of comp last season, actually. And I believe there's still, uh, there's still even new people uh, on that roster. Actually, Nadu is actually the most veteran player who's been in and out of doing coaching, being a sub, and whatnot for uh, various teams like the Black and Academy and the Academy Black. Uh, honestly, props to them for at least just putting in the effort, putting in the work, because um, a lot of these teams are experienced, heavily experienced. Yeah, for sure. But and a lot of, with experience, a lot of players won't be here next time around. You know, you're going to lose players like Snooki, who's, who's gone after this, you know, after the semester. So a team, an academy team, can definitely build up a lot of experience to then take over as the old guard goes away. Yes. There's a there's a lot of people here uh, that are going to be graduating, that, not just from UC, but, like, from other other schools, other uh, teams that really want to to be here, to be at the land. I um, I guess I feel I feel a little bit bad for San Jose. Uh, they were hoping to try to make it, but they, the stuff isn't going to be lining up for them. Um Snooki is also a uh, – she title. Snooki is also a senior, um, but SJC has a lot of seniors. I think most of them are our seniors. I know uh, you see Davis. I'm pretty sure almost all of them or four of them are seniors. They're wanting to finish their time at university and graduate after competing at a land, especially uh, Queen City Clash. Last year, it, we had, it was pretty good. Uh, I had, we got good, great reviews. Um, I didn't hear anything uh, too bad or too negative about it. A lot of people really liked it. Um, and this year, instead of eight teams, we have 16 teams. So hopefully we're able to continue to be as smooth as possible. Um, but so far, a lot of people are really enjoying the qualifiers. So I hope everybody does. And I hope we I hope we can cap people's senior years off with a blast, with a good bane, just to really go out and go out winning. That's always a good way to end it, for sure. Well, thank you for watching round four. We'll be back with round five, hopefully shortly, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you for watching.
glad to be here. A second game. First one, not so close. Looking for a better game out of these two teams. Why do math when you can play Siege? You just place a gun at me and like shoot you. <laughs> like, what the? Um, Thatcher being the first band, Sh Clubhouse instead of Chalet, like the top of the screen says, uh, says or uh, the top of the screen, I guess. But um, Thatcher band that's pretty common on a Clubhouse. Uh, Yin band I. I've seen Yin Ban's a little bit of an interesting one. Um, the only reason I can really see that coming out is if uh, UKY has seen something out of UC Academy with Ying, maybe target ban on a certain player, but other than that, Ying is not too potent on Clubhouse. So, a little bit of an interesting ban. Put it in the right hands, and she can be pretty good, actually. I know there... I've seen teams in the past... Uh, actually, um, Kodiak... He's scarred some teams in the past with being on Clubhouse to where he would just never be able to play it because they kept banning him. Um, and he he was he was le I can't cuss. He was darn lethal. Um, I mean, I can't cuss. He was darn lethal on a like secret with that Yain or even Logi, right? Taking space and I, I think I think I think she is kind of lethal on this, or at least she is very effective on Clubhouse because you've got these smaller rooms compared to other maps, and she, her Candela's just absolutely flood the whole room, and you can't hide from them in these smaller rooms. Attackers need and to it looks like we're going to start off with UC Academy taking a defense on Jim, bringing in Tommy, and hit Valkyrie, Neil, Jaeger. Jaeger with OBS blockers. Um, I'll be honest, I used to think Ob's Block was great when they first came out, and I just feel like I just don't think they I don't think they covered nearly enough in the radius to where you can really run them over some of the other secondary gadgets. I would infinitely rather have a bulletproof for beavers, or even just play a barbed wire or an observation blocker. I just really don't bring it enough to where I would run them consistently. That being said, there are definitely some cheesy uh, layouts you can make, especially in Clubhouse, something to like uh, cash head holes if you're stacking them on top of each other, but by themselves they're not really too useful. Yeah. You know, for some reason that got me start, starting to think, you know, EMPs being the new Thatcher, it'd be interesting to see if we can push another gadget that was like behind the gate or something. Reloading. Or it's like an alternative. Ops blockers. Their ops blockers just aren't that strong. Anyways, let's continue on the round. Well, you s uh, ca actually, uh, Kentucky seems to be going with some highway pressure. They seem to be trying to get that easy wall and opening up that Lodgy hatch, getting some crazy pressure into the site. Drones are going out. They're also getting pressure over by uh, security. And oh, early pick by Pineapple on a Paladin. And Paladin, I know, is a gunner for Kentucky. That is a huge pick. Wow. That's a huge pick, not only in man count, but also positioning now. If they were planning to go for the jacuzzi wall, that plan has been stunted, as there's nobody highway to really deny the bandit trick, and that leaves water to do whatever he wants. Kentucky's going with a nice, steady, and slow. It's Montaigne just trying to push the defenders back, and he's doing just that as they've taken... Well, Cash has nobody in it now, and the defender feels like they need to go towards Khan, playing the Khan sheet. Out, but can UK do anything about the sheep player? I like to see the cross from the captain down here, but he gives it up. I don't think he knows about the. Oh, he does know about the Jaeger underneath. This would be a huge pick, and he gets the kill. G's boss is down for an even man count, but minimal map control for Kentucky here. And the Monty goes down. That's probably the biggest pick of the round for Pineapple. He gets three! Leaving just the Capital and the Ace in a 3v4 situation. And they only have up to construction. This is like a really solid round for EC Academy. I gotta say, Crypt, where are you looking? I guess I know you know that there's someone to the right, but you exposed yourself all the way to all of sight. Turning right there. Not the best move, but 
Wow, that was a great shot to buy Cheese Boss. Or not Cheese sorry, Pineapple. I said the wrong name. Good shots on that zombie. That's Bomb up to Buka and TJ. Oh. And oh. getting killed for picking up his Ace Charge, his Selma. Not worth a life right there. In this situation, I honestly think you try to just talk, talk it to Ralph. Uh, he's not gonna be doing much talking now, but uh, <laughs> just leaves Buka up on the board after uh, Tejo gets C4. Looking for the pick on the Valkyrie, Nado will not find it. And if I was Kentucky, I would absolutely just take this time to talk about the next round. Get your first taste of UC Academy on Clubhouse, and 15 seconds to go. It's it's a it's a dominant win right here. Um, I I guess neither team is ex or I guess. The team's really expecting what the other one will do, but it seemed like UC Academy was just up for it. At least they were more prepped than out of time. Kentucky was for their setups. I honestly don't think the Monty was the greatest of plays. It did help push him back, but he did not get much util done besides just stand there and peen. Something that a drone could have done. So I'd like to see them. I could see. I'd love to see that be used if they're pushing, you know, garage when the site is CC. But I don't think the Monty is going to be super useful. These other sites. No, Jim, I don't really see the need for a Monty there. I think they probably will learn their lesson the next time they go up, especially bringing a lot of counter ops. Maybe you'll see a Flores if the zombies on the board still. I'd like to see an IQ as well for these Valchems. That was that played a huge part in the Attackers round. Need to locate Otherwise, on the side of Kentucky, bomb. they definitely need to spread out their push. They kind of just stacked in the cash, had a player highway, and were just kind of. It didn't look like they had a central focus or an executed mind. They were just kind of taking space and, and waddling in the building, as I like to say. I would like to see them more on one focus objective. That way they can take multiple directions. I gotta say, uh, keep in mind, and this is a little bit odd, but we're, so we're using challenger mode to generate our matches, and currently Kentucky uh, has two wins and two losses in their six points. Academy has not won a game, but they have one OT loss by... Uh, and so Academy's looking for their first Five win. And actually, this will play strong in for a strength of schedule kind of standpoint. If they are able to secure it, but they'll have to keep this momentum they had on the first round. Honestly, it was strong showing on the first round, so we'll keep that up and might be able to secure their first win. They continue to be blocked. Wow, uh, pre spawn peaks potentially going out and Paladin taking heavy damage. Hopefully, for his sake, he won't be the first out again. But Bane already in garage, getting some red feet actually, some good use out of that tracker, but already downstairs, so not too useful. Cheese boss is safely down back in sight. I will say this is a good great start for Kentucky. It may not look like it on the HP side of things, but they have all the map control in the world. As you see, Academy does not have a single roamer, and they're all pinned down inside by this jackal. That leaves Kentucky to conduct all the vertical pressure they want. They have both Doki calls still available. This should be a, a Clear. However, Pineapple will be tricking the Moto Hatch, which is interesting, instead of the Arsenal Hatch. Uh, no C4s inside of UC Academy besides Pineapple, who won't be able to use his right here. Bomb located by attackers. So again, really interesting setup from UC Academy. They really have to get off this infector. To get off. Clear. That's two. Oh, he's getting shot by Vert. Oh, such a tight angle actually using Vert to get onto that Nadu, but Nadu taking heavy damage. However, it seems like everything will slow down again as the attack sets up. And Paladin gets killed oh. first again by Pineapple. That's the same trade that happened. Pineapple killing Paladin is like first. He's getting the opening pick of the round. Again. That swing is so unnecessary from Paladin. They have all the control in the world, and now they have a man disadvantage to UC Academy. You could have waited to have a more advantageous fight. Just still clear up, clearing out that util, because they had so much time to do so. And they had a lot of util. But Buka getting a nice kill. Can he get a second? No. A nice shot coming out from Cheese Boss. Peeking the hatch. A dangerous peek that worked out well for him. Taking a good gamble. Now, it seems like Kentucky's going to be pushing for oil pit side. But the hunters aren't catching the hatch. They're so spread out. What do you, what do you think of this? Hunter. I don't really... I'm very concerned about where this execute's going to go. Uh, the entire round is basically dependent on Bane right here on this gunfight on board. If he loses this gunfight, the round is easily over. If he wins it... It's still really close. I understand that they're trying to free up any player that might be dummies, but either way, see, Doki is rotated to the hatch. Doesn't matter. Case is down, but Bane has a play, have and he takes out four. And he's in a 2v3. They will probably get the res off. Pineapple does have a C4. That's probably the most important piece of utility right here besides the Meister Bubbles. And 
now Dewey's not on his bubbles. Case is going down. Oh my god. Cheese boss crouches oh in, god. gets picked off. Then he Where just pushes the cage on the execute. Now Dewey's spraying from church. Pineapple goes down, Nadu falls through, he knows what's dirt. Have eyes on the Attackers and Tejal will take out both Kentucky gets on the board and a left. really confusing round for the side of UC. I gotta say, not gonna lie, that was a throw. My boys, what are you doing? A little sad to see here, at least for me. But also, good job on Kentucky. Yep, take off that backpack. That did show exactly where he was. But, um, wow. I, everything was kind of in the hands of Cincinnati, and then they, they lost their Arsenal player. They kind of gave up that control in blue. That Goyo player, um, it's getting a little too, need to locate oh, and yeah, getting a little too antsy. Got picked off, and then everything lined up uh, for Kentucky once that hits the, uh, the draft. Sorry, Bane. Uh, one of the two B names uh, started to get their way into uh, blue. Any. Yeah, I'd like to see UC Academy adjust their setup a bit here. They definitely need to be a bit more aggressive upstairs. They can't just give Kentucky the entire map. Uh, any decent team, at whether collegiate or amateur level, knows how to execute on uh, Arsenal when you have entire map control. You need to deny them and waste some time. I'd also like to see Nadu make an adjustment here and put a bubble in blue. That way Jackal can't just walk down on this team Five with zero callouts. That was really kind of the, the linchpin in their defense right there, unfortunately. Uh, we'll say Cheese Boss did a good job of getting early in the last round. I'd like to see similar levels of aggression without throwing a body. I gotta say, one Meister cam, open shooting, would have changed that whole round. I don't oh. think there was either. Let me see a gunfight from Cheese Boss here. This is huge. Thinking about a swing, it looks like he's gonna get away from it. Maybe not. Oh, and he gets fried by Bane. Aggression gone a little bit too much. That was not the spot to do it from Cheese Boss. So. With man disadvantage, Kentucky once again have complete map control. Pineapple is running down from the third floor, and now it's a 5v3. Not really sure what was going on there, but either way, UC Academy is definitely going to have to get ultra aggressive here and win this one back. I will say the good thing is, though, that Kentucky doesn't have any flank denial whatsoever. I don't think I've seen anyone set a flank drone either. So potentially Water and More can make a play here, because if they just sit like this, it's, it's not going to look good for uh, UC Academy. I don't see, uh, I honestly do not see that happening. As being a 3v5, it's tough to have two people on site. Looks like they're going to try for the impact trick, but they have the vert control there. Going to go for it, misses. Not in time. Howling gets another kill, getting a double kill on the round. Him up, he's getting those picks. And more great shot on the Paladin. He's also getting contested from the stairs. It's crossed from Moto. Wow, it's just left to Water. Can Water hold this? No, he cannot. I think if you UC, you have to burn your attack time out right here, especially considering you have two in this structure. Um, these last two defenses have not been, um, what would you would say, effective. Um, I think they took what I said a little too literally with uh, Kaid sprinting around the map and Wamai kind of just like face checking the wrong side of a building or a window, sorry. Um, uh. I would like to see them. I feel like they're going to go back to gym, which they are, which for this round may cheese them out to 2 2, but I would like to see more adjustments as they'll have to go CC your basement after this round. Kentucky also doesn't look like they're really adjusting. They're locking the same Monty. It looks like it's going to be the pretty much the exact same player need to locate based on the operator bomb. lineup. They have minimal reach. Maybe they think UC Academy's going downstairs again. We'll see a switch, but other than that, I think whoever wins this game is going to be the team that adapts quickest, because otherwise you're just going to see a repeat of pretty much the previous rounds. If Kentucky doesn't change what they did from last round, I see this going 2-2. And then if UC Academy doesn't have really anything to fall on besides Jim, I can see Kentucky starting to walk away with it. It looks like the exact same, it looks like the exact same way I'm sure you thought. an IQ either, which is really concerning, especially Five after your shield remaining. player got C4 last time. Um, um it's actually the cap attack 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 the bomb. Oh, you're right. Either way, still, can't really have that happening, especially when you do have someone, you have the ability to take in from underneath and open up stock. You definitely need to, need to kill the C4 player underneath or bring an IQ for the Valkyrie. Now, I wonder if 
UC is going to make any adjustments. Still peak again against Paladin, but Paladin, I think, is going to be ready for that highway swing, highway two. Um, there's so let's see what happens here. I, I'll be honest. I think Paladin will be the one to make the adjustment. He's a veteran player, so he does adapt quickly, or he does know, or he should be able to adapt. Quickly. And he so gets gets swung from highway while his team has garage. That's just. That's just really bad coordination from the side of Kentucky. They do not have their timing in sync. Uh, you, you take Mirage, you take Cash side, if you're going for Jacuzzi execute, so they can swing highway. No! Oh. up anyway. Pineapple off the board, Buka, and now we're at a 4v4. But still, Paladin, arguably Kentucky's best player, is off the board for free. And once again, looks like Kentucky is stacking up on Cash side. Buka will be able to buff Cheese Boss up from underneath, so he's most likely not long for this world. Drone coming in, Cheese Boss backs up. Not a looking to play for a trade, but this is a tough spot. Cheese Boss escapes unharmed, looking like he wants to swing again against the Monty. Stacking very hard, I'll say. Falls off, there's a C4 on the head ult when the Monty walks in. That's an interesting play from Nadu that it actually might work out here. He's alive. Not that if he is... swings. Nadu down, and that C4 is now useless. I think if you're used to the academy, you can just kind of sit still here. It looks like Kentucky's just stacking up in uh, Con again. We'll go for Lodgy Hatch. That's a good open. Both teams are full health. Oh no, but Morg is going to take a shot, but misses against Buka. And Buka's going to set a drone. I honestly think. Oh, he's. Playing it a little safer, but now both C4s are now stacked up at Daft and having a nice cross. They might be able to. We don't know about. Know about I will say, although the UC players are stacked up in the back, they do have two C4s so they can cheat their way out of this plan. Buka does have the Lodgy cross, but they do the know about Cheese Boss being thrown to the bed. Bane goes down, leaving the just a shield on the Lodgy player, and the Monty's by himself. Probably gonna walk into this Jaeger. They have no idea where Cheese Boss is. C4 goes out. He goes down, leaving just Buka and Lodgy. Not much he can really do in this spot. Swings and gets taken down by Water, and UC Academy ties it up once again on Jim. That was that was honestly a lot better uh, from Kentucky. Uh, shame for them for having Paladin die again so early. Literally, the first thing you do to fix that, open up uh, CC wall immediately. Do that first. Um, they, I, I don't know if they did that, but they might have opened it and just not contested. But who, the Jaeger cheese boss, he just he just went to CC window, got a free pick because they learned what he was going to do. And Paladin thought that he could adapt by being more Defenders aggressive on the window, your bombs but from he didn't think that Academy would adapt by being more aggressive on CC. They didn't do the previous round. So Speaking of adapting, you see Academy is no longer in the base, so they're going for CCTV cache. Uh, on this bomb site, CCTV cache has not really been a favorite in the last few seasons. I know some teams are bringing it back. You see a mirror trick on the uh, flat wall, but you see Academy is not opting for that. Instead, they're running a castle. So typically, when you see a castle on this bomb site, that means they're going to run uh, dual C4s underneath, usually castling like lounge and stuff or something like that. Not sure if that's the set of UCs going for. Instead, they're castling far, uh, just extending Five a little bit go. further. I don't hate this move by UC. I think uh, contest a little bit more Attackers of the map. Are out UC to Kentucky is extremely one-dimensional, so honestly, no matter where you place these castle barricades, I don't think Kentucky is going to be able to really clear them. I think Kentucky is just going to play really straightforward and honestly probably into the C4s. Yes, but with this Osa, I think that they're just going to go for a garage kind of take here. Uh, open up the wall and set up Osa's out here, contest the cross. And I don't know what Yusuke can do without impacts, just a Nitro. A Nitro is going to be a lot harder to get out there for a deep Osa shield than it would be just kind of swing by and throw in an impact. I don't think the Osa shield is going to be the main focus of the execute. I'm pretty sure Rift is just opening this wall, or attempting to open Double the flat wall, here. just as a cross, so they can yeah. take the Osa yes. But I think it will still be very strong against Academy. And a miss a on... MVP. <laughs> it was good, actually, on Crypt not to throw it immediately. I've seen too many teams not know where a kite flies or a battery is. Throw it, miss it, and... 
Wow. Um, they're all the way in con, and it seems like no one knows. Now they know. Beehive may have been mistaken for Paladin. Regardless, he does have a play here if he chooses to take it on the player. Red who's over swinging. That's more. He gets tech. There's nobody on the green box. I don't think he knows. Okay, one player's on the A bomb. Oh, he gets the shot off the TCSG. Water takes down Paladin, and the opening kick to Academy again. Water goes back to a safer spot. Look, gets killed over And pa Pineapple also gets taken out. Oh, now it's to DB4 on site. Conwell is open. Morg is heavily tagged. Looks like he is trying Cover to play me. into this hole downstairs, but they lack the soft destruction to really do anything about it. What I believe is happening is that Buka is going to try to clear, clear out anybody that's in. Oh no, he's going to contest the lounge. I'm surprised instead of taking the free space. He too brought the, the can opener. I'm reloading. Crosses are set up now. Without CC Vault open, this makes it a little bit harder for the attackers, but they have the CC windows to still hold the cross. Smokes are being set. It seems like Cheese Box might be trying to cheat the kill. Okay, tags, tags the bug. Call should be calling out. More gets the kill. He's taking out 2v2 now. Oh my gosh, Cheese Boss. Anyway, Griff is planted Ten by himself, left. and he gets fried by more. You see dropped. Academy take another round, and now it's three to two. Wow. I gotta say, that was quite an interesting round, but you see being able to pull out that 3v4, especially with such a health disadvantage. I think everybody in Kentucky had full health. Um, and uh, Cheese Boss, the, uh, the tuber out, um, getting those nice long shots. He's able to like, tag up that buck, making it just one simple shot for with the SMG just to get it just enough for him before he gets traded out. Uh, or actually, no, he doesn't get traded out, but just enough for him, right? Um, and he also gets the Ash, too. Having that long angle is so good. Uh, using that tube route to give him enough time to go back to Attackers the better position to is a smart bomb. decision. Also, I'll say Kentucky did a very good job identifying that Con was just free. It was just completely free, and they ignored the uh, the extension by the castle uh, initially. And so they just took that free space to get direct pressure. Unfortunately, they whiffed their shots, which did hurt them, uh, at least in the opening game. They would have had the element of surprise, because I don't think we see even who they were. Starting to change how they play a little bit. Might be a little too little too late for this half, but when you Kentucky goes on defense, it'll really show. Uh, Stock catch is completely free. Uh, it seems like there are still a few reinforcements that UC forgot to do, at least there's two. So, leaving it free for them to take. Uh, Buka already opened up dirt, and now he's going to see free pick. Oh. Pop shots and let's not even know exactly where he is or put the pressure from. Already pressure going into Jenny with the hatch open. It seems like Kentucky might opt to push this more. Let's see. I worry about the attention because we have no idea who where Cheese Boss is and I oh. don't think Kentucky does either. I forgot about it. Not gonna lie. I forgot about it. Stay back. We can see where he is. Uh, unless it Engagement happens here. Oh, oh my god. Oh, takes down Buka. Might get a second one tucked behind the bar. No, but he'll flank pool table. Gets shot in the back. I'm completely okay with taking out the buck in that situation. All your vertical is gone. He may have got most of it done regardless. Now to spraying at the Havana and Freezer. Kitchen hatch is open. This is going to be a really close round. After taking some damage, but. Kitchen hatch is open, which is going to be very important for the attackers. Bomb now it's a 3v3. Trade's going out. Um, Bane gets trade out by water. Drone's going out. 
How do she spot it? Gets killed from the vert by Crypt. Good job. Paladin gets taken out. It's a 2v2. Wow, this round cannot get any closer. Trade after trade. There's not been much of a man advantage for Lon. It seems like go down for an execute. Ducky getting oh, in. Keisha drops with him, takes out the Goyle, other player flanking blue. That's water. Takes down Tejal on a triple kill, looking for the last one under Crypt. A quad and Ooh! And he takes it. Water! A quad for water! Water! Get hydrated, Kentucky! Cause oh my god, you're drowning in him! Wow! Clutch right there from the real water that puts Kentucky on defense. A 4 2 half is pretty standard, but when you give up rounds like that in a 2v1 post plant, the mental almost makes it feel like it's an even game or you're losing as you hop onto the other side. Eric, can you press T? Can I see what they said? Pause real quick. Can you press T? I want to see what pineapple said about the game being placement is here. Ah, you know, I, I, I think this is <laughs> this is quite funny because Green Bean. For those who don't know, Green Bean is a starter on EC Academy. Um, well, best wishes for him while he's out for this weekend. But um, uh, he he has been a clutch guy. Um, well, I don't see, I didn't see what Eric put. I looked away and then it was gone. Um, it was grayed out. Not sure, but um, why uh pineapple or sorry cheese? Fuck, uh, I'm saying the wrong name. Ah, um. See what I said. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh my God. Um, Green Bean. Yes, Jake. So he. Oh my gosh. He's been clutching for Academy in round after round. Some of these games I've been seeing in CR6 and Midwest R6. And what does Water do? Well, he comes in and oh my God, he's starting to clutch. He's doing exactly what Green Bean does. He, he can be relied as a solid clutcher, and he pulls through when the team needs him. And I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for these guys. They're just sorry. Sorry to just keep boasting about UC Academy, but I love these guys. They're such an energetic young group. And, you know, as a senior leaving, I see them as, you know, they're going to be part of the future of, you know, R6 at UC. And I see a bright future with them as they're growing their skills. And also, they bring some happiness and some smiles while they play, win or lose. But um, back, to, back to the match, though, mainly. Kentucky. Well, we do have a tech pause uh, for UC Academy. Someone came crashing. Unfortunate. Um, just returning that tech pause. Ooh, look at these nice graphics. Can they? Can they hear us, Camilo? Can the stream hear us? The stream can hear us. They can hear us. We exist. That's what the thumbs up meant, right? Yes. Well, uh, what are your thoughts about this? 4-2 half uh, on a defensive half by you see against Kentucky. What are your thoughts? I think Kentucky needs to take this time out as a blessing and go over what they're planning to do. They do fall on defense, which is inherently easier on Clubhouse. But, I mean, UC Academy has all the momentum up, especially after a huge round like that where it easily could have been 3-3. Instead of feeling good about themselves going into the next half, they definitely, they're working an uphill battle. I would say Paladin needs to do a better job of keeping himself alive. Or if he's going to make a play, he needs to have his team with him because they look extremely disjointed. I think Paladin's been first picked at least twice, maybe three times from the side of Kentucky. And while that's not inherently horrible, it's that there's no trade or really anything to go with it. It seems he's dying for free way yeah, too right. often. And as they switch to defense, I imagine he'll be the most active player, probably duo roaming. I'd like to see him roaming with Puka here. Looks like by the operator selection, they may be going for the classic as just the roam setup on basement. We'll have to see, but if they do go for something like that, they have to watch that UC Academy does not undercut them, because as you can see, the site setup is completely light. They don't even have a rotating one yet. So if you're UC Academy, and you can notice this setup, you should absolutely make a play. Seems like UC Academy's luck can bring two hard breaches of Thurman and Ace. I actually kind of like that. Um, bring that gridlock, maybe to watch their flanks, give some little bit of security, and then... Ash and Zoe. You don't see Ash and Zoe a whole lot nowadays. Uh, both. It's usually one or the other. It's another op like Ram or Ram or somebody else coming in. Buck. Buck's been very popular. 
Right, but um, an interesting op selection probably going in with their how comfortable they are. Um, let's see how this gets started. Well, putting some pressure. Actually, they're opening up a lot of walls. Um, burning a lot of right here. Can't really tell if there's someone in the Raptors or not. And underwater clearly having disagreements about who's droning. But nonetheless, Nada will take CC control. There's no player red. And it looks like Kentucky's already fallen off of his roam a minute into it. Looks like they've fallen down the second floor. UC does not appear to really have too much information on that. Ooh. As neither hard breacher appears to be droning at the moment. And they're just gonna make a play blue. Water's sprinting down blue. This is actually a huge play. They're just facing the Goyo of Bane on dummies. One flanking oil. He's oh. dead. Attackers have located a bomb. Holy cow, what a read! What a read! A 5v2! Everything's collapsing for Kentucky! Oh my god. Another one, he's on a triple. You see, you have to be patient here. Ooh. Nadu chilling by the A bomb. Water is 1 HP, a singular oh. shot, but it won't matter. Huge round for you see that almost went really sour. I, I am, I'll be honest, I am shocked by all things. Like, what? The. I, we, I, we didn't, we didn't see the drones going in for the, for the roam clear. And no wonder why. It's because they're freaking droning down and seeing that, oh, we can take this space. Oh, what an amazing shot call. Uh, I, I was like, why are they sprinting? Why are they sprinting? Gone up. There's roamers. But I was thinking they're just going to sprint down, go to bar, because I thought everyone was down. No, but dude, that was an amazing dive. And Defenders the defense was not ready. Also, there were no rotations or anything in secret to start with. I am shocked. Um, Kentucky not completing this setup, not being fully prepared. Run too much on their roam, and what did you see do? Just ignored it. Um, hats off. If you're Kentucky, you absolutely should have taken your tax amount last round. I even said it in the earlier rounds they needed to burn it, and not burning it to this point is still kind of really selling yourself short right here. Kentucky, so a lot of teams, especially when they play clubhouse, I always like joke about like the most interesting roam set. It's been, it's been common knowledge for so long, you're not really going to reinvent it. When you run something like that, you need to know why you're running it and really like how to play around it. Credit to UC, they played it absolutely perfectly as we talked about in the prep phase. You can just undercut that setup most of the time. But if you're Kentucky, you need to realize why are you doing these setups. Like, how are they going to counter you and what's the actual point? Because they gave up third floor early, which is somewhat okay. And then they just stagnated in bar and there wasn't really like any information or anything. They had no beefers in blue or, or really anything to, to stop that rush from UC. So when we go into gym, which should be easier given how UC and Kentucky have been playing, I think Kentucky has a pretty good shot to win this round. A bomb has been located. They still are going to have to go back to basement or at least CC. And with no timeout and not a real opportunity to reset, I'm very concerned. I gotta say, I gotta hand it to Dejah because, oh my god, he almost brought that back. I thought he was gonna win it. I thought he was gonna win that last round. But, um, ooh, that Simon Taylor's breach charges. And Pineapple getting the opening kill to Buka. Wow. Uh, opening kill goes to UC on the attack. Things are looking a little bit hectic for Kentucky. I gotta say, I am a little bit shocked about how Paladin's performing. I know he's he is a good player, and he's only doing uh, two and seven right now. He's not having the best of days. But, I hope you can pull it back and you can see him at his peak. And Pineapple gets taken out by Bane. And now it's back to 44. Full health on either side. Bane, I think, did a flank or... I'm not sure. A really big fucking hole coming right up. Here we go. Either way, 4v4, minute 30 left. Looks like Consing was getting it opened up by water. That's a... I like to see the stark contrast from how UC attacks gym compared to Kentucky. Kentucky, we saw very one-dimensional, slow, very minimal breaches, whereas UC has pretty much everything covered. Oh. You notice how they were able to play highway because they had CC control. Bane looking to shock and out garage while looking at highway. I don't think there's any customers that he'll be able to nab off, but he might be able to get this flank up if he moves quickly. He moves quickly, he can, but I don't think he's realized it. It's a T9. Cincinnati starting to funnel Lodgy. This is a huge play for Bane. I think the entire round depends on this play. He's still bottom garage, though. He's still there. And Nadu's oh. highway takes down Paladin. 
Bane would have had Bane gets his kill, but it matters none now. He would have had the play of the game if he flanked even just 30 seconds earlier. Yeah. Swings highway, no customers either. Now, we have seen UC give way too many bodies in a Defenders rethink situation in the previous diffusers. round. I Attackers don't see it happening to twice, it. although both players are kind of stacked in the situation. Gets off and Nadu takes him down. You see Academy on the match point. And if you're Kentucky, you absolutely need to press the tax on my button right now. Where is the timeout? Where is the timeout? I wait for him to be able to actually select it. And I think uh I don't think we're getting there. Really disappointing. Instead, they're going bar to an offside on match point. I don't hate this move from Kentucky to spice it up a little bit. Honestly, I'm completely okay with it. Um, the only issue I would say is that we've seen Kentucky do these quote unquote pro setups or whatever you want to call them, Attackers need to especially on basement. They're running an off lineup taking. on bar. If you're going to run the offside, you absolutely need to know how to play the offside and what you're supposed to be holding and how to play off of each other. That's the most important thing. I can already see right here. That I don't think Kentucky has practiced this too many times considering they're reinforcing all four kitchen walls. If you're UC, you could make another fantastic B here. Just take stock and have uh, the con hatch cut off. You could just walk in and plant stage. There's little to no denial besides the yokai drones. I, I, I gotta be honest. Ten seconds remaining. I did not expect this game to get a 6 2. Oh, I didn't either. I thought we were going to get, Attackers especially on Clubhouse, too, on such an even map, I thought we'd see something along the lines Attackers of, are heading out you know, a 7-5 or even an overtime game, but well, it looks like Kentucky's just really, really stale, like a three-week-old loaf of bread. They just do not really seem to change whatsoever, and we talked about it. The team that changes and adapts to the other first is going to win the game, and I think clearly that's been you see. I think they're... I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm proud of my boys, but I'm also sad for. for pa I believe Palin's also seen. I, I feel really sad for him because both teams need this win. Um, Kentucky, they have two wins, so they could go away with a loss here and win the next round. For maybe crawl in. And Pineapple takes out Palin again. Opening kill. Palin getting too greedy, too antsy to try to help his team. Try to get a pick. Now he's two and nine. At match point, he cannot help his team any further except for watch cams. That's all he can do. Oh, I will man. say, having him dead, well, he may be the quote unquote best aimer on that team. Having a veteran voice behind you on match point is probably the best voice you could have. With that being said, Pineapple takes another. He's going huge. Bane is going down. And now it's desperation time for Kentucky. They have to get something going. I think. Um, Stuck in the beam. To be honest, that was a little late for us. Get this player in kitchen? No, he runs down. Oh, and both players are now cut off by the ace and cheese boss. Granted, I don't think he has any idea that there's two players next to him. But UC Academy, with a minute left, has all the time to oh. the drone. With that being said, they just drop pineapple on a triple, and both players are stuck in the basement. Oh, oh my god! Seemingly a flawless. Yokai drones will not save Crypt in this instance, and there's little to nothing he can do. Kentucky facing elimination. Crypt the last hope. Sprays in the ash of Nadu. Does take him down. Gets swung by Cheese Boss, who finishes with a quad. And UC Academy stays alive. Kentucky goes down. Wow. Oh my god. I'll be honest. I did not expect any of this to happen. Uh, I did not expect a 7-2 sweep. I actually expected Kentucky to give a lot harder of a problem. Um, I actually, I fully expected Paladin to be carrying. None of my expectations went the way I thought it would go. It's just completely different. Um, wow, great job on all of them. Also, great job on on water. I gotta say, uh, earlier today, uh, 
I'll say earlier today, water wasn't doing so hot, but he went eight and four today. He stepped up, striving for that win. That's a great job. Good job by Academy. We are back on camp. It was, in fact, a great job by UC Academy. I would say a very underwhelming performance from Kentucky. You don't really want to see that, especially in Paladin's last chance to qualify for an event like that. But that's unfortunately how the cookie crumbles. They just really, Kentucky just could not change what they were doing. They really just couldn't get out of their own mindset of, we need to do this. And then it goes wrong. And instead of really changing it or taking time to think about it, they just do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's literally the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It's not going to happen, and especially on a map like Clubhouse, where Clubhouse is very structured. It usually plays really the same. There's not a ton of new things you'll see on Clubhouse, but you still have to adapt to what your opponents are doing. If you're, if the opponents are able to make plays or they're able to do better clears than you are, you need to change what you're doing. You can't just run the same things you know, five times. And for UC Academy, to be honest, they really looked like they wanted it. Kentucky just looked stale, and it looked like the more motivated team won there. That's that really is that's all there is. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I feel like I before okay going b before going. Uh, uh, I'm stumbling on my words. Going into the half, I guess the you know the three games half. I was talking to UC Cabby. I told him at least what I told him is uh, uh, did, why is the door opening? Are you coming in for an interview? Who is that? Okay. Um, so, what was I saying? I was talking to Academy uh, during the 3-3 the three, three split, or I guess the first after the first we matched, I said, you guys have to win out. Um, we knew what their next match was going to be, which was going to be a bye, and they have to win out just to be able to qualify. And I, I told them, you guys got this. I believe in you. And um, I believe in them. I thought that this will be a, a – I thought they had to crawl for it, but they just walked in and stole a win. Um, so I'm happy for them. Uh, do you want to do an interview with Academy? It seems like we could be able to just grab somebody since we do have the time. You want to? Sure. I don't uh, think that's fine. All right. I'll, uh, I'll send a message, and um, maybe we'll grab somebody from the other room. Um, Seems like uh, one of our admins uh, accidentally miss did a misinput, and um, uh, you see Patriots. They had to back out. They forfeited the rest of their matches. However, they didn't win a single match today, so they did. They're already not going to be able to qualify. Um, and uh, it seems like Kenneth was accidentally given the loss, and you see Patriots just like walked away. But um, what are your overall? I guess if you want to, uh, what are your overall thoughts about? Well, I guess we do be able to. Thoughts. Uh, shall we go into uh, the current round standings or round matches while we wait for somebody to get in here? I think that's a good idea. All right. So currently, um, no other matches are finished because we had a quick match. Wow. Uh, but we do have someone here for an interview. We have the pineapple. Um, you want to come here? Actually, I have a headset. Maybe. Yeah. Let me know if this actually picks up on the stream. Do you Talk. Actually, hold on one second. Let me pull this. Okay, my laptop. Hold on. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I have you on my laptop right here. All right. Can you do anything while we're still waiting for this person? Well, you know what? I'm just going to give you my headset. What's up? What's going on? So we may have lost Dark Matter, but we pick up Pineapple. Winner from the last game. You see Academy stays alive and knocks off Kentucky, who can no longer qualify. A uh, few questions. This is impromptu, so I don't have anything scripted. If you want to give me your overall thoughts on winning that match and staying alive. Yeah, I mean, a couple weeks ago we went to the UK LAN, and in all honesty, Kentucky beat us pretty dominantly. We didn't really have any answers for them. And, you know, we're close to Kentucky, so we, we play some games with them. But, honestly, it was all just – Finding out the uh, play style that they had, recognizing like they got good gun skill, but if you can expose one of their players and push into sight and find those holes, they had some weaknesses, which is why primarily we won a lot of those masters was because there was just a couple holes and they couldn't really watch that logi, which was kind of the key to a lot of those pushes. And honestly, just good play calling, great clutch by Water really gave us that momentum. I don't think if I think if Water loses that clutch. I think we're still playing the game, and we don't have that momentum or uh, 
you know, skill that we have going into those last couple rounds. Absolutely agree. Water's clutch was probably the most significant moment of the entire game. I would say you're absolutely right, especially from how Kentucky played. There were rounds where you guys found holes, and they just didn't respond at all. They were just very slow. Take me through the round where they did the, you know, the old SSG Rome strat on basement, and you guys made that play blue. Who made that call, and then what was your initial, what was the initial read right there? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure who exactly made the call. I just heard dive blue, dive blue, and then I, like, recognized from the castle and the mutes that they were doing SSG. So I figured, okay, well, that means that they probably only have two people on site, three at most, and, you know, we funnel blue. As long as they don't have anyone playing deep armory on those boxes, we're going to be able to win those ones pretty easily. And then we got a, it got a little bit close towards the end. Uh, shout out, I think it was Tejot for almost bringing it back. That was a huge play by him. But it was it was honestly just we heard uh, dive sight, and, you know, we just had that trust in each other based off of how long we've been playing together to just uh, say, okay, you know, if it works, it works. Yeah, for sure. Um, you were 1,000% right. I, we felt like their setups – had a lot of holes in them, and they were maybe doing setups kind of for no reason, and you guys were really playing into it. So you guys did a, a fantastic job there. I would say one final question. What did it really feel like? Did it impact your team whatsoever to go up against a player like Paladin, who has such a reputation, and you know it's his last run to make an event like this, to get him first picked, I think, at least four times, especially in the last round, and put him on two and nine? Did that contribute to anything in your guys' comms or confidence as the match went on? He continued to struggle. I mean, yeah, for sure. Shout out Paladin. He's a great guy. I love him. He's su so such a great dude. Um, but yeah, definitely like going up, you know, we're pretty much fresh roster. The only one that's played multiple years is Nadu and everyone else is, you know, freshmen or first year players. So being able to go in there and get picks against more experienced players really gives us like a burst of confidence and energy. And honestly, I didn't even realize half the time that who I killed was Paladin. I was just doing something dumb and somehow managed to work, you know, common, uh, these guys play so weird type play style. Yeah, and that definitely works, and you guys use that to perfection. I'm going to let you go celebrate with your team. Congratulations once again on the win, as UC Academy has taken down Kentucky and moves further in the qualifier. For sure. Thank you. Joseph returns. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what a great job from uh, Academy and a good fight, a good fight, uh, a good fight from Kentucky. That will actually be their third loss. That none of their games have actually gone to overtime. They've either straight out won or straight out lost. So they have one more game left. They can put them at th three and three, and currently they sit at six points. Right. Um. So in reference to uh the first qualifier. Sixth place team, the last team in to actually get the bid, the uh, TCC Lancer, had 10 points, the 17 and the 9. Currently, we could see a scenario that lines up similar, but there might be one 9 point team that makes it in. It depends on how OT uh, win losses happen, but there seems to be a lot less. So there might be more opportunity for teams that have 9 points to make it in. So currently, all they have to do now is you have to have Kentucky and you uh, has to win out. And they have to win completely their next game. UC Academy, um, they're also at six points. They have to do the same thing, find another win. However, I will say it will be much tougher for them to actually get there because as stated in the uh, rules, uh, if anybody actually looked into it, I don't know if anybody looked into it, how the seeding goes is you have to get points, right? You get three points for winning, two points for OT, one point for loss, zero points for Lost OT. One point for lost OT. Or zero points for winning, right? Then you have your games won. So if you have the same points, but then your games won, you're over. Might have some uh, technical issues there on the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's new. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, to continue, um, and then after, after the games won, it goes round differential, then it goes to head-to-head, -to -head, then... Uh, strength of schedule. So all UC Academy has to do is win out and hope that whoever has nine points with them um, doesn't have more than two wins because, well, I uh, – it's the buy – so, okay, on challenger mode, 
on against the opponent, so it is considered as a one buy. We might have to actually. Um, I'll have to double check with the rest of the staff on how uh, how that's being handled. If we're working, if we're working it through challenge mode um, or manually again, but I'm pretty sure these buys. Uh, I'm not sure how challenge mode is actually serving them if they're considered as a win on challenge mode and not separate clause on buy. So we'll have to look further into that, but. Um, some t- these two teams have their work cut out for them. For sure. And I think Kentucky more than UC for sure. UC at least has momentum going for them. For Kentucky to lose to not the main, not the secondary, but the tertiary team from Cincinnati, that has to be absolutely crushing. Uh, I think they need to go to the drawing board, and they definitely, I think, have a harder climb than UC or any of the other, other teams on the bubble. Mm-hmm. They, yes. The unfortunate news for, th- for at least for UC Academy, I'm pretty sure is, if I'm correct, um, no matter, well, I, mm, actually, I'm not correct. I don't know how to speak that. I have to look at buys and I have to look at everything. Anyways, sorry. Uh, I'll get off of that. But uh, so far, no other matches have been reported. So the only thing we know of is this UC and Kentucky game. But we'll be back with round six, the final round. Um, shortly once all the rest of the matches have been completed. Thank you for watching round five here with Dark Matter and Tom Z. Thank you.
I'm doing great. I'm really excited for this last game. As we know, uh, it's on Oregon, which isn't my favorite map. It's definitely at the lowest. But I will say, this is a really exciting matchup. I really like what I've seen from both these teams as of late. And I think both could be very impactful at the Queen City Clash. Yeah, I was just looking at the uh, map bands, and this was actually Abstate's map pick, which I didn't really see coming. I thought this would be more of a uh, Kennesaw pick. Kennesaw has been really good at Oregon. I've experienced it firsthand. So for Abstate to take it in there, I'm not so sure about that move. They might have something up their sleeve that maybe we haven't seen before. But going into the match, I kind of like Kennesaw already. I don't think the sides really truly matter that much. But we will see. We are already into bands, and it looks like FC took off Yink, which is actually a really smart band against Kennesaw. I like that a lot. Kennesaw counters with a Dokubi band. Don't see a ton of Dokubi on Oregon. Maybe for some of those basement roam clears, but it's it's a decent band. A Valk band's also kind of interesting. There's not a ton of C4 play on this map, but denying info is always somewhat smart. I wouldn't be shocked if we see something along the lines of a Solus or a Fenrir. Sure enough, it's a Fenrir ban. So what this means is full electronics are up, but Thatcher is also up. So I expect this game to be more of a uh, of a frag fest more than full utility play. I think, especially in recent pro play and even in amateur, Oregon has evolved from being this. It, it's still Oregon, but it's not as stale and dull as it used to be. It's a lot more playmaking and um, like uh, what's the word? Making like a forest type play, sprinting in attic with Defender, the user or something. A lot, of, a lot of players have found avenues to really exploit this map. Uh, we'll be going to kids doors first, which is probably one of the harder sites to get away with something like that on. You'll probably see something standard, but you can already see the lineup from Kennesaw is interesting. Bringing the collie and a Grim. Grim has seen a huge spike in his pick rate, especially in pro play as well. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Like Uh, looks like Abstate will be loading up Master Bedroom. They bring the Thorn with a shield on the Master Bed. I actually love this setup from them. Uh, this will really stall Kennesaw. Left. However, based on Kennesaw's operating lineup, I think this might be a more of a split take, especially with the Osa. So it'll be interesting to see. It might be a direct counter to what Abstate's doing. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like you did mention before, Grim. Uh, over the buffs over the le these past few seasons has become a very strong force to be reckoned with. You've been seeing some bans during the 6th Invitational. Speaking of forces to be reckoned with, we do have our eyes on Mon Hyden right now, who will be in that armory window repel so close to finding that first engagement over with uh, Ryan Sosa. But first damage does go to good old baby Exploder as Mon Hyden will be first taken down. And Max Win will have direct contact with the Osa. Runs away though before Rosa can potentially activate. Completely fluffs the Kiwa Barry. In the meantime, Ryan Sells has gotten one onto pause. And there goes the Osa as well. Baby Explorer again taken down. However, Plant Gazer starts to recover something as he's up here by the top white stairs. He's attracted the entirety of attention. And it's going to be a flank fast by front right now. Two minutes left remaining. And this might be down to a one versus four. And there it is. As Chow now in a three versus one, still such a difficult scenario to win, and there comes a Nitro Cell. And just like we talked about, a really fast start to Oregon. I think both these teams are definitely going to clash in terms of, like we said, a frag fest. These rounds are going to be pretty quick and a lot of playmaking. I will say from the side of Kennesaw there, quite a bit confusing, especially with how they were really set up. Uh, we saw Mainheim and Dai get first picked on Armory Repel. And they didn't really have any map control to where they could afford that. There was absolutely no potential for a trade. They didn't take underneath. Nobody was really 
walking up. Man, they didn't even really split attic. So it kind of looks like Kennesaw just walk into a buzzsaw. And if you're out of state, protect your that's exactly what you want them to do. You know Kennesaw's an aggressive team. You know a player like Pain Might will go get those kills, or at least attempt to get those kills and take ones. So you play operators like the Thorn and Thorn 1.5. And the Zombie, they're bringing a leash in here on base, but you don't see a ton of that. That's really to slow them down, and I think it's really smart from out state. No, yep, absolutely. App State is with a great start off to this one. We'll have to see how Kennesaw adapts to it, though. Hopefully, they can maybe set up some more trades uh, in that first round. I wouldn't really say they lost the plot. It didn't really feel like there was a plot at all. Uh, every player kind of on an individual island, uh, especially as we did see just Chow just over there by the big window. There Maybe there was a set piece going to be set up there uh, with the ace that round, but it just didn't come to fruition. Chow forced to just hop in and take his chance with 3v1. Eventually gets exploded by a Nitro Cell, however. Moving on to this round, though, we do see two players, Plant Gazer, and, oh, actually, no, just Plant Gazer moving on towards Bunker. It will be Mine Hyde and making his way towards that rear stage, though. Soon to find a potential engagement. Takes up first, but the damage by front, though. Mine Hyde can be very aware. Can be very careful from now on. The drone's coming in. That's Bravo already hacking that default camera. Front's going to be able to take that one up nice and easy. Mine Hyde pushing forward. Not gives a signal for front. Maybe fall back just a little bit. <sighs> These peaks. Almost gets it. Mine hiding. Lucky to be alive still. Probably pulling out a goo mine. Gone. Not. Back to the lesion up front. He might have a play here. Looks up for free. That's going to be the... Oh, Mine Hyden stays alive. Barely escapes with his life. Almost a huge blunder for Kennesaw. They get away from it for now. Front goes down. Minute left in the round. Chow picks him up. But Kennesaw doesn't really have a ton of control other than back steps. I know, absolutely. It was a valiant effort by front, but one that should have been given up quite a bit ago. Wong spots that Brava drone. Uh, there we go. Manages to get it before it runs away. Plant Gazer now opening that meeting hall hatch. Minute 40 left on the clock here. Man advantage towards Kennesaw. Plenty of utility for this execute. Although the main heavy hitter in Manhattan quite low. Baby Explorer will get taken down. Just kind of bot walking into that. And Ryan Sosa with the spray down manages to find one and a second. Oh my god. Manhyden recovers it though. Now it's a two versus two scenario. Child putting himself on the board. Two versus one. Manhyden, the one who has been lowest this entire time, now with it all to recover. Minute 15 left. He can isolate these duels, but it's going to be complicated, especially at this HP. Sliver HP gets dusted by Anita in Freezer. And if you are on Kennesaw, I know it's early, but it almost feels like this match is a round away from getting out of control. It doesn't really look like they're playing together, and they're not recognizing any of what Abstate is doing. Abstate is playing this pretty much perfectly. Uh, Kennesaw is trying to do smoke drops and cut off angles with smokes with a Warden on the board. They know Abstate's running a Warden both rounds. It's just really confusing, especially from where he's playing. The Warden was playing tarps the whole time. They knew he was playing tarps, and they still smoked it. I didn't really understand the, the play right there. Need to I like a, a surprising lack of patience, especially after they got that initial man advantage by taking down front over by the rear stage. Uh, we definitely could have seen some more droning to try and more carefully plan that out. Uh, it's unfortunate that Baby Explorer kind of just bot walked into that into a goo mine and then activated a razor bloom and then got swung. Because having Baby Explorer over by that bunker door would have been a great set piece to put on pressure as those players dropped meeting hatch from unfortunate scenes for Kennesaw, but. Move on to round three. New bomb side entirely. I have to see if Kennesaw can get themselves on a board here. Honestly, I expect Kennesaw, I expect nothing from Kennesaw other than for them to keep up this super fast paced play. There's nothing really wrong with it, especially on the modern organ. But if they're gonna do that, they need to be in sync and they need to recognize what the defense is providing. You can play fast but still play smart. Just like on the last round on basement. They made no attempt to even open the laundry hatch or open the freezer hatch and completely ignored that side of the map. That's going to get punished. It looks like from this setup too, this might also be a fast round, especially a lot of teams AMP love to open up this uh, double door wall, which is exactly what they're doing. Baby Explorer might just march right in if he thinks he has to play. They know Z-Hole is cut off, and so is the Rosie. We could see some kind of fast plant attempt here by Kennesaw, although Baby Explorer opts to back off a little bit and well, App State seem to be very much wiser what potentially could be going on here as we do see Anita starting to peak that angle. Such a powerful gun in the form of the MP5 SD. Or does he now? Oh, he does. He's been crawling over here, Munhyden. His way quite swiftly up those freezer steps in his front. 
with all the pressure right now, taking on taking down a few drones. And now Plant Gazer and company trying to make their way through army. Gonna be opening that trophy wall. Putting some real pressure over by front. However, Mine Hyden with a great first pick onto Ryan Sosa. Ryan Ooh, Sosa a response. Front managing to scurry away with some HP left from that first duel over in Attic. Now taking Manhyden's initial position, but speaking of positions, it'll be paused. That's such a great one over Lucian. Going to take a chunk of his HP. Has some good vertical to work with as well, and I'll be fine. Cage or taking down Anita. Front going to be making his way slowly into the bomb site. Maybe a reverse vertical opportunity, but one onto White. Doesn't find it. Manhyden with a double. Minute left here. And it's such a difficult scenario for Absey to recover. This could be Kennesaw getting on the board right now. So much better look for Kennesaw as Wong kind of whips and sprays to the wall. It doesn't seem like the Grim has any idea of his position. This plant is most likely going to go down for three. Not even phased by it. They have a drone on Lucian as well. He's most likely not long for this world. He tries to swing out. He's being held by literally three players. Into the Shumika. Shumika himself as Wong tries to flank Freezer. Such a difficult to recover scenario here. The Wong gets dropped on. Really the fight anyway. oh. Chow gets chowed down. Oh boy. Oh. Ooh. Main height and Zofia's Lucian off the map. And now we're at 2 1 8. Significantly much better round for Kennesaw. In the beginning, it looked a little worrisome, but they really pulled it together with the vertical pressure and then the overall site execute. They completely flipped the script in the previous round. They had next to no map control to controlling essentially everything they needed. They had a uh, double door wall open early, then they took upstairs at full vertical on kitchen. They could have dropped kitchen to plan if they wanted to. They opt for meeting instead. That was a beautiful setup by Kennesaw. Yeah, no, absolutely. Lucian just getting demo manned right there and. I'll be giving Kennesaw their first Attack one. We do see uh, Okay, we do see Absey opt to return to Kid's bedroom, though. Not to see Kennesaw. Any changes to how they want to approach this. You have been mentioning their fast style, but can they make it a fast and smart style this time around as they do re revisit this bomb site for the attack? see that fast style again as baby exploders on the blitz i think upstate may or kennesaw may opt to go around this upstate setup completely uh this setup is an exact clone of what they saw previously and for good reason they absolutely rock kennesaw last time on this but i think it's time for kennesaw to switch it up looks like that's exactly what we'll be seeing potentially uh blitz hopping through that bottom white window Mass white stairs rush and Hayden on the line as well. We do have playing Gazer on the Captain Tower. This is just so much good utility to supplement the splits, not to mention as well the fracking potential for Yana and Ash. This is going to be one hell of a chaotic round, and we'll have to see if AppState can stand tall to it. They're going to get an early warning of it if there's a Razor Bloom up on those white stairs, and there is one. However, Baby Explorer already in, taking such a big heap of damage. He's getting to get that plant down at the very least. There's no response, though. No Nitro, no nothing. There's nobody dorms. This is a free plant right now. Plant gets are taken down surprisingly, though. At least he gets some utility down. Now that diffuser down, and it'll be front. Gonna be doing a flank over by white stairs. Manhattan might get caught, as well as paused by that window. Front needs to break into this slowly. As those troops do start to make their way, Wong gets one of Manhattan front on the pause as well. And oh my god, baby exploder on a shiver of HP. It's such a complicated situation. And there he goes down. Chow doesn't it make it work. Kennesaw. Great plant or defense, and App State with a beautiful retake. App State absolutely Defenders brought win. that one back from what looked like absolutely nothing. The post plant positioning from Kennesaw made little to no sense. The Blitz was obviously stuck, and I believe that was the Lion of Mainheiten that was stuck on uh, top weight. So not a whole lot he could have done, but I believe it was the, uh, the Yana of Paws who was just pretty much outside doing kind of nothing. If he rotates up to Big Window, I think it's a completely different round. And even even then, I mean, it's just Plant Gazer who gets taken down surprisingly early from that big window position. I mean, like, uh, Paws could have definitely got the cut on the front as he was trying to flank up Defenders White. On Hayden, though, was in no man's land completely on 1 HP and just over prone by top White stairs. You know, reminds me a lot of Canadian on that one clip. Yeah, the infamous origin clip of Canadian himself. 
itself. Uh, I would say these Kemisaw attacks have not been orchestrated by someone of that like. These attacks have not really been Attackers have located a bomb. Uh, solid at all, really. It's You're telling me they're not making SI with this one? I don't think they're making SI with it. Well, SI's over. I guess they can't make SI. Next one. Next one, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, don't, don't you know Queen so. City Clash gives SI points? Like one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do have glasses remain. after all, so you're gonna have to squint a little bit, mate. I am blind as a bat. It's an unfortunate problem. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. Nerd. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I'm blind. F State's in the basement again. Doesn't appear to be any roam presence, so Kennesaw should be able to take them out for free. They're running two sets of can openers, which is something I like to see here. They're gonna be able to go for the freezer hatch, laundry hatch, and meeting instead of kind of stagnating. Main Heighten looks like he's taking the garage already. I see the Sophia, I believe that's Xiao by uh, Big Tower. So map control definitely in the side of Kennesaw early. Front. I made his mark over here by rear stage earlier in this match. Not a good one. So we'll have to see if he mediates his aggression or perhaps walks away with his life as he eats a heavy attack from Mine Heighten. What a beautiful pre fire from him. As they already have such big amounts of meeting control. And there goes Front again. 0 for 2 on holding that properly. And Paws with a great one into Anita. Mine Heighten with a little bit of lag though. Paws making his way down on a war path. However, gets some resistance. Opts to fall back a little. Kennesaw has an advantage. So they slowly start to lose. And Mine Heighten goes down. And it'll be Mankazer. Trying to make an effort, trying to make a distraction as the Apse players do focus on him. Nearly cut his head off, though, and Ryan Sosa taking a meaty tag. Wong, oh, almost takes down Paws, and from Pillar, Baby Explorer makes their way through. He's so close to a player, though, he doesn't realize it. Oh, Lucian with That's a case. great pick. Case is down in default. The buck is also going to die to Ryan Sosa. There's one more freezer. He has a read on the Sophia. Easily winnable situation for Ryan Sosa. He swings but gets traded by Chow and Kennesaw straight into the round. It looks really scary at points. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it could have gone either way, especially like once Kennesaw started, you know, at least characteristically for this match, just running in, throwing away advantages, especially once that Cade got that first pick. Anything could happen. I think when, uh, I believe it was Mainheiden was the first one to fall in the 5v3 situation. That's a pick you just cannot give up, a 3v4. And Kennesaw didn't really look like they had a full execute in mind. They dropped Case Attackers in the box with uh, the Grim, and, and there, was no, there was no coverage on it. He really, there was no plan that he could have pulled off right there by himself. So they do scrape another round on the board. And again, we'll mention the aggression. So that's how they're choosing to play. It's going to work out sometimes, and other times it's not. But on a map like Morgan, it's not horrible to take gambles sometimes. I mean, it's only 3-2. The best they can get here is a 3-3 three, three split, then fall on defense. We know Kennesaw is going to bring the aggression back to App State, so maybe their plan is, hey, gamble as much as we can early and then fall back on defense. Yeah, no, for sure, especially for a map like Oregon that's been in this pool for so long, that has been played by us in Collegiate so many years, so many times. At some point, you basically know where to pre-fire, when to pre-fire, what the timings are, what the reactions of the defenders are going to be. And honestly, you're perfectly comfortable to take these flexible gunfights. However, I would like to see some flexibility from front to just either back off entirely from rear stage or switch up the approach because he seems to be the first point of entry for Kennesaw here so far, especially when attacking the downstairs. I think Kennesaw knows that App State tends to not roam whatsoever, which I honestly think is a mistake from App State. Kennesaw's drone game doesn't appear that strong. They're kind of just face checking a lot. Pretty much, uh, Kennesaw is saying, we can count on front to play back steps as Legion, which he's doing once again for the third time, and keeps sticking his head up. They just get them up for free, they do whatever they want with it, and now the drone game appears to be coming in. But either way, App State's just turtling on base. Yeah, no, for sure. You would have absolutely loved to see at least a bit of a deeper roam coming in from App State, maybe some early aggression over towards that lobby side, pick some drones, get some tags, and then fall back. It's better than just having front be by those back stairs for the third time again. I, he honestly could have died to another pre-fire from meeting if he didn't get scattered from there long enough and speaking some battling. Child making their way down those main steps, at least causing a little bit of distraction to Wong. Pause, though, making their way quite quickly, and it's just Wong trapped by Chala. Paws just waiting for him to show a sliver of body here by these headies. The I think this round's going to end up in an other, another old-fashioned saloon brawl. 
Looks like Kennesaw is stacking up on pretty much every avenue possible. I see two players on, I see a player on main, I see two freezer and two backside. Jackal sticks his head out, survives Wong. Ryan finds baby explorers, really struggling. Cause goes down as well, and now it's all falling apart for Kennesaw. Yeah, saloon brawl it may be, but the Kennesaw members do seem a little bit wobbly. And a little bit too much to drink here as there's only three versus five. Baby Explorer and Paws falling down. Mine Hyden at least has a health, hefty amount of health left. Chow not so much. Blank Gazer has to take a tag. Mon Hyden, there he goes. He activates, he drops, but he's alone in front. He's right next to front. He doesn't find him though. Mon Hyden downed. No trade on last. And there it is from Chow. Oh, this is a possible round now. Two versus two. 2v2, no C4s on the board. Lantanel oh, doesn't exist, but the flank from Wong upstairs leaves Plant Gazer alone. Has to fight Lucian in sight. Has no idea where the Kaid is. He's in the long tree. Rotate. It's a 1v1. Speed. Skeleton key out, swinging. Can't find the Kaid just yet. He knows he's to his far right. On top of the drone line. Where is Wong in all this? He's, he's just, is he just going to let... Back, steps, oh, Wong is gone. Line. Oh, my oh, God. Oh! Plant Gazer takes them both in app steep. What is happening? That has to be a devastating round. It's an even split now from Kennesaw. Wow. Plant Gazer. More like Stargazer as he shot for those stars. What a beautiful one versus two. I mean, I was saying where like where the thorn was in all this because Cade looked like he was trapped on an island. I mean, st like Plank Gazer had no intent on stopping his pursuit onto that Cade, and he was more than successful in that mission. Holy Defense hell, if I'm at state, I'm beating myself up after that one. Well, in a qualifier, you really can't. The only thing you can do is kind of move on and talk about it as they move on to the quote-unquote more difficult side of Oregon. Um, I think based on this operator lineup, it looks like they're going to go for a more traditional type of execute. The Maverick pretty much signals that they're... Maverick and Nomad pretty much signals that they're going to go for a split take. You'll probably see Attic get opened up. You'll probably see them try to take Armory and Master. Pretty standard stuff, which honestly, against this type of opponent, I'm not so sure is a great idea. Is this going to be some kind of uh, extended by Armory? Oh, it is. Okay, things might get interesting here. Do you wonder if we're going to see some armory window pressure, perhaps even Attackers that are armory out, window angle onto the headies. Yes, it does appear they'll be going for a split take. I mean, back to Reloading. last round, I believe Case was down in E-Box, but if you're the thorn there, that doesn't really matter. You gotta protect your teammate in that situation. So, if this does go uh, the way of Kennesaw, that's pretty much the situation you have to look on and say, where did it all go wrong? Sure, and, uh, well, now we're looking for things for Apsi to go right here as they will be front positioning themselves, at least for part one of this attic pressure. Setting up those air jabs just to make sure him and Anita can't get flanked that easily. Ryan sells it with some initial pressure over by bottom lobby and garage. Going to be clearing this out slowly with drones. That's the information that hatch is open. I do wonder if a player is in there. Maybe it is Baby Exploder or Lucian. Wow, what is Plant Gazer doing? Baby Exploder as well falls? My god. Almost another one, a little bit over an overheat from Ryan Sosa, but when you're at 13 and 6, you kind of get away with it sometimes. What's been going on here? Front like hitting the back takes down main height and pause trades it out to the front again. I'm so lost. They might see the kind of stall. He's trying to get the breach. They have to know pause is playing trophy, but I don't know where Chow is. I believe he's playing dorms. No, he's, yeah, he's playing dorms on the rotate hole. Might need to play up with his teammate here, but... This is a spot where a lot of teams will really stall, and you almost kind of feel the throw coming from App State here. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of things App State can do to clear pause right now. They have three flashbangs on Anita, but even then they can't clear the shield with that. I mean, they do have the two Selmas in the pocket, so they may be able to force him back, but Anita's over by Attic. Could get the stab on pause, though. It doesn't matter, though. Pause gets a good one to Lucian. Bye-bye, your primary hard breach. Minute left in this round, though, but Anita... Wong seemed to be a little bit split up though, and all pause is tucked tail and ran away with that profit. Now it's up to Chow to challenge his first angle. Anita taking a heavy tag, not down yet. Has information on where both players are and offs to back up a little. Pause just anchoring Attack over by that main here. wall. Anita just posted up here as Wong does pick up the diffuser. 
Cause is in the power position here. This is the most important player for the round, and he goes down. He lets Wong walk in with Case. All up to a needed Bomb a float hit, though, as Chow is still in Kid's dorms. Plant very viable for App State now. Chow not really on the health necessary to take two heads up engagements like this. We'll have to Wong see how he navigates. Anita's stand for Plant's way down on concrete. He doesn't know. Oh, Plant goes down no on way. concrete. 1v1. Chow versus Wong. Wong fridlocks him. Oh Chow god, Chow. Go. Chow, Chow, he Chow! He knifes. Oh my he god! Knifes what? Wong! Wong goes down. Kennesaw steals the round back somehow. What? Bomb diffuser disabled by defenders. There is no state, goddamn way. If you are at state, you need to press the attack timeout button right now. Every single one of you needs to be pressing the button. You've had two rounds where you basically have had everything. You had it. And then you just you just can't play together and it all goes wrong it's just it, you gotta man it's just super confusing from uh, the side of app state they were up i believe three to two and now it's been kennesaw just rolling them over with all the momentum in the world and now they're going arguably the best side of the map in the basement this is not looking good for app state attackers need to locate and defuse as I many mean, bombs as they can god let's uh i don't even know what to say about that dude let's let's work let's uh Look at that really slowly. Uh, I mean, first off, Chow had no nitro cell. He had used a shield, which uh, pretty sure Absate may have been aware of. So I don't know why they're planting so close to that attic door when they could have just planted Attackers safe by games. Of Second off, why is why is the ace just holding that angle so exposed? A clean swing from Chow just ends it right then and there. They're in third, like where where are these track stingers? There was so much time to deploy these track stingers to stop Chow, even if it's just for a little bit. So much could have gone right. I can't really blame the planter in those type of situations. Sometimes the audio does completely mess with your head, but I think that completely falls on the gridlock right there. The post plant positioning in a 1v1 was completely atrocious. She sits on trophy door with her back to the warden. And even though the audio might sound confusing, what are you really gonna do from that spot? Oh, and made height surprise Anita first. This is falling apart for App State. Yeah, I mean, what can you do against my height? And first off, let's decipher that equation. This plant engagement does take a little bit of attack. Looks like they want to swing again as front is solo pushing kitchen side. Attackers and look at this. You can tell App State is feeling the pressure. Ryan Sosa got one tap by the uh, Ryan Solo. Pistol. Yeah, that's not a great look. You can kind of just see the fear in App State. They're air jamming things you can pretty much never see. Main oh, Exploder front. does go down. Oh my god. Main Heiden is still in control, and App State, the rails have come off. It's absolutely chalked here for App State. Almost he forced his teammate. Lucian is still alive. There is the freezer cross. Wong trades out pause. Knows Main Heiden's playing in control with a shotgun. Main Heiden dusts him too, and Kennesaw have full control of Morgan. My God, and well, I guess on the top of, topic of full control, uh, the recent match just finished. Kent State absolutely decimates UC Black with a clean 7-0. Maybe the first one on this qualifier. Yeah, UC Black. The good thing is though, they are already qualified, so. Yeah, it's 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 gonna learn. it's gonna take some RD magic, and part of my French fuckery for them not to make it. Looks like we see Kennesaw going to meeting hall and kitchen, and to be honest, Defenders, it doesn't look like the bomb site matters. This entire game looks like a session of bunker wars if you're Kennesaw State. They are just completely frying App State, and quite frankly, definitely in App State's head. So much so, Baby Exploder is eating or doing God knows what. What do you think Baby Exploder is thinking right now? Seems to be lost in thought. Bomb located by I mean, he's, he's probably getting his DoorDash order. That, that's probably what that means. Oh, there he goes. He got it. Probably a meatball sub or something. Who knows? But um, <laughs> either way, not going to change anything. Blank Gazer sets up an interesting mirror on stage. But like I said, the setups here aren't really what to look at. It's really to look at App State. And the neglect of, once again, a team not using either of their attack timeouts when it appears they desperately need to. App State have been getting absolutely steamrolled. They cannot even make it out of spawn. And we're watching them air jabbing. Would, to pretty much any spectator would look like random points. 
bring a nomad to cut off staircases to get map control, and they're just dumping them on, like, kitchen hallway and freezer? Because they're just, like, it, it just looks like Abstate is not in the game right now. I mean, first of all, you, you bring a nomad to um, hold your teams back, but what what's going on by front right there? That's you guys going to kill on the boss. Hello. Is that, it was just front was the entire team right there. Midheiden takes out Wong as well on a trade. That's the Jackal getting first pick from the attack. Looks like F.C. runs through their kids' dorms, but they're only doing so by stacking up on big windows. That's typically oh. not the best. And a wall bang from Chow pretty much ices this round in my mind. Much, unless Ryan Sosa can get a nice low pick here, which he might be able to. There's one. Could be an overaggression by mine hide too. I wouldn't put it past him. Ryan Sosa does have the R4C for this one, and there's a chance for Absi to bring it back. But it could get catastrophic right here as Plant Gage are still upstairs. Has information of where at least two of these Absi attackers are. And now Larry Absi. Disaster here. A minute 40 left on this clock, and some verticals are going to be starting to be made. Could be a swing out here by Plank We're not zoomed in. There he is. Front goes down. Not looking. What are you guys what? doing? Triple Ryan. Ryan Socha. Chow with a pocket shield against a 16 7 Ryan Sosa. He is 1 HP. And if you're up state, you just completely overheated. You won the round back, and then we just neglected drones. Now oh, Ryan Sosa with his ram out dies to Chow. And Kennesaw onto match point. At state. I believe facing elimination if they lose this game. Where is the timeout? Man, this isn't overheating. Your, your, your circuits are just fried at this point. Like, what is going on? Why isn't Ryan looking at where his teammate just died? I think that comes as a shock. I mean, sometimes you literally just can't move around fast enough. But either way, you have a minute 30 left man count advantage, and nobody's droning. We're just walking around upstairs and kids and trophy and, and praying. That's like, that's just poor discipline. I mean, Kennesaw clearly had horrible discipline there. They threw like two bodies on Big Window and one elsewhere. And then Ash State just gives it away. Instead of building momentum for themselves in the round, they just say, oh, screw it. No one's probably up here. Let's walk around. And then they get fried and throw the round right back. Of course, Ryan Sosa brought it down to a 1v1, but he's 1 HP. You can't fall him there. Yeah. So it's just really really confusing. Kennesaw gets to go back upstairs where we saw Abstate Pro was also a very winnable round. And look at this, they're running the same operator lineup as the last time as well. So I mean, when you see something like this, usually the comms are like, oh guys, we had it, we had it last time. We just, we just threw. We just had it last time. Well, running the exact same thing back, I mean, Kennesaw, what do you think Kennesaw's thinking they're going to do? Must Look at Kennesaw's adaptation. Baby Exploder's playing Pulse underneath. He Engineer knows they're going to try to take Attic with the Maverick again. He's countering that. Oh, they might not be able to counter Ryan Sosa's extra mobility here. Amaru, but even then, can he get there? Mon Hayden has been on a warpath and will continue to be on that warpath if he does succeed on this spawn kill. Oh, he's getting so close. He's a man you want to have. Oh my god, he's a man you want to have. The SMG-11 in his hands. Someone just put him out of business here. Please, I can't watch this any longer. There he goes. Close the moment as he reinforces his attic, pause taking the gunfight front door along with Baby Exploder. Looks like I can't tell if that's Ryan Sosa taking him backstage. He may have the flank on these two players. This is going to be such a terrible angle to swing in. Two players either side. Long conserve your life here, my friend. You have the information. Ryan packing up now on a similar angle as well as there'll be Baby Exploder now ret retreating as well. Pause. Still left to fight it. This could be a, a great first opening pick. Or the first sign of disaster. However, Monheiden finally falls to front. And then opening for App State. Another great one loose in front. Double kill for front here. An opportunity for Abstate to carve their way back into this one. Chow getting taken down as well. Now it's just pause. Could have been the open. Now going to be the closer. Flawless round for Abstate. And that's what we want to see. Abstate finally finding their group. But I would kind of argue Kennesaw did a little bit too much there. We saw four C4s from their side. And I'm pretty sure three of them were downstairs. Interesting move from Kennesaw. When you're on match point and you kind of know what your opponents are going to do. I don't hate the move. Now it's yeah. time to log back in. They can go back to the basement where Abstate previously have struggled. 
and I would still take attack time out here if I could if I was F-State, but it looks like they're going to opt not to. Uh, they're bringing the Maverick to counter the Kaid for the hatch, but Baby Exploder is on Clash. I would say Baby Exploder has been alternating ops from the side of Kennesaw more than anybody. We've seen him switch from Maverick to Brava to Clash to Pulse. I believe if they change anything with their setup, it's, he seems to be the guy they go to. Yeah, I mean, he seems to be the everyman, and well, the ever the everyman in this team doesn't necessarily have to frag as he is sitting one in ten, but his teammates in Munhide and in Chao seem to have the frag department very well covered, as well as Plant Gazer, honestly. Yeah, you could argue that the scoreboard doesn't totally show up, but I feel as though Kennesaw is pretty well rounded, just in terms of how they're playing off of each other, the aggression. Ten seconds left before insertion. I mean, they just clearly had a plan, and. We talked about at the beginning of the Five show that App State decided to take Kennesaw to Oregon. It was their Attackers pick, objective is to locate and, a bomb and defuse it. I still cannot draw the conclusion as to why. It looked like they had a great start, especially with how they were stalling them on defense, but then it just it just all of a sudden fell apart. And it was looking like we're going to get a quick one here as Adidas on Blitz going for the classic elbow rush. Oh boy. And he's in, we're off. Oh boy, this could be a fumble, or this could be a fifth year for App State. Man advantage so far, and here they kick the gas. And oh my goodness, plant kids are taken down. Man advantage for App State. Five versus three scenario. I need to take in some good chunks of damage. Wow, that just ended so quickly. App State back in the driver's seat here. Mind you, four timeouts still left total. I think Anita may have gotten a hip fire off on the Warden. I didn't see him use his flash. The Warden put his goggles up, but... Either way, I love that aggression from F-State. They're down. They want to take it back to them. That's great. The only problem is, what do you do now? Because you can't get away with it twice. And once again, they have to go They have to go after kids' dorms, where Kennesaw is surely not going to run that C4 setup again. Surely they're going to go back to full utility. And F-State, once again, looks like they're doing the exact Attackers same clear, the exact bomb. same lineup and the exact same players on set operators. Might be these exact same operators, but at least now they're going to be well adjusted against uh, to Kennesaw's aggression. If that aggression does come out, they are on the brink of going to overtime here. So maybe Kennesaw mediates things a little bit. Maybe they cool off a little bit. Maybe they play a little bit more safer. They maybe Munhaiden recognizes that he probably needs to be one of the last people alive if he wants to close this out right here and now and not go to overtime. Saying that now it's remaining. serious. Uh, as yeah, Baby Exploder so. takes <laughs> As Baby Exploder <laughs> takes an impact. As Baby Exploder explodes. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. <laughs> Manhattan oh. looking like he's trying to get frisky again. We saw him cry, I believe it was Lucian off his window earlier. Pretty sure it was, yeah, and God. How does he do sure it on the mute? The, uh, R6 marketplace. That glacier on the SP. I'm surprised he's he's getting this mobile with a one speed like mute. I mean, I feel like he can get away with pretty much anything here because once again, they know exactly what Abstate is doing. Everyone at home knows exactly what Abstate is doing, and everyone knew it before the round started. Loading new magazine. Out. I think we touched on it earlier, but this is zombie nerf is going to change the game so much. In case you didn't catch it. If you shoot a keep a barrier enough times, they believe it's six with the DMR, pretty much eleven. Thirty with any, oh, it's eleven with the DMR, and it's thirty-two with any AR. A zombie next season, you will not be seeing these type of setups. I can almost promise you. I mean, I think it's a pretty good balance change. You know, there's a certain cost that comes with it, especially with the, uh, you know, these ammunition changes that we saw back in year six now are going to even become even more prevalent. I mean, these days, you notice your ammo running out quite quickly as you're just trying to destroy barricades and such, but now with the added benefit of being able to destroy these Osmi barricades, it's going to be even a more like a ammo management as front management managed business taking down Plant Gazer and App State looking to very much be poised to take this to overtime for us to scenario. Lucian getting a good one, the baby exploder. There goes the armory control. Pause. Scraping it back, though. Three versus two scenario. Hits the rotate. Lightning State. may strike twice. We've seen this before from App State in the 3v2 on kids. Kennesaw could have easily take this back. There's no one master balcony. It's the Maeve. No info that Pause may have rotated. Drone coming in from, I believe that's Wong on the Grim. That is Wong. 
don't seem to notice pause pause has the play here oh, they might have seen him they might have seen him i think they only saw chow i don't think they know we're gonna find out shortly lucian has no idea goes down that's case as well pause on a triple gets traded and now it's a 1v1 again chow versus long redemption in the making on kids dorms are the end of the game <sighs> And it's the end Why? of the game. Chow takes out Wong again. And once again, App State toss a 3v2 attack on Kids Dorms. And that's it. That's the end of the game. That's the end of the game right there. GG's. I mean, great effort by Kennesaw. Such a dominant lead. Such a dominant performance. Munhide in the hero. Chow as well. But, God. I mean, I he had like a drone. Of, of he had three Bs. I mean, this could this could have perfectly been an overtime affair. I mean, App State is no are no slouches by any means, but it's disheartening. It's a little bit disheartening, but it's it's a BL one, and you know BL ones are quote unquote Mickey Mouse. And if this was a full BL three, could have been very different. And uh, I do wonder if we'll be switching to faster cameras here real quick. There we go. Switching cameras quick. And no, yeah, they, I I feel like just one one or two rounds that could have gone right, and that could have been an app state victory for sure. I mean, in the as a match developed, they could very much keep up with Kennesaw's aggression. They were expecting it. They knew they could they could win the gunfights. You know, it, it stopped becoming a twenty eighty engagement to a solid sixty percent chance for them winning it. They knew Kennesaw was going to swing. They knew to expect that aggression. Certainly, and it's exactly what their game plan looked like going into the. It looked it looked solid from the beginning. I believe about two zero, and then it just all fell apart. The one basement round with the buck managed to pull off a one v two, that pretty much flipped the script completely. That round changed the entire game. We said it at the moment that hey, if Kennesaw rolls this one over, this is what we look at. And App State, well structurally, didn't play that bad. It just the situations were. Not that great. Their setups were fine, though early round play was pretty much fine as well. And just late round situations, really struggling. Um, it, it almost looks like they lack, I don't want to say leadership, but something along those lines of where nobody's really taking over the game. Because they're kind of just like, okay, we have a 3v2. Now what? Hey, we could probably plan. Or like, no, it's not really like... It didn't really feel like they were directing each other. It felt like they were just kind of doing things and just like, uh, okay, I'll just do this. Like, you can't really play, like, casually like that in an intense game, especially in a qualifier. And that's how we saw all those clutches. Kids dorms, twice. That those, you could just look at kids dorms twice, and you could say the same thing happened twice. Minus the goofy post plan. But it's the same thing. And for God knows what reason, they don't take attack timeout. At all. You have two of them. You could no, have burned like, them back to back. Collegiate just, teams are no. allergic to these timeouts, man. We're giving you two, two when you normally get one. I would take seven if you could give them to me, but these guys get two. They get a bonus timeout, and it seems that the vast, not even just in this game, but across the entire day, nobody's really relying on tack timeouts, and I, I can't really understand, can't really understand why. I can understand it if you're in a game and maybe you're already locked in or something, but this was an important game, as with some of the earlier ones we saw. Kentucky versus UC Academy, they didn't take one. It just it just seems like teams are either impatient or just they don't know how to use a tact timeout properly. We're going to need but to start adding some financial compensation for using these timeouts at this point. Yeah, honestly, you guys should get a refund for how many tact timeouts you've given out. It's like it's like a free hot dog at Costco or something. Like they just aren't they just aren't taking them. And in a game like that, that you needed it. Yeah, they no, absolutely. It 5 they rounds ago. They could have very much used that Costco hot dog five rounds ago. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of that simple of that was a pretty kind of classic modern Oregon game. We saw some different stuff, some really good rushes, some really good quick plants, and some really good setups. The game was won and lost in late round and post plant. Mm -hmm. And that's all it really came down to. I mean, like you mentioned before, kind of like I feel like App State kind of had the blueprint but they didn't really have the master builder to conduct things. I mean, they all had a pretty decent idea of what was going on, but no one to really, like you said before, you kind of step up, take control, like, hey, guys, this is what's going to happen in these last 30 seconds, lock in. Yeah, 
you're absolutely right. I think they completely lacked a leadership role there in the end, and it just bit them. You could just, it's just late round situations. I can say it a thousand times. It's not going to change anything. They just have to go back to the drawing board. That's pretty much it. I feel like even on defense, I believe it was a, it was a three, three half. So not horrible, but there were so many rounds where Kennesaw was just doing what you would say is whatever they wanted. It's a basement clear and they're doing whatever. They're dropping e-box by themselves. They're walking down freezer. They're walking down laundry. They're having their way. They're doing whatever they want. And there's no counter from out of state. And it just, it was just really, really confusing. Yeah, no. And, uh, well, I guess speaking of boards, we're going to be going to a break to, you know, as we wait for these final matches to, ra- to wrap up, go to the board ourselves and crunch the numbers and see the top six teams with this qualifier. They will be punching their ticket to the Queen City Clash main event this April. And which teams will unfortunately be missing out and or have the option to participate in the last chance qualifier in an event that is absolutely free for any team who paid and participated in Qualifier 1 or Qualifier 2. So catch us after the break.
yeah, we have to touch on the land of missed opportunity. And two teams that unfortunately missed out are App State and Cincinnati Academy. First, we'll touch on App State. You can see them on the bottom of their screen. Just lost to Kennesaw. And it was easily a game they could have won, if not pushed to overtime. So while we just talked about it, I think going into the LCQ, they have a lot to address. But there's still a lot of good framework with those guys. I would say it's also a positive outlook for Cincinnati Academy. They were pretty much looking like they were going to go winless. And then they knocked off Kentucky on what we kind of thought was a game that was going to also be really close. So I would say Cincinnati Academy definitely has a lot going for them. Um, I would say this time next year, I would confidently say they won't need to go to the second qualifier. I think they'll get in the first qualifier. They have a lot of players that show promise. I could already see from watching them that a lot of those guys have more seeds brain cells than a lot of these bigger teams. It's just going to take some time for them to develop fully and get experience. But when you see an academy team, not like a B team, an academy team making huge reads on like pro strats or whatever you want to call it, that's a huge sign of improvement. So a really positive outlook for those guys, even though they missed out. sell a couple cars and uh, maybe maybe they'll be okay but an uphill battle for them qualified nonetheless but we will see I'll buy a few cookies Shout out to uh, Connor from University of Drexel, and uh, you guys can support them. St. Clair. Basically, uh, St. Clair participated in a land event, well, attempted to participate in a land event. West Virginia didn't go so well because of the weather. Botanic so kindly jinxed that it won't snow in April, so hopefully that doesn't happen during the Queen City Clash. But um, looks like we'll be seeing uh, Queen City Clash's first international team in April. His muted mic is celebrating. It's so weird. Yeah, I, I mean, I can hear you, but it's so weird to, um, so weird to hear that international collegiate is so, so weird, but we do have a lot of competitive teams up north, and it's great to see them participating down in Ohio, I guess you would say. Yeah, I mean, 
Well, Ohio just seems like a pretty good spot to host tournaments, not going to lie. Like, despite how much it gets beamed on, it's pretty well positioned geographically. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. better than being in Florida and they have to cross the entire continent, but... <laughs> Shout out UCF, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, well, I guess on the topic of Canada, let's talk about their compatriots that didn't exactly make it. The fans off the old, unfortunately, do not qualify, but... Yeah, God, it really pains me to say that. You know, shout out to Purs and his boys. You know, they've, they've, they've been cranking at it so hard. And it's like, they every time they played, they came this close. It was a bunch of overtimes. It was just a bunch of five sevens. But just no no dice for them. And they'll have to make another run for it. Their last run, their last opportunity, and the last chance qualifier. But going back to the winner's track, I guess we should move on to who next, Tom? Uh, Next would be UC Black. The other end of the spectrum. The redemption arc of the qualifier. UC Black finally makes it after a goose egg last year. Went 0-2 in quals. You knocked them out pretty sure, right? I Yeah, we did uh, take the first match off of them. Um, it's great to see them make it and evolve. I know that affected players like Pop, they you know, have been on that team and in the program for a while that had to watch from the sidelines last year. And I can't imagine watching your own land and your own people play, and you can't because you couldn't qualify in no worries this time around they proved themselves they got in they put up a solid record beat some pretty good teams and i'm honestly expecting a lot from them yeah no for sure and i well i guess speaking of records in uc black let's talk about kent state another team that makes their way into the qualifier you know their final match being a dominant victory over uc black with a beautiful 7-0 i think the first 7-0 of the entire qualifier process if that is correct, I mean, that's an absolute statement. That's how you end a qualifier. Some teams, when you kind of reach the end of a qual and you might both be safe or, like, mathematically safe, like something weird could happen, you might get lazy. Kent State clearly not put completely on the gas pedal, and you like to see it, getting as many meaningful maps as possible before an event. And I guess meaningful maps as possible before retirement. I mean, like we said before, you know, Snooky very much uh, – on its way out it's going to be his last semester and well even when i was pitching the idea for for him to you know ask his boys if he wanted to, if they wanted to participate in the circuit i very much marketed it as his last dance and uh i think i'll continue with that storyline because uh you know despite him saying you know he's doing it for funsies and all i still think he's got some passion for the game and i would love to see him go far certainly and then we move on to our second place team at the moment which is utah utah the utes a fellow CR6 premier team along with the likes of Cincinnati Red and uh, who will now be joining also, I think, Clarity along uh, with the main event as well. And uh, I have hopes for them. I have hopes for them. You know, they they barely squeaked by into premier. Initially on stream, they didn't think they made it and they made a tweet about it like a few hours later with, uh, you know, that one meme's like, uh, it's like it's like a heartbeat, and like at the top it says it's so ba- we're so back, and then when it gets down here it says bros, and then it gets back here it says we're so back. That's basically the, that's the that's the Utah experience. They definitely had a had an interesting time here in the qualifier, you know, falling to UC Black in a dominant fashion, a seven one loss, but you know making their way second place at this qualifier. Surprisingly, I didn't expect them to be there. Yeah, and certainly that's been their identity for a while. Kind of just you know squeak in. There's nothing wrong with that. Winning's winning. So, and also, speaking of winning, our first place team at the moment, you can also see them on your screen, Kennesaw State rolled over App State to claim the number one spot. I think Kennesaw State is probably the heavy favorite out of this qualifier group to do damage at the real land. I think these guys have the mechanical talent and the, the, the balls to do things. I think that these guys are completely in line with the current meta of the game, and they will go for things. Even if, you know, someone from a strategical point of view says, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Why is this guy doing this? Well, that's because they can. They have the mechanics to do it, and their mechanics are pretty much beyond a lot of these teams, especially just, like, out of this qualifier group. So I also have high hopes for them. I think when we get to the real Queen City Clash, you will see these guys on championship someday. Maybe so, maybe not. You're forgetting that this Kennesaw, as we see it right now, is playing in a completely different environment. We're going to be playing on a completely new season, new balance changes, new dynamics, new attachments, new scopes. And we'll have to see if that, I mean, that raw ability to hit headshots is still going to be there, but we'll have to see if these balance changes hinder or uh, have help them excel even further. 
I mean, when you're spawn peeking big tower with an SMG 11, I don't think the scopes are going to change too much. To oh, yeah. I mean, M Mount Hyden is going to be Mount Hyden, <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a whole other four people surrounding him, mate. Of course. And, uh, well, that pretty much does it for the teams that have made it. And, uh, well, any closing thoughts on this qualifier process? You know, you have joined us for half a qualifier, too. The first half being, obviously, good old Mr. Davis TV. Actually, why don't, why don't you talk about me about Mr. Davis, you know? At LVC's first major event, and now you have you and him have been having a good back and forth on Twitter for quite a not while now. Yeah, we're good friends with the LVC guys, Mr. Davis and Flexios, and I've kind of always believed in them. I think I even mentioned that they should definitely get a nod for these qualifiers. Um, just kind of a team that's been under the radar for, I think, a long time. I mean, we didn't honestly know much about them. We didn't really know they existed until last year when we had uh, their Cookstown land. And I just, I think it's a product of they play in NACC and it just doesn't go that notice. It's not a bash on NACC. There's a lot of great teams in there, but they just really didn't get noticed. And I'm proud of them to see them going up against these, you know, bigger names that everyone fears, all the CR6 dogs, if you will. And they're not scared. And I am completely confident they'll do well. And Mr. Davis, Flexios, and the guys, they're fully capable. Yeah, no, and uh, I guess kind of like one of my favorite parts about something like a Queen City Clash is that it's really the the crossing roads of a scene as fractured as ours. When you have a scene with, uh, last time I checked, seven different active leagues, well, maybe six now, rest in PCEA, it's kind of different. For, it's kind of difficult for every team to have a chance to intersect with one another. I mean, if it weren't for Queen City Clash, a team like LVC probably would have never crossed paths with a team like Clarity, for instance, and... You know, LVC took a map off them. They took a – Plexios and Mr. Davis took a map off Mr. B. Think about that. I mean, that's not something you would ever think would happen, you know, six, eight months ago. You just wouldn't that, – that's just like a weird, otherworldly scenario. I mean, even, you know, in the same universe, Mr. B comes to Collegiate. They're West. You would never see these guys cross. So it's, it's great to see that. It's great to see, you know, someone of Mr. B's prowess – not necessarily drop down, but go through a different avenue of collegiate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get to play against a school that, you know, otherwise isn't really heard of. And they're playing against a former pro, someone at a pro level. And that's awesome. That's great to see from Queen City Clash. Yeah, no, well, I guess, well, I'll start on the topic of Queen City Clash. You know, who who's your dark horse dark so far? Horse. We, we, saw, we saw two spots that have yet to be fell through that last chance qualifier that is completely free for any team who paid and participated in qualifier one qualifier two but i want to know your dark horse right now to the 14 teams we have uh it's definitely lvc is one of them for sure um i think lvc can do a lot of damage especially to a lot of these teams that are always up on their high horse that's the pitfall of a lot of collegiate teams i think lvc doesn't get shaken too much i think they could easily knock some of these guys off they just get in their head we saw it today a lot of teams just get in their head they lose focus of the game we talked about it 8,000 times. I complained about it 8,000 times. I think Nobody LVC actually uses timeouts. their timeouts. Yeah, I was about to say. LVC actually uses attack timeout. As my webcam has a spaz attack. But, there it um, is. It's coming back eventually. It, it's fine. It'll it'll figure it out. But either way. <laughs> um, here, let me try and figure it out. Oh, it's fine. Whatever. There you go. Um, yeah. L LVC, like, I just think they are one of the more complete and quote-unquote professionally oriented teams. And I think they can definitely do damage. I will say another team that I think can do damage is if Cincinnati Acad falls in the LCQ, which I think they will, I think they can humble a lot of teams. I'm not saying they're going to make the championship Sunday or anything like that, but I think they can shake things up. They're going to give you a run for your money, that's for sure. And, uh, God, you know, go, going back to LVC, I, I'm kind of, like, thinking about it, and there's a lot of PA power coming up, to, coming up to Queen City. I mean, you got them, you got Penn State, you got Drexel. I mean, here you are sharing your PA prowess as a, as a custom representative. I've got, I would love to see you. That would be such a great time. I mean, you're going to have, you're going to have at the beach. You're going to have ducks. You're going to have someone like Snooky. You're going to have Mr. B. And honestly, if they, if you got added into the mix, I think that's more so just a party than Atlanta at that point, mate. <laughs> I mean, even last year I messaged, uh, if you remember Ryan from uh, Drexel, I messaged him before the event when we both called. I said, all right, see you guys in finals. We just kind of knew, um, you know, PA probably has the best Siege players in general, I would go out and say, especially in Collegiate. I mean, obviously, because Sun doesn't exist anymore. We were strong for a while. Drexel's always been strong. Penn State, 
uh, RMU is a solid program. LVC is really emerging. So there's a lot of PA power that can shake things up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Long, like PA and Ohio are some of the strongest regions in collegiate, in my opinion. And uh, ooh, I guess sp speaking of strength, I haven't shared my dark horse pick. And uh, I definitely think it's going to be St. Clair. It's going to be St. Clair for me. It's uh, I feel, like I mentioned before, they can definitely punch above their weight, you can, especially if you catch them in these BO1s. You know, I've seen what kind of attitude these players have when it comes to, like, when they're in the server. And they, they seem confident. And confidence is something you're going to need a lot on land. It, there's probably going to be a lot of shouting. There's probably going to be a lot of mockery. And if you can stand tall and maybe even dish them the back out of your opponents, it's going to be one hell of a riot. And on that point, I could guess I could also say Kent State as one of my dark horses as well. Uh, Snooky was talking to me like if he can do this and that in terms of trash talk. So he's coming in with some uh, with some veteran trash talk, with some veteran tactics. And I'm going to be so happy to see one of my siege idols on land. I absolutely agree with Kent State. I mean, we saw them play earlier. Uh, Tom, you're muted. I am? How? Oh, that's a shame. Um, I was going to say, um, Kent State definitely can shake things up. Snooki himself has no problem taking the fight to the other team, as we saw in that Chalet match earlier. So, mm -hmm. I He's a showman. You. He is a showman. And, you know, some of the plays you could say, oh, they're questionable. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? He's on Warden 1.5 for whatever the attachment is next season. He's swinging. He's winning gunfights. He can shake things up. It's that simple. Yeah, I mean – guy's been along for for long enough where he's probably done those same swings with an ACOG. It, won't, it really won't matter. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I guess that's pretty much the run of the show for here for us tonight. Join us tomorrow for day two as these top four teams from these top six will be duking it out in a single elimination bracket and that's for some nice little prize pool money. Nice little Nice little bread, you know, recoup the cost of these qualifiers and uh, hopefully add to some money that could potentially be used in travel and lodging. Uh, a lot of teams got to make a lot of, like, long journeys. Like I said before, UC Davis got to come all the way from California. You know, that gas money or maybe flight money and on top of that, hotels and Airbnbs. There's going to be a lot of, lot of finances to consider here. But, hey, you know, if you want to come to land, you're going to make it happen one way or another. And uh, with that... I've been your host, Camilo Botanic. This has been my host, Mr. Tomsey Oxy. That way, there Other you go. Other thumb. There you Other go. thumb. This has been my host, the Tomsey. Some would say the OG. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching Queen City Clash for today. We'll catch you around.